Well, change is in the air as summer has officially given way to fall here in Monte Carlo. Gloomy day outside, but obviously joy to be had inside as we work our way forward and crown additional champions. Welcome everyone to today's coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series from Sporting Monte Carlo. Alina Jad alongside Maria Ho. And uh, Maria, with the rain going on outside, I take it that you didn't do anything before today's coverage? No, I definitely wanted to stay in bed just a little bit longer than usual, but, you know, glad to make it in here. Although, I don't th think they're going to be opening up the roof today. No, there will be no opening of the roof. It is a shame, too, because this truly is, I know we've harped on it a lot, the prettiest and most beautiful place that you could ever hope to play cards. The roof is retractable. So, let us then uh, talk about what happened last night. It was a fifth title for one Danny Tang. Truly spectacular performance put on by him. Something that felt like it was maybe associated with the power of intention, didn't it? He's talked about that player of the year, Maria, and here he is sitting at the top of that leaderboard. He put it out in the universe, you know, long ago, and now, you know, finally able to manifest it, it seems. Um, but Continuing with the theme of the other final tables throughout the series, Ike Haxton, who came in as the chip leader, did not end up closing it out. And Ike, who, again, something that we have also continued to harp on about what an amazing streak and run he's been on in the last 18 months. Mm -hmm. But Danny Tang was the one to stop him yesterday. That he was, obviously, a bit of a spoiler, but nevertheless, it got interesting, as you'll soon see. Let's flash back to how it all shook out. Tang, Brewer, and Haxton stacking this FT, three of the year's hottest. And we found Daniel Rezai on the short stack with nine remaining. He would find his way in with just 75,000 remaining. Pocket sixes were in awful shape on a Queen 10 9 board where the side pot was played between Brewer and Garagnani. Advantage Brewer with. Queens and nines. Garagnani's open ender with the 10, failing to improve on the river. And Rezai never altogether optimistic about that scenario, as he would be the first casualty at the final table, earned $158,000 for the performance. Then it was the Merlin, Ole Shemian, with an ace jack. It would run into Jack Jack. Haxton jamming over the top of his all in. And he always knew Damn. <laughs> that the situation wasn't going to be particularly good in that spot. The King 7-3 along with another 7 making it. things Heal even it. more dire. And ultimately the necessary ace would not work its way to the board as Shemian would be eliminated in 8th place. $198,000 for his efforts. $1,175,000. Then... One of the two Brazilians, Rodrigo Celuan, would open with jacks of his own, and this time Haxton would move all in with an ace king. Over the top we went. 10 8 6. Everything looked A OK for Celuan, picking up the open ender on the turn for dessert, and then that awful sight. A red ace would leave him breathless as he was eliminated. And a massive pot. $270,000 would go Rodrigo's way, courtesy of that seventh place finish. Then Danny Tang would get involved. Ace Jack against 5 6. The one they call Wushu, Thomas Mulacher, would jam with the open ender on the Queen 8 7 board. Too many. Tang Too many hours. taking the price as Wushu would pick up an open ended straight flush draw on the turn, but miss everything on the river. And Tang would haul in his remains, as Mulacher would haul in $363,000, courtesy of sixth. Then Garagnani, king-queen suited, would move all in. Clubs were smothered. That was the bad news, as Brewers, ace-nine, would give him a spin. Deuce, four, five, board. On the hunt for artwork was Garagnani. No king, no queen on the turn. Nor on the river, as Pedro would stir his way out of the room, 469,000, courtesy of that fifth place finish, leaving four remaining. We talked about those three hot hands of Brewer, Haxton, and Tang, making up three quarters of the remaining field at the point at which Tang showed that maybe he is the hot man. 
trip sixes against the ace high and eight on the turn did, did give Brewer some hope. But in the end, palms to the sky as he was left wondering, what do I got to do to beat Danny Tang? $585,000 would go to Brewer. Fahreddin Mustafa of the Bulgarian delegation, which has shown up in force here in Monaco, would then take his turn. King nine suited. You can't hope for a whole lot more than this. Ace, king, eight board, a pair, and a flush draw. Three million in the middle. 3.1 back for Mustafa. And note, Tang goes from a pair of eights to Jackson eights on the turn. Fahreddin would jam, looking for some fold equity. Tang unable to go anywhere, of course. And we played for 9.1 with one to come. That was a no sweat for a diamonds on the river. No reason to hang his head, though. Mustafa, impressive third place finish, 715,000. And it was all in. Between Tang and Haxton, the four-time champ in Tang, the man who still hunts his first ever title in Haxton, and Ike would pick queen three to jam with. Tang's rail was thrilled when they realized he had a king jack, and even more so on a 10-6 deuce board as the title hung in the balance. Tang would improve to a pair of jacks, taking the three off the board for Ike, and he needed lady luck on the end. But in the end, it wasn't there as Punat Puntsri mugged Danny Tang first to run on stage and offer his congratulations to Danny. Ike would earn $1.07 million courtesy of a second place finish. An astonishing fifth title this year alone for Danny Tang. $1.58 million for the victory. Joins Phil Ivey in the five title club, both of them trailing Jason Kuhn's nine titles, of course. But let's talk a little bit about the player of the year factor. Maria, walk us through the points situation there with Danny now. Well, with that win, he takes the overall lead in the player of the year, 182-point lead, as a matter of fact, and 148 ahead here in Monaco because there is an extra 100 points to the winner of this series. Yeah, important, obviously, to note. Everybody is gunning for the big picture, but every time you focus on the small one, there are bonus points available toward that big picture. Let's turn our attention, though, to Ike Haxton. Obviously, he's had a stellar year, no question about that. But in terms of guys who you feel like every time you pull up their bio in the Triton Poker Plus app, lacking a title you're surprised about. He's got a rate at the top now, given that Smith already won the Invitational and broke his seal. Yeah, well, with four runner-up finishes and 31 caches, over $10 million in earnings here certainly now has definitely by far and away become the most winning player on, this, on the tour without a title. So, now, you know, we touched a little bit during our broadcast about the fact that Nacho Barbero also placing second over here, one for five in heads-up confrontations at Triton. Ike, sort of similar company, and we wondered whether or not there were adjustments that perhaps Nacho could be making. You don't think that Ike is looking at this situation and thinking, well, let's get back into the lab and maybe there's a couple things I can tweak about heads up. Ike kind of strikes me as the person that's always in the lab. Like, he wakes up in the lab, you know? <laughs> so um, I don't really think that it's a product of something that perhaps could use more tweaking. I really just think that in these heads up situations, he just hasn't had the right card distribution and hasn't really been able to, you know, be quite deep enough in terms of how shallow some of these stacks end up getting at heads up play to show um, his full skill set. I was going to say perhaps it's just how the cookie crumbles, but given we're here, maybe it's just how the croissant flakes. God, I'm not even proud of myself for that one. Okay, Ike does pass the $15 million <laughs> mark globally for 2023. Brewer now second. 13.9 million, both of them in that final four. Very, very good performances turned in. Nothing to be ashamed of. So then, let us turn our attention to that which awaits us here today. Coverage of the 25K GG Millions, and we had ourselves a record breaker, didn't we? We had 187 total entries, and I'm not going to lie, sitting here when uh, Light Rich closed, I was like, oh, I wish this was one of the few tournaments where I was like, oh, I wish I could be over there yeah. um, instead of over here. But happy to still be here because, you know, it didn't cost me any money to be sitting here next no. to you. No, you don't have to pay 25 k <laughs> We may even give you a paycheck. Who knows? 187 entries made up of 117 unique. So that leaves us with a prize pool that will be distributed across 31 places. The min 
cash will be $41,000 up top, though. Another seven-figure score. Always delightful to have those available, in particular for those who are looking to claw back after maybe failed efforts on the front end of the schedule, which was a very pricey proposition. 41 players checking and punching their tickets into day two here. Steve O'Dwyer, who already has a Triton title under his belt, winner of event number five, the 25K Turbo. He is your chip leader, and he is strictly business. Right, and yesterday towards the end of the night, we saw Steve O'Dwyer get into several hands, perhaps taking advantage of the fact that sometimes towards the end of the night, people might be locking up their chips and playing a little bit less in terms of wanting to get involved, especially against the chip leader. And then we also have Yerushevsky, who has over $2 million in chips and is in second place. And if you look at how he's been performing this series, unfortunately, only one cash. And we've talked again about how we started off with the 200K invitation with all the big buy-ins, very front-loaded. So there's some people that really could use a trip saver. I'm not done talking about O'Dwyer, though, mm. guys, because I got a text moments ago from Steve, and, and he sends me this photo, okay? It's a screen grab. I don't know if we can get a shot of this, all right? It's a screen grab of me getting left hanging, trying to get a high five from Steve <laughs> yesterday during the mystery bounty. He was a late pull, came to the stage, didn't have expectations that were all that high, given what was left in the box. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he actually apologized. He said, I didn't mean to leave you hanging. How much do I love this guy? Of all the things he should have on his mind, he's just worried about right. the fact that he left me hanging. Obviously, he's worried about some other things as well. But lovely and thoughtful of him because <laughs> everyone hates that. That feeling of getting showered it's with the high five. Work. Truth be told, I had forgotten. There was a lot of commotion <laughs> up there on the stage. For those that missed it, worth a watch as you get back into the archives in the Triton Poker Plus app. Love that mystery bounty business. So then, business still to attend to for the likes of Satubayev, who is in fourth right now, Jan Zarens, who is in 20th, and Theologis in 28th. Why do we bring up these names, Maria? Because they got in a different way. Yeah, they were able to qualify, of course, through GG. Um, not the only qualifiers that were in the mix yesterday, but the ones that did make it through and, of course, are hoping to get into the money because when you qualify, you know, that's just a little bit more ROI for yeah. you on the end. Let's focus then at the two feature tables which we have on tap for you, and that is where Theologis is going to find himself. Amongst him are some of the killers in terms of Triton regs. Just take a peek at that. Yeah, if you take a look around, I mean, talk about a loaded table of, you know, just the names that you associate with the Triton series. Of course, we have Ivy there. Fans love to watch him play. But also Heath, Greenwood, Webster Lim, Timothy Adams in the mix. Uh, this is not a table that I would like to be at. No, not at all. Nightmare fuel. We talk about groups of death in the World Cup. Maybe this is a table of death. But obviously, it's all random, just unfortunate if you happen to find yourself there. And I'm sure even those killers are thinking that as they look around at one another. So then let us turn our attention to the other of our two featured tables here in the Triton Poker Plus app. We find the likes of Hecklin, Kulev, and Bonomo doing business. Yeah, again, just also a seemingly tough table. I feel like in this type of event, you're going to find yourself with just a lot of strong elite players left in the field. And looking around, Hecklin with a big stack is going to be tough, especially when we're nearing that money bubble where with a big stack, you're going to be able to abuse the shorter stacks. And so looking to... to see Hecklin do that, of course. There are a couple of short stacks in the form of Suvarna and Bradley. Want to touch on Bradley, by the way. It's a shame that he does have a short stack because this guy is wildly entertaining. Mm. Tremendous amounts of personality. He keeps things fun and light when he's out there and not afraid to be a curveball pitcher, which of course makes for some very cool situations from time to time while we're out there doing business. So then, let's take a quick peek, if we will, back inside the app toward the bottom of the chip counts. And that's where we find Bradley and the aforementioned Suvarna. They they are in 39th and 36th, respectively. Boss Paul Pua and Espen Jorstad, though, the leanest stacks in the room. Seven and six bigs. Maria, no playability pre. Right. And again, you know, we're 10 spots away from the money. So, you know, it doesn't really benefit them to try to hang on at this point. They definitely need to try to find a double up before we get to the soft bubble. Down toward the bottom also is Artur Martirosian with 13 big blinds. We'll keep an eye on him and the rest of the field as we are just moments away from sending you back into the arena to get our coverage underway. Do you want to give me a high five? Don't don't leave me hanging. 
I'm now now I feel awkward about it, but okay. Okay, there it is. <laughs> high five. Let's make it happen. Triton Super High Roller Series coverage rolling on the last of our two card events as we get back down into the arena. Just moments. Here it is. Twenty seconds. Okay. Do you want another high five? I'm I'm out. I'm, no, I'm because done. I felt like that one went so well. You know I don't what? really want to risk it. I could actually <laughs> Just get started on what's going to be happening unbeknownst to the field here as soon as we get over to the commentary. It isn't Pad Thai, though. Like, Randy, do you know about this yet? Guys, this is the best hot take. The fried wok with crispy noodles, I believe. You haven't tried it yet? I just hope this you is the keep, good stuff. keep that down given how you're feeling Everybody today. relax. I'm feeling a lot better. Okay? <laughs> no reason to panic. 20 and 40,000 are the blinds with a 40K ante. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. There is Hecklin presiding over affairs at the red table. And then Ben Heath. Similar duties over on the blue side. Bradley talked about him being the shorty with Suvarna. They're both at that red table alongside one another. Theologius and Webster Lim. Shorties here. At yeah, this table. Stop looking over at my yeah. chicken and crispy noodles, yeah, Maria, with that envious my gaze my of yours. Is that what I'm looking at? Or perhaps the trash Oh, was it the prawns? <laughs> Located right behind you. Okay, look, what Maria's referring to is that I made the dire mistake this morning of taking a pill that after I had taken it said, eat with food. About 20 minutes in, I got as nauseous as one could get. We were unsure whether or not mid pregame show I might have to reverse thrust in the digestive tract, but mercifully, I feel a lot better. That's probably one of the worst things you can do, actually, is when medication says take with food and you don't, it, it's it's really gotten me a couple of times. So I probably I should have read the you. label, huh? I feel free. That was one of I mean, those I situations. Just think when you take any medication, you would read the label. That seems kind of important, but, you know, who knows? True story. My dad likes to take Midol for headaches, and it's the product of never having read that it's a <laughs> women's <laughs> headache <laughs> sort of <laughs> pill. <laughs> For lady time. <laughs> he swears by it, though. <laughs> For lady time. <laughs> Theologus, three betting to 190,000 over the Heath Open with Ace-5 suited. Pocket eights for Tim Adams. Obviously would have been happy to come along for that min-raise open against Heath's under-the-gun open, but in the face of that third scoop from Theologus... Different proposition, so the eights melt away. And Theolo just might be a qualifier, but people know him online as a killer. You know, just somebody that has a lot of online poker experience. See him putting that to use here, willing to take the three bet spot against the under the gun open. So a nice start to matters for Alex Theologis. This is not his first event of the festival, Maria, and I feel a bit bad mentioning it because he'd rather it was his first event, given that he's been shut out so far in seven attempts. Well, as I mentioned, Ollie, with a lot of the big buy-ins happening early on, people are really looking at this last No Limit Hold'em event as a trip saver. You know, not everybody might stick around to play the PLO towards the back end. And so, you know, we've got people that are stuck maybe, you know, deep six figures, maybe even seven figures, really wanting to get in the black. And some people are just naturally better than others under pressure. I think it's a bit of a confidence. Oh yeah, for sure. No question. I also think it's been maybe overthinking. Maybe triple. Uh, but I think the main thing is walking back to the Yeah, I want to. Yeah. Yeah. Because for somebody like him, it's only poker. Pulled it around to Zuvarna yeah. on the button. Not enough kit for him to attack the blinds. Obviously, he's looking for spots to begin the process of chipping up here today. They're just a little too far away from being in the money where, you know, these players can 
expect to easily just squeak in there if they were to f keep folding out. They're going to be looking for those double ups. Now Taiwan's James Chen speaks up. Small blind raised to 120,000. Ying Yang Chao has jammed over the top of him. What have we, gentlemen? Stand by for holdings. Can we get a peek? Take the, give us the overhead shot. Queens against ace queen, and an ace shows up on the flop. Chen does have Chow cover, 27 bigs to 20 bigs. <coughs> I presume Chow the man with the ace queen then. <coughs> yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. Just two huge hands in the blinds. Unavoidable spot for the 20 big blind effective stack. Meanwhile, we flip it back over as Chow enjoys a double up early to where Webster, looking for one of his own, has flopped top two pair. Greenwood, though, the better, following through on the preflop open to 90,000, which Webster defended against. Check call of 60 as we head to the turn. And that turn pairs the nine. Greenwood's flop barrel obviously designed to try to fold out some weak one pair hands and has additional equity, of course, but you expect that some of those one pair hands Lim will continue with. There's going to be some nine X's. Lim actually had a much stronger holding in the form of top two there. Nice part though is Greenwood does block a hand like King Queen. Is he counting? Is he reaching? What's it gonna be? We finally have our answer. As Greenwood. Hesitated before betting this 140. Not sure that's going to matter in terms of Webster's decision here. Really? Texture's a bit uncomfortable. It is. And, you know, it's also <laughs> uncomfortable because Lim is sitting there feeling like that turn, pairing the nine, now he's losing to over pairs, whereas, you know, on the flop, he's going to be ahead of aces, kings, and queens. But Greenwood could also very easily have king-queen in this spot for a straight. So another flat from Webster and the river. Less scary. Webster checking again. Exactly, half pot back for Webster. And if Greenwood can perhaps put Lim on a hand like Jack X here, you might think that the third barrel could get it done. And like I said, with that turn pairing the nine, as long as Lim didn't turn trips, Greenwood could easily <coughs> go for this bet on the river with aces, kings, and queens because counterfeits, of course, a hand like jack-10. And that's exactly what Webster's concerned about now is the over pair, let alone the king-queen that you talked about earlier. 
Yeah, obviously a little less likely that Greenwood has jacks and tens here because Webster blocks those boats. But Greenwood, you know, certainly trying to rep that part as well. Trying to get a jack X to fold. I've seen Lim take considerable time on these spots. You know, I've seen him put to the test where, you know, he's come up with the right decision before. He's come up with the fold. He's definitely somebody that in these situations where perhaps he's thinking awesome. about making a hero call, he's, he's never going to be hasty with the decision. It almost always feels like he's so close to a call every time. But you're not going to be right every time in this spot. And that is the hard part, especially against a capable player like Greenwood. Yes, could he have some busted draws? Could he have some Queen X diamond type awesome. hands, King X diamond cool. type hands? And it looks like Lim does call. And that is a call for his tournament life there. If he were wrong, he would have been out the door. And out of the money, but instead, he will double. He didn't have 500. He has way less. He bet 500, but he has less. <laughs> Greenwood wasn't able to muscle Lim out of that pot, but can't fault Greenwood for trying there, especially again, you know, getting close to the money bubble. The person whose tournament life is at risk. It's always going to be a little bit of hesitation on their part to play such a big pot. Not a great start for Sam Greenwood. Slipping down to 665K, <coughs> second shortest stack at the table now. Just in front of Polyus Vaitekunas. And there is Polyus. Taking us upstairs to 80K with an unknown holding. Oh. Oh. You start with like 430, oh. right? Have been two napkins, but he gets Sorry? the job oh. done. Yeah, we need to know what you're raising with. <laughs> no takers as we keep it right here. Webster, by the way, with that double, is now the second biggest stack at this table. Finds himself on the button in this one. Does look like we have a new overall chip leader, though, in Lewis Spencer, just slightly overtaking O'Dwyer in the top spot in the first few hands of the day. Dwyer, second behind Spencer, elsewhere in the room. Five seconds. 100. Raised to 100,000. Queen five off suit. Getting ambitious here in the small blind against the short stack of 
Paulius, ace nine suited, does feel like it could be one to go with for him. And indeed, there is the all in, a snap fold from Alex. Greenwood, good to see he hasn't lost his appetite, <laughs> even though Webster doubled through him. Good to see you haven't lost your appetite, Ollie. It was dicey there for a minute, not going to lie. I mean, out of all the times I've ever worked with you, that was like the, the most sick I've ever seen you feel right before work. At least You're very I healthy. just felt sick instead of got sick. Mm, yeah. You're a healthy boy. Raise 80, I don't know about all that. Uh, yeah. There's some yeah, less than healthy I, choices <laughs> I make from <laughs> time I to time. Once I said it. You know... Healthy hand here for Heath, ace-king. Smothering Ivy's king-jack suited, which opens up front. Ivy Five with seconds. just about 30 bigs to start the hand. Certainly Three, two, isn't two, 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 going to like having oh. to pay more to see a flop with a hand as pretty as king-jack suited. And oh. Heath, of course, doesn't need to go full... 3x here, considering oh. Ivy has about sub 30 bigs. You know, if they were deeper, of course, you can go a little bit bigger on the three bet. Two hundred and twenty k. Five seconds. Ivy started this one. Twenty nine bigs deep. He's going to come along for the extra 140 being charged by Heath. Dominated and out of position. 540 in the middle. And no aid to the King Jack suited on a 1065 board. Check. I think Heath knows that Ivy will have some suited broadways in his continuing range, some of which will interact, of course, with a 10 on the board. Also, perhaps, you know, some of the milling pairs that don't feel comfortable shoving pre, Five seconds. but can still play okay post with Bet. some of these low boards without the presence of some paint and some big cards. Ivy, of course. Some back doors available here, but it's going to get more and more costly and more significant to his chip stack to continue to try to see more streets. And with that, he'd rather just preserve his stack size. The other thing is, though, Ivy's one of these guys that'll look over and think, okay, if it isn't an overpair, I don't expect a 10x combo. And let me just peel and see what's what. Maybe I can move a man off his hand, but the trouble for him is he suffers from a similar inability, let's call it, to rep that board texture successfully. Just giving the upfront open. Oh. Adams, king, queen, plenty serviceable. Big blinds for Greenwood, but early position open from Adams, so just going to play as a call. 
you know, definitely against the later positions, you can absolutely ship the ace-10 profitably pre. Greenwood not near as deep as he was to start things off on the day. Does defend and has a flush draw on the 6-4 deuce all-club board. Trouble is Adams has the better flush draw. That said, ace high in the lead. As you see the true coin flip with two to come. Yeah, looks like a decent board to both players considering they both hold the club. Some over cards. 45. About 45,000. Forty-five K. The follow through sizing from Adams as the Canadians tangle. Oh. Sam flats. Another ninety into the middle, pot up to three hundred and ten thousand. Four to a straight on board now. And Greenwood should be the man with the threes in his range. It definitely has more threes than Tim opening from under the gun, plus one. Tim's only really going to have hands like ace three suited or pocket threes. Whereas Greenwood, of course, will defend any suited combo with the three and some four threes as well. Some paired and straight draw type hands from the flop. Second check being mulled over by Tim, who has Sam covered. Check back, realize the equity. That's how Adams feels. And that is the one piece of artwork that doesn't hit his gallery. Jack of hearts. Yeah, tried to realize his equity, but doesn't get there. And now for Greenwood, does he think that ace high can win at showdown? Is it unclear to him whether or not he needs to be turning this hand into a bluff against a check back from Adams on the turn? Five seconds. Check. And similarly for Adams, you know, wondering could king high possibly win on the river? You know, facing a Greenwood check, of course, it does feel like Greenwood has some type of showdown value. It's just up to Adams to determine, is it in the form of perhaps a weak one pair hand, one, you know, that Greenwood's never going to be leading for value on the river. Or if it's ace high, then certainly Adams isn't going to want to try to show down here. You see him. Barreling 175,000 at this one. As played, Maria, this could very well be a hand that doesn't have the ace high beat, but it could also just be a jack hunting value from time to time. Yeah, definitely. I think some jack hunting value, some perhaps over pairs to the board, you know, in the form of sevens, eights, nines, those types of hands that would want to check back the turn, but once check two, doesn't believe that Greenwood's going to be checking there with two pairs or straight combos. So can still go for a little bit of value, targeting the one pair holdings. The ace kings and ace queens would be more inclined to check back here on the river. Can Greenwood safely remove the better ace highs? Yeah, I think that that's definitely a fair point where most of the strongest ace highs will be checking back there. But again, there's still a little bit more than just some jack X's that Adams could go for value here. Again, you know, some of the over pairs to the board, you know, if you bet a jack here as Adams, then you're probably going to be betting tens and nines as well. Five 
Ultimately, Greenwood does let go of that ace high winner though, as Adams able to bluff that one through. Tough spot. I mean, would you have found the call? <laughs> I think that in that situation, when you block some of the ace highs as Greenwood, it's a little bit harder to find, you know, a ton of other bluffs that Adams will have, especially when he goes for that sizing. You know, Adams didn't go for a polarizing sizing. It's not really easy for him to check back the turn and rep something like flushes or straights. But again, all of those stronger one pair combos still in there. Ace nine, not enough for Adams as another king queen surfaces this time. In Ben Heath's hands, he too will open to 80. Queen Jack for Jan Schwippertz. lesser seen Germans here at this table and here at his very first ever Triton Festival. Did play the 30k 7 max, did not cash. Yeah, maybe less seen, but definitely not less skilled. Jan certainly runs in the circles of the top German players and somebody that I've had experience playing against. Very methodical, as you would expect him to be. Oh, yeah. Coming from that part of the world. We don't get enough German blasters. <laughs> What's the deal with that? We need to find one of one of the guys that'll just come with the Blitzkrieg, you know? Just create a little excitement. You see Greenwood. 12 bigs now after passing a bundle over to Adams who's midfield behind Trippertz. Webster, nice start for him. And Heath up top. One gapper. Saw him play the King Jack of Hearts. Now the 10 8 from the small blind granite. This type of suited, connected combo. Thank you. Definitely wants to try to get to the flop and, you know, being, being that, you know, Adams is in the big blind with an ace here. Against oh. Ivy's 22 big blind stack, yeah, it certainly feels like a spot where you're just going to move in and take that opportunity away from Ivy. Punishment in the face of that 3x open. And again, Ivy forced to relinquish this time pre flop. Adam's looking on form here. Early goings. Of day two of the 25k GG millions. GG poker, the only place to qualify for the Triton Super High Roller Series, as three of those who made it into day two are well aware. Theologus, Jans Arens. And Satubayev, those who made it through to day two. Satubayev, by the way, eighth overall in chips right now. Schwippertz limping the king-queen suited, sorry, min-raising it. Forgive me. Heath will defend. 
wheel and flush draws for Ben. Second pair for Schwipperts. Interesting board for both players. Schwipperts will sometimes mix between exercising some pot control and also just betting here with the fact that Heath will have a lot of continues perhaps off of one club. Fifty-five K. The follow through sizing in spite of the lack of a club for Schwipperts. Heath enjoying that gut shot wheel draw with the five of clubs. Obviously five of clubs is a little murky in the sense of not being sure if it's gonna be good enough to have the best flush if another club comes on board, but you know, that sneaky three, which doesn't come in on the turn. And this now very much favors Schwippert's hand. That it does. Board pairing ace, which he actually doesn't mind. Not only does he have perceived range advantage, but perhaps less concerned about being up against an ace as played. Would love to be able to target a King X for value here. Five seconds. Heath from the big blind against a late position open will be three betting the strong ace X's, but not all of the ace X's, you know, some of the weaker suited variety and off suit variety just going to be a call here. So there will be some trips in Heath's range, but not a whole lot, and as you mentioned, could still get value from worse King X's as well. 140K. Second barrel sizing settled upon into the 330. Now with the pair on board, the proposition not nearly as attractive for Heath as he took his swing. Lays down. Tell us then a little bit more about Schwippert's Maria, just based on your experience. Fundamentally sound technical player, much like the remainder of the German and Austrian crew. Yeah, and certainly, you know, has enough experience playing online. Um, I would imagine that, I believe he lived in Thailand for a little bit, so I think, you know, perhaps just enjoying the good life and playing online a little bit, staying out of the live scene, but, you know, certainly has played some of the bigger live series throughout the world. But I wouldn't say as an avid traveler of the live tournament circuit. Well, why bother with all of those inconveniences, perhaps, when one can just sit on the... Sand in Thailand. On. Yeah. He's my, he may have run into Henry out there at some point. Yeah, our own Henry Kilbane lives in Phuket. Must be some pretty stable internet infrastructure down there, by the way, if these guys are willing to, to do what they do at the stakes at which they do it. Well, you know, also a lot of crypto bros and traders live out in Thailand, so they better have good internet. Is that so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're like, huh? So you take you're it for saying Greenwood, by I the way. could move to Thailand. Yeah, maybe I need to explore. I've been to Chiang Mai, Bangkok, and Koh Samui. Oh, so didn't I. visit Phuket. We stayed at oh, the same didn't hotel. Oh, we right. That you, I was just completely <laughs> randomly. By yeah, the way. I took hey, a photo. I posted it, and then we got a text from you. Now, 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 Flipping back over. To the other feature to see what's been going on over here. Boss stack at present here belongs to Shingis Satubayev, 1.7 million. Ming Yang Chao having doubled with the ace queen against the two queens earlier sits. In second, Hecklin and Kulev level in third and fourth. 
Now then, James Chen, whose queens fell to that ace-queen, does jam an ace-eight from the cutoff, and he is going to run into an ace-jack suited of Henrik Hequin, who will make the call, <coughs> and Chen needs help. Yeah, terrible start for Chen with that BVB confrontation. And now behind, could he get lucky the way that Chow did against him? 10-9 deuce board, not looking that way thus far. Two spades as well to make matters worse. Turn is dusty. And a lonely two-outer for James Chen, which doesn't come in on the end as Henrik makes the nut flush. And that is a pretty unexciting way to play a day two there. Queens into ace-king, ace-eight into ace-jack. Didn't matter if he took the best or the worst of it. In the end, it led to a one-two punch and the demise of his hopes to find the money here on day two of the GG Millions. Remember, just 31 will be paid. Did come back with 41 players. Dylan Lindy, first out on the day. Espen Jorstad, not far behind him. Then Carl Schappe Gatien, Christian Rudolph, and as we just saw, James Chen, all hit in the locker room. 36 remaining, five away from the money. Julian Sipbon. The shortest of all stacks. Greenwood, king, queen suited. Takes us upstairs. <laughs> Found himself a bit of a nemesis in Webster Lim from the big pot they played earlier. And now aces. Yeah, speaks up. Three betting to 180,000 and black oh. jacks for Theologius. This is problematic. Yeah. And it's, it's the fact that the three bet's coming in from the button out of Webster, who's got some depth to him now. Granted, Greenwood up front, Maria, but the Jacks could get real tempted, couldn't they? Yeah, especially because Greenwood will have some raise folds from under the gun plus one off of 14 bigs. So, you know, it doesn't mean that Lim can't be targeting that part of Greenwood's range with this three bet. Doesn't have to be as strong as aces. You know, sometimes we'll see, you know, something like a suited ace, a small, you know, ace three, ace four, ace five, do this against an early position open off of a shorter stack. So Theolo just can't blame him, but just ill-timed 20 bigs, nowhere to go with jacks. His jam for 785,000, dishearteningly snapped as Greenwood gets out of the way. And more of that two outer business is gonna be needed. As we just saw for James Chen, this time it's pre-flop for Theologis and he can't find a jack on a queen eight deuce board. Perhaps a path to a gutter. Hmm? <laughs> I don't control the turn. I just know what's possible. And now all of a sudden, six outs in total for Alex. Ten or a jack needed. But it's just the five of clubs that innocently rolls off and devastatingly sends Theologius out of here. As yet again, he fails to find the money here at his first Triton Festival, which is proving to be a costly one. Yeah, I mean, he did qualify for this event on GG, but he did play a bunch of the earlier events as well. So all in all, might have to go back and rebuild the bankroll a bit. But PLO, though, you never know who's going to fire PLO without necessarily being a PLO specialist. Well, if you're hunting player of the year points or you're trying to save the trip, as you put it earlier, Maria, then... PLO Streets could be just for you, as this is the final long deck event of this festival. Three PLO events will round us out after this.
first of which will get underway later on today. See if Greenwood wants to get underway with ace-10. over by Schwipperts. Defense dominated. Queen 5-3 should keep him out of trouble. See how Greenwood seeks to approach. Greenwood again still can have some raise folds off of this stack pre but still can have the strongest part of his range as well. The premium holdings going to be just going for men here 45. instead of open shoving pre and so it doesn't seem like there's a lot of upside for the ace eight to continue just a 40k sprinkle though into 220 nevertheless Schwipperts lays it down do feel compelled by the way to point out that if I knew nothing else about Jan Schwipperts that ribbed zip up alone would lead me to believe this is a man with a healthy net worth. <laughs> you know, somebody should invite this guy on the Bombay super yacht. He'd look right at home. Yeah, I feel like Schwipper's always, you know, kept it classy with the way that he's dressed. Real buttoned up type of style. Understated tiger eye bead bracelet as well. Don't know if you caught that. Buddhist origins those bracelets, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, I think so. I do know that Jan was pretty heavy into yoga, so just maybe spiritual, meditative side coming out. He looks like he's ready for a ski chalet, a little cider, you know? Full service, skis and boots being warmed while well, he sits fireside. Or perhaps a bare rug of sorts. Imagination running wild here. Ivy <laughs> pocket for it got quite uncomfortable when I went to the bearskin. The bear, the bearskin, yeah. That invoked like a romance novel cover type of vibes. I think Ace what I'm queen invoking the raise and take it there for what I'm curious about, maybe Polly. not curious about, is who do you think in the field is most likely to own a bearskin bear rug? rug? Well, now this is an excellent question, Maria, and as you know, the type that I'm here for. I don't know how deep into the Insta streets you've gotten oh. with some of the more, you know, Eastern European Russian accounts. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff out there, guys, with actually pet bears sit and have a meal with them, tea time even, right? Now, that means that they covet the bear, and they would never, never have a rug, right? Or does it mean that eventually when the bear passes away, free rug? Right. I mean, what is the average lifespan of a bear? Anyway? Who knows? I know the average lifespan of a human who owns a bear is shorter <laughs> than, <laughs> than the non-bear owning human. So, you ever see that Grizzly Man uh, documentary? Yes. Who thought he was in with them? Yes. Then one day they just decided Scooby Snack. Yeah, I mean. Listen. Unfortunate. It got caught on tape, yeah, too. But, listen. you know, they blocked out the video. Audio alone was pretty tragic, though as is having 8-9 against a couple of aces as the day continues to be a difficult one for Ivy. Adams, the nemesis, thematically under the gun. King, queen, seven. You can't tame wild animals, and you never know when they're going to turn on you. Is this analogous to what you think Ivy might have on his mind with 8-9 on this board? Because it would take a wild animal to do something on a board like this, turning on Adams. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that Ivy's Nor do that I. feral. Ivy, by the way, has gotten himself into yoga. Yeah. And you know, we've touched on it as we see Adams bet and take it somewhat predictably here, but playing, dare I say, the best poker of his career, if you asked him. 
Which is really saying something because there's been several different times throughout Ivy's career where I think he was playing his best and also head and shoulders above his competition as well. But now playing against the toughest players in the toughest fields and, you know, doing more than just holding his own. At the end of the day, he's Ivy. I think Phil's one of those guys, and I'm not going to say this is unique to him, that genuinely rises to the level of his competition. He wants to take on the best out there. Everybody loves a cupcake, right? But you don't have that sense of accomplishment if yeah. you're out there playing against lesser opposition. Here, you can always take pride in the notion that you earned it when you hoist a Triton trophy. Meanwhile, Paulius, we saw three-bet jam and take one earlier, has decided he is deep enough to open to 100K here at the new blind level. Easy three-bet call-off spot against Paulius' stack here for Jan. Dominant queen for Schwipperts. Back around to Paulius. Getting an update, by the way, from director Martins that it isn't Vaitikunas, but Vaitiekunas. Add a syllable in there. Lithuanian does put it into the mug. I know you're just going to say Paulius. I am going to just say Paulius because I leave the hard work up to you, Ali. And it is hard work out here in this international <laughs> circuit from time to time. Yesterday, we had a death's row of mispronouncing mishaps just waiting f to happen. A lot of syllables. I believe it was... It was, it was rough. I, I oh, let, you didn't I even want to say the names now. No, no, I, I'm just looking to make sure I knew who the three people were. But they were all in a row. They all played a three-way pot together. And I asked Henry, I challenged him, in fact, to say it three times fast. And, of course, he couldn't do it. I don't know about that, of course. Henry has some international experience. No. He butchered it. <laughs> Webster. Black sixes. Decides to put a tickler out there under the gun. Heath. Playable queen jack. And he will tiptoe onto the ice. Up to 275. King Jack 4 as Heath out flops. Still going to be proceeding with caution against an under the gun opening range. Do expect Lim to see bet this texture a lot with range advantage. And Heath certainly can call one and see what develops on the turn. Of course, can turn some backdoor straight draw possibilities. Seventy thousand stays that way. Then. Looks for the turn. And it's a bit awkward here. He does pick up the Broadway draw, but all that ASEX stuff, well within Webster's range. Well, Webster is really the only one who can be nutted here, you know, having all of the top sets of aces, kings, jacks, ace, king. You know, a lot of those hands, if Heath had them, would have three bet pre. But Heath can certainly have... Queen 10, of course, defending the big blind, but Lim would also have some Queen 10s in his range, Queen 10 suited, likely to open under the gun off of that stack size. Plenty that Webster would have checked on this turn, but that Ace of Diamonds just presenting the opportunity to represent 
280 into 515. Yeah, and Lim trying to get rid of precisely these types of hands that Heath has. You know, the Jack X, some weak King X. You expect, you know, some really weak offsuit combos of King X to be defending and all of the suited combos as well. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of hands that aren't going to love this turn card. But some of those hands don't have additional equity. You know, some of those hands are just going to be, you know, King X that wouldn't take quite this long, I think, to find a fold. But with that queen for Heath blocking queen 10 and also some straight possibilities, going to think about it a little bit more, but land on the fold. Uses a time bank, but does not make the call as Webster able to get one through there. The other thing for Heath is when we make the straight, it's face up. And so... Are we going to get paid, which that kind of implied outcome, something that we take into consideration when choosing to make the investment? Folds and 10-3 offsuit, not enough for Adams to activate on the button as Heath looks down at the computer hand. And the reason we called it that was because it's the average winning starting hand in Hold'em. It's right? the average holding if you, when you deal out all the possible combos. It's the average the, uh, the holding average. and strength. Okay, got it. What does it make that? The median? holding, you know, like the median mode mean. Makes it the mean. The, the mean is the yeah, average, okay. right? right? Those are synonyms. What's the median then? That is the data point that lies right directly in the, in the center. What's the mode? You remember that one? Oof. That's where you order ice cream with the <laughs> pie. <laughs> or that's a la mode. My bad. <laughs> Mode is the most frequently occurring uh, okay. data point. Okay, yes. Now it's all coming back to me. This, what, ninth grade math? Did we learn that? I, who can remember? So deep well, in the rear view right now. I'm not trying to date myself, but I don't remember what grade it was in. I, You know, I remember it. Hello. Ivy. Jamming now, having whittled down to 420K, sub-10 big blind stack. No takers. really is such an incredible opportunity when you consider that not all of the qualifiers are as experienced as the likes of Theologus or Jan Zarens, for that matter. The ability to come in here and sit and play, not just for these stakes, but alongside people who you've been watching mm -hmm. and fanboying or fangirling, yeah. For a long, long time. And Webster will be a big fan of this. Pocket Aces. You remember the first time you played pots against players that you had only heard of, you know, watched on TV. You're like, am I really here? Mm -hmm. Did I just really bluff that guy or girl? You're like, my goodness. And it's so easy to psych yourself out, too, when you... Oh. Yeah. Put a pin in that. Is it is so easy to think that Webster opening on the button presents an opportunity for you to ship it with an A7 suited, as we see by Tiekunas do here. But unfortunately for him, he gets shown the aces after the snap. Queen 8-6 could be some straight prospects for Paulius on the turn. And there's one, the four, as he goes from drawing dead to drawing live. Better than nothing, but a five still needed. And not available. A wrap at the table as we lose Paulius. 
Webster surging up the leaderboard here. is going to put Webster second overall. Behind Yuri Zivilevsky. Well, if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Get in on the Triton exclusive merch giveaway. Type exclamation point giveaway in the chat. Scan the QR code. Don't be that guy or that girl who doesn't get the opportunity to receive a little care package from us here at Trite. Filled with some of our new and old collections. All of which certainly going to look great no matter where you choose to wear it including on the streets of Monte Carlo, where you might get flagged down and asked why it is that you're videotaping a car that isn't expensive enough to be worthy of videotaping if you're wearing a Triton logo, as it happened to me earlier this week. <laughs> Sir, that's just a Q8. What's the big deal? You're wearing a Triton hat. So it looks as though now we are down the money bubble is it soft hand for him 33 remaining no we just lost another victim it is going to be jeremy zoadi who was in 34th that left us at 33 being told by producer james we are down to 32 so it is stone bubble time here at sporting monte carlo in the gg millions we got there quick i feel like we blinked we were just at the desk for the pregame and now we are staring at the difference between not making any money and picking up $41,000 in payout. That is going to be a flat payout as we dive inside the app. Four slots will be providing $41,000. And then from that point forward, it'll be $45,800. Uncertain whether or not we're going to be able to take the app for you. But if we can't show it to you, you can always download it and get there. There it is. Director Martin's on top of things. Four payouts flat from 27th up to 24th, and then 50,600 as we scroll our way forward. The bands stay that way. They go down to two place payouts until we make it to the final table, and then each and every payout becomes a jump. Not sure what happened there. Was there a glitch in the matrix? It <laughs> looked like it. That was a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Download the Triton Poker Plus app, by the way. Do yourself a favor, whether you're on Android, whether you're on iOS, and it is the best way to stream our coverage. Exactly what we use here at the desk, exactly what the players use in real time, granted, not on the delay as we experience it, uh, so as to protect the integrity of the game, and that's how they keep their bearings while they're out there. Certainly makes for a very different experience. Now then, Puntsri looking to avoid the experience of being next player out on the stone bubble here. 290,000 in front of him. Not sure who the 33rd, 33rd place casualty is just yet. Showing 33 there. James convincing us that we are on the stone bubble. Certainly must be, otherwise we wouldn't be pausing as we are right now for administrative purposes. <clears throat> Pardon me, Maria, but... From what we've seen so far, I would imagine the story's got to be Webster. Right. Well, we saw Webster pick up aces twice, but also making that big call against Greenwood, who actually came in the day with a really nice stack, but wasn't able to get Webster off of Jackson 10s. But also, you know, on one of the outer tables, one that we weren't following, Yuri Zivileski doing work because all of a sudden, jumping up to the top of the chip counts has over four million and certainly someone who was close to winning a title for a brazilian the first title for a brazilian before his fellow countryman pedro garignani did uh, but a very strong player is yuri and you know chat also clamoring to see uh, yuri on the feature so perhaps we'll be able to showcase him a little bit yeah more. poker such a big deal out in brazil right now yuri though as we look at his Festival, Maria Ofer, 
Seven attempts, not so much as a cash here. Stuck on 1.6 million in career Triton earnings and five caches, although obviously he should be notching his first cash of the series here if we can expect things not to unravel in a very <laughs> precarious manner. By the way, officially the 33rd place finisher is going to be Paulius. We saw him eliminated there. I thought that he was the man, or 32nd place, uh, 33rd place finish, mm -hmm. leaving us with 32. Sorry, it gets a little bit confusing from time to time up here, although it shouldn't. Uh, so we are just about moments away from getting play back underway out there in the field where Igor Yaroshevsky is second behind Zivilevsky. Steve O'Dwyer in third, chip leader coming into the day, 2.6 million in front of him. So then play just about ready to resume as we see Webster, 59 bigs up top. Here at his feature, Ivy and Greenwood now neck and neck with 11 bigs. to the feature in the form of Frederic Delval and Francisco Benitez, the latter of whom has an ace on the button here with the action folded around to him. Fast action system in play, Maria. Red time banks out there. Yeah, and for some people who are new to Triton, of course, you know, sometimes it could be a little bit confusing for them to know when they've actually gone into that pre-flop time bank but people are expecting people are expecting of course that you know at this stage when we're close to the money that it's going to be important as we see the all-in from Benitez with the ace mystery card 915k in the middle no takers out of the blinds as Benitez able to successfully announce his arrival Playing under the Uruguay flag out there next to Argentina. You been down to Punta del Este? No. Maria, I know there's an event that, that happens. Yeah, they, they do actually have, I believe it's a part of the Poker Stars series of tournaments that they hold down in South America, Latin <coughs> America, that part of the world. But I have never been to that continent. As a well-traveled woman, I would have thought maybe you had a stamp or two from South America. No, the farthest I've gone is uh, Cabo. Yeah, I was like, mm, <laughs> Cabo. Sounds about right. Genghis Satubayev opening this one. Online qualifier, A6 on the button. Suvarna mulling deuces. Flats, set mine. <coughs> Comes up fruitless on a clean 6-3 board where Sadubayev has second pair. Dry texture. That too, by the way, looks like a particularly <laughs> wealth-laden garment. The three-quarter zip's got Laurel Piano vibes. Yeah. You know, they always... They always want to be comfortable, but still look like they can, you know, find themselves in a three Michelin star restaurant. Yeah. I see it. Queen pairs on the turn, as Suvarna made the call of 75,000. <coughs> yeah, and that might have been a dangerous call mm. on the flop because now, you know, if you think about 
the wide range that's going to be opening from the button. You could still potentially be ahead once the queen pairs. You know, you're going to be ahead of all of the ace highs, the king highs. You know, also just the type of flop that you expect your opponent to bet very frequently as a continuation bet. And so does Subarna end up getting a little <coughs> bit too stubborn in this hand? It's the kind of card that one could understand would lead Suvarna thinking he can find a river against something like an ambitious ace high. Oh, well, you know, I can't say I saw this coming, but... Certainly didn't, but... This could potentially win him the pot. I, I don't know what... Sadabayev's going to make of this check raise other than the fact that Savarna's trying to rep trips here. You know, you are beating some potential combo draws, maybe 5-4 of clubs. But, wow. Savarna's going to get the best uh. hand to hold. <laughs> <laughs> and look at Ren Lin zeroing no, right in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Loose food. Loose food, I know. On Santos. Leave five, we can Huh? Leave us five. Bluff best hand. Yes, maybe you give us five. You know, that right there, Maria, yet another example of the evolution of Santos Suvarna. And you know, there were full OS overhauls throughout the first <laughs> few festivals. Now just tweaking and refining as there's less room for improvement now that he's gotten himself to where he is. We call him Santosh 3.1 here at this festival. Yeah, usually, you know, you have to wait a whole year for an operating systems update, but like Santosh getting it every month or two. You know, certain doors are easily opened when one is capitalized properly. Meanwhile, looks like we've got an all-in situation here with a complete board run out. This is between Jans Ahrens and Lewis Spencer. Lewis with Jack three against King Queen. This one came down Spencer. Min raise open, Ahrens Flatting from the big, check calling 60K, check calling 300K. After it came king, 10, deuce, and then a seven. And on the river, Lewis jammed for 2.1, got caught with air. Arens with a big bite out of the Brit. And that'll come to the delight of the Dutch delegation. Got to assume they're out there somewhere soaking this one up. Oh, we got the I steady like cam game. working. So look at the trophy that will be awarded to the eventual champion here in the GG Millions. Don't get dizzy out there. Merry go round vibes. And back up we come. Ivy and company. Feel such a big draw each and every time we feature him. I would call him. Okay, come on. Be on the rail. Webster running red hot. Yeah. Already had a couple of tours of duty with aces, I believe, now with kings. Would explain his ascent up the leaderboard here as the stone money bubble remains intact here in the GG Millions. Schwipperts. Queen 10 suited in the cutoff, the only customer. 
flat, bringing the pot to 335,000, and the flop bringing him two overs and a gutter, and possible added expenses. Yeah, fairly interesting for Schwipperts to, of course, have two overs and a gut shot. And sometimes expecting, I think, Lim to see bet and sometimes expecting him to check. It's not really a spot where I think a pre-flop aggressor is going to be continuing, you know, over 70% of the time. I think that's just a little bit ambitious for this board against a cutoff caller who presum presumably is going to have some pretty strong hands here. Oh, and now courtesy of the check from Webster. Schwippert's able to hit this queen free of charge, but it could get expensive. Yeah, it would appear that Lim was trying to go for a check raise on the flop, but now gonna have to start betting as there's gonna be, you know, some Jack X, 10 X wanting to get involved and don't want to let those types of hands see a free card. No, you don't. 175,000, Webster. No longer looking to do any trapping or texture. A bit riskier. into the middle as Schwippert's flats and gets there the awkward way. Queen's intense, but the four-liner on the board. Something not lost on Webster. How much Jack X is he gonna give Schwippert's as played? Yeah, I mean, certainly gonna be hands like Ace Jack in the calling range of Schwippert and King Jack suited, Queen Jack suited, those types of hands. So I think that Lim is gonna likely be checking here, but I think once check two, Schwipper can certainly think about going for value with top two. And once your chips are at the new table. But does end up checking back. You may go on a 15 minute break. We're gonna anticipate your break. You are now on a You surprised to see Schwipper not go for value? I think that there's definitely a case to be made for going for value there, but also, again, close, getting close to the money I, on the stone bubble. In fact, I think just getting check raised there would feel really gross. Well, hang on. Might there be some gross feelings in store for somebody here at our outer table? We find Boss Paul Fua opening to 100,000. The jam came from the button of Yacheslav Buldigin. On their backs they go. It's ace king for Buldigin. And Jax for boss. Chop, chop. <laughs> Buldigan <laughs> is the covered stack. And now, against middle set, the only path to victory for the time being for Vyacheslav to avoid elimination would require a 10. Instead, he hits the ace, and facts remain. But will the bubble? No, it will not. Eight on the river. And Paul Pua able to notch a cash as he does the field a favor and eliminates Buldigan. On the bubble here in the GG Millions. Hauling in Vyacheslav's remains and guaranteeing everybody the min cash of 41,000. So a sigh of relief collectively breathed by the short stacks in the room. 
which include Ivy and Greenwood. Sub 10 bigs for them. Punat Punsri, of course, was shortest in the room. Story time with Frederic Delval. I saw this morning the interview you did about, uh, mm -hmm. about uh, the main event in London. Yeah. It's really nice. Thank you. Failed to cash. The one other event that he played, which was the 60K 8 Max back in London. This is second festival officially and second event. See Benitez. Then raise open with the sixes. Ivy with a couple of fours on the button. Just gets right out of there. Yeah, still staying patient despite being in the money now. I feel like a lot of people might have looked down at the button and a couple of fours and thought, let's give it a spin, Maria, but Ivy on another level about things. Suvarna, meanwhile, ace jack on the button. Min raise open, facing a three bet from Hing Yang Chow, who has already enjoyed a double today. Took the big bite out of James Chen with ace queen against two queens. Now looking to chomp down on some of Santosh's stack. Yeah, and these are two very strong hands given their positions. If, you know, you expect Chow to have a three betting range that does contain some bluffs, then shoving with ace jack certainly would be fine. You could also proceed with a call, of course. But what I would not recommend you doing is folding. Oh no, don't don't pick up the cards like that though, Savarna. Yeah, a lot of uh, air between <laughs> the card face and the felt there at an angle, no less. It's Could okay. be risky, but not if you're going to be mucking. Santosh did have the benefit oh. of position. You're very brave, Alex. I am very and a lot of times those big blinds might speak oh, up. Can, you're can a you danger. Go, you're a dangerous can you man. Go, can you go brave? You're, you're a dangerous man. Lighter hands than normal, Maria, just presuming that the button's a little out of line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nevertheless. Only if there is no Ah, only the open raise. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, another dangerous. Okay, okay. Yeah. Eating soup at the poker table. Against the raise as well. You have to gamble sometimes. Shows you have no fear. On me? is blind. Justin with the check back. Eight four three. Here in both seats. Audible also going to check back and certainly turn some backdoor equity with that seven of diamonds, but still no connection for either player. Queen high does feel like it has a bit more showdown value, of course, than the 10 high. 
So not surprised to see Bonomo continuing to check. And now Chow just giving up. Full knuckle down there. Because that's a hand that won't make the highlight reel. <laughs> Almost fell asleep during that one. Not actually, though. Hmm. I'm just glad I'm feeling so much better. Yeah, you... But it really was like a 20-minute period where... I was scared. I thought we were going to lose me. Guys, we're not kidding. There's a garbage can <laughs> right here behind the desk that I had producer James placed just in case. I mean, I kind of don't understand why it's still there, <laughs> to be honest. I, I mean, we don't need the smell of yesterday's hot garbage. Actually, no. It's uh -huh. filled with the bags that the players all put their chips into yesterday. Are you trying to look for an extra chip? Yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, let's see there's how no cash value in those. Just, you know that, right? Okay, here's a bag. Who's this? Julian Sipon. I can't even make out his chip. 540K, it looks like. This is great. Is this like Antiques Roadshow, like where you think you might stumble onto something? <laughs> Ding Biao? How did Ding Biao bag a trillion in chips? That's, I think he might have overstated things. I mean, am I kidding? Look, look at Ding Biao. Did he convert the currency? Like, what, what was he doing here? I mean, is this an invasion of privacy? This is what FBI agents do. They rummage through the trash, By the way, you know they go through your trash. That's why you gotta burn the garbage guy, shred the documents. You know, I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts, Ali, and... You and Shulman both. You know, I hear... Oh, I didn't realize. This is something that Nick and I can He's bond obsessed. over. Oh, wow. Okay. He's and, convinced and I'm a serial killer that missed my calling. <laughs> Ace queen for Sugarna. So you listen to a lot of these... And, and I think it's what? incredibly Wait. stupid well, that people think that they can murder someone and then throw the evidence into the garbage as if that wouldn't be one of the first places the authorities would look. You know, it's like a lot of times, <coughs> is this, am I watching or listening to World's Dumbest Criminals or is this a murder mystery podcast? Thank goodness they're not all smart. Maria, it would be a little disheartening if people were just out there getting away with it. Savarna has company here, three-way to this flop of 997, where the opposition could both stay interested. Kulev, close things from the big blind, has the gutty. Chow, flatting in position with the threes. Not going to be facing a seabed. Chow deems it safe to go ahead and bet the threes for protection, but might Kulev have some ideas here? Perhaps to check raise the gutty. Six of hearts, pretty key. Can also turn some flush draws. The only remaining customer, as he check called the position bet of 125k. This is not his card on the turn, and not one that rates to be of concern to Chow. Yeah, if he's still looking to deny equity to two overs, then absolutely can continue to bet. He doesn't believe that there would be a lot of over pairs that Santosh would play this way, given that it was multi-way, would have likely just gone ahead and bet himself on the flop. Two hundred and fifty K as Chow continues to barrel and you kind of understand Santosh's thought process here. It may be that he doesn't anticipate a flat call out of Chow in this zip code of nines, sevens, or fours. Yeah, and there's a lot of semi-bluffs there. You know, Savarna doesn't block flush draws, jack-ten. 
Those type of hands might be looking to barrel their equity through the flop and the turn. Shut down on the end after the jack arrives and Chow played that one to somewhat optimum outcome. Let's call it. No stranger to Triton, by the way, is Hing Yang Chow. First visit came all the way back in 2018 in Montenegro. <coughs> Plays the short deck stuff. A couple of visits to Jeju in Montenegro subsequent to that one. Played the million pound event in London in 2019. Did not cash. Also joined us for three events in Vietnam. That was his last attendance. Finished 12th in a 15K 8 max there for a modest 43,900. Does have a title, though, under his belt. That came in 2019 Montenegro in a PLO event, no less. Hmm. Well, maybe he's here really for the PLO tournaments. A late arrival. This is his first event, one might imagine, warming up and then playing the slate still to come of four card events. Five, Little suited connector piquing the interest of Shingis. Defense versus the king six. No connections for either holding on the Jack-10-7 board. And here comes Ren Lin. One and a quarter. Take it down. much from Ren, by the way. Just in terms of chatter, let's call it, and also <laughs> results here. He's one for six. Perhaps they're Whoop. directly correlated. <laughs> 12th place finish in the 30K7 max, the lone cash for Ren here at his first ever Triton Festival. On the button, just rips it in, looking over at the stack depths up. behind him. We'll see my friend. Maybe my turn. To First one, very good for you. Very good for me? Yeah. Second one, also good for you. Okay. I mean, you just need one papaya. <laughs> and Bradley. <laughs> one papaya. But I, I prefer to partake. Yeah, kick me. Yeah. Kulev. One of the more tenured members of the Bulgarian delegation obviously encouraged some of his mates to make their way over to this festival. And for one of them, that being Dimov, it resulted in a title already. And that is something that Alex Kulev has yet to experience. Here it is fourth, third rather, ever Triton Festival, Kulev, 16th in the 30K7 max. That's the lone cash across seven attempts for him. Meanwhile, Ren Lin's aces are going to have a customer here as they open the hijack. And on the button with an ace-king suited and a stack of this depth, Santubayev would be expected to put in a three bet. Quarter million. And let's see how Ren wants to play it, Maria. Obviously, this is heaps of hand. Yeah, well, I feel like the problem is is when you three bet off of 18 bigs, sometimes your opponent might feel like that looks quite strong, strong enough that would call a jam if Lynn decided to just four bet over this 
three bet non all in. Lynn probably doesn't have a lot of experience against Sadabayev specifically. You know, sometimes these decisions as to whether or not to slow play here is going to be opponent dependent, but here just going to go all in. Yeah, Shingis always knew what the plan was in the event that Ren did mutter those two syllables. That's a bit better than the Lady Gaga. You can understand why Satubayev is on his feet here as the Kazakh needs to Love. hit something special simply to draw live. 1.9 in the middle and a club free 10 high board is about as ugly as it gets for an ace king. Jack Queen Ooh. needed to draw live and there is a ray of hope, but. But it's awkward because you've already started demiking. So do you keep going? Do again. Now you do. Yeah. <laughs> Six on the river. As Ren able to fade the queen and dispatch. One of our GG qualifiers, Maria. Well, I spoke to Ren actually a couple days ago, and he was mentioning how, you know, this is his first Triton, but that he's been running very badly. He's like, oh, I have so much better luck at the Poker Go studio. Doesn't feel like my hands are holding up here. And maybe it just took, you know, the very last no hold him event for things to turn around for Ren. <clears throat> but he says he will be playing the PLO as well. Hi. Ren, up to 54 bigs. Still 30 behind. Overall chip leader, Yuri Zivilevsky. 4.2. Taking a peek, by the way, at how it is that Yuri came upon such a big stack. He got entangled with Jeremy Zuadi. It was an ace king against an ace nine. Zuadi open. Cut off. Solo. Zivileski, three bet. Jeremy called. It came 6 5 4. Both players check. Board paired on the turn. Zivilevsky then activated. Getting 225, got called, and then the ace on the end. Both players hitting it. Zivilevsky jammed for 1.9 million, the overbet. Jeremy would make the call and send a massive pot Zivilevsky's way. Meanwhile, Bonomo, a massive open sizing with 740,000 and not unlike Satubayev before him. He has picked a poor time to go up against Ren Lin, who goes from aces to kings. And no sooner did you tell the story about him talking about his hands not holding up and maybe not getting that lucky, here he is, able to flat, looking to entice somebody to get out of line behind him, unable to do so. And now, Panamo will see the bad news. <laughs> Domination. Lick of the lips. Use my chips well, okay? Take one to the final table. Oh. Powerful jinx. Feels <laughs> like he can taste it, but Bonomo does find the queen. Hearts don't change anything. GG. GG. And the river. Fails to deliver Bonomo the needed two outer as he will fail to get any further luck, in this one. Thank you. Joining Satubayev <coughs> in picking up $41,000 as a min cash. Boy, under construction yeah. in a major way here. Ren Lin Holdings. And that's the thing about tournaments, you know. Sometimes you're just going to be on the 
wrong side of variance, but it just takes one. Just takes one where you run pure. Well, Ren, pausing construction wow. briefly to look down at something oh, that isn't really <laughs> as good as the aces and kings that he just enjoyed. Zivilevsky from the small blind attacking Hing Yang Chow with an ace in the big. Cool. Queen nine six as Chow played it as a flat. Still has the lead. Let's see whether or not Yuri wants to barrel again. Yuri looks stressed to release the iPhone 15, or 16, <laughs> rather. I mean, this is Steve Jobs chic at its finest. You know, I've just never seen Yuri with a hair out of place and that well coiffed facial hair situation. It's hard, you know, sometimes, you know, you might miss buzzing and trimming the beard, but it doesn't look like he takes any days off in that department. How much time do you think Chow spends on <laughs> similar grooming? Table break? A lot less. All right. I venture to guess as <coughs> Yuri does barrel we we one and a quarter. We'll Please take that up. one down. We still play? No, we stop, I think, yeah. A table break or not? No, no, just just one player, I think. It redraw at 24. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll peek at the chip counts then as we flip back over to that other feature where Webster still sits atop Ivy sub 10. Lingering, fairly tight cluster between Heath and let's call it Benitez. Young Trippert's in second, Greenwood book ending that log jam. Chip counts brought to you by betacr.eu. Ren Lin now, second in chips overall. Hot little one-two stretch for him. Steve O'Dwyer still managing to stay in the top three, though, after coming in as the day's chip leader. Yeah, he's been hanging out. Maria and I feverishly navigating our way through the Triton Poker Plus. I've been search of what we haven't seen on screen alongside those of you who are streaming us. And it looks like we have flushed out some more activity elsewhere in the room. Yulian Bogdanov and Artur Martirosian in the blinds. Volkman open to 115,000. Martirosian defended the big. King 9-9 nine nine flop. Do you see what looks like a check raise, is it, in front of Artur? So Volkman bet 50, Martirosian made it 135. Volkman then clicked Maria up to 250, Artur flatting. So this one grows rather quickly, an extra half a million, moves toward the middle. Deuce of Diamonds turn.
Looks like Volkman is going to fire this turn. And Martirosian. That's the all-in button. It, all in. it was pretty quick and a quick fold yeah. out of Volkman as well. I don't know. Perhaps a little bit out of line. Oh, 95K. a Brazilian out of line? No, never. <laughs> Downsized turn bit. Promptly pounced upon by Martirosian. And by the way, the all-in was just 185,000. So quite ambitious from Volkman. And a big pickup there for Artur. Stay in here, are we? Oh, O'Dwyer. Moving day. Looks like he's going to fill in some of the void left behind at our other feature. back in the air now. Greenwood. Very playable ace jack. Had his challenges thus far here today. Ivy, who's also been really patient today, has been pretty card dead throughout the early levels. here for Webster after Sam commits the bulk of his chips. The remainder get requested. Well, it does appear that Lim and Greenwood were destined to do battle today. And Lim so far have been getting the best of Greenwood. Sam can do nothing but call as the commitment had been made. And now let's see if he can bounce off of the low water mark on the day. Has the two overs against the tens. Webster has been running well, though. Blemish free has been the outing for Lim thus far. Quite the inverse for Sam. Ace King four, though. That'll put Sam comfortably in front. Comfort remains. Courtesy of the six and just got a fade of 10 here. Mission accomplished. The way you holding the flop. So Greenwood will Look hold that one is Again. as we flip it back over to Ian Bradley who's Jack-9 suited, was always in a bad way against the King Jack of Hing Yang Chow. And the room just got a little quieter, <laughs> Maria. The room has been fairly quiet in general, though, today. Not, not a lot of talking, not a lot of 
banter happening, especially considering how well some of these players know each other, how much history some of them might have, how often they've played against one another. Maybe it's a result of the fatigue that inevitably sets in at the end of every series. A lot of these players have been playing day in and day out for you know, 10 days straight. Yeah, toward the back end of a festival, the tank can run <coughs> a little bit empty. There's no question about it. And this is where that physical and mental stamina needs to be called upon. Oh, Though I will head. say this, when you front load the festival, not having that sort of stamina doesn't prove necessarily as costly as you're playing the smaller events. Mm -hmm. Towards the back side of the docket. Yeah, morale might be a little low. That is for sure. <laughs> High enough morale for a jam, though, out of Suvarna here with the pocket eights. 12 bigs. I might drink gamble too much. Okay, okay. Ren Lin found his appetite, by the way, after those <laughs> two aces and kings back to back takedowns. Suvarna. Doesn't get anyone looking to play with them here. Flipping back over where Greenwood has officially doubled. under the gun with the 7-5 suited, just seven bigs. He's going to try his hand at two randoms in the big blind over that combo. East Jack for Frédéric Delval. Oh, but wait a minute. said all in, I put the all in, but I didn't know you have one chicken, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I, I thought it was all in. I said all in, I put all in, but okay. I'm sorry. Looks like a little technical difficulty here in terms of an all in button perhaps being deposited prior to things being official, but it is Shirzad Khisu who opened to 100,000. Punsri defended. Jack 3 4 flop. It went check, check. Nine on the turn, and then Punsri would lead out for 150, get called on the river. He jammed his last 155, and he indeed had trip jacks. Jack 10 up against the ace 7 of Hisu, who was a non believer. Unpaired ace high made the call. Yeah, Punsri started that hand with sub 10 bigs, so really nice double there. Greenwood rips the queen 10 suited from the small and Ivy king seven deemed adequate better than the seven five before it just four percent though the advantage for Phil and I don't need to ask you, Maria, what the chat's rooting for here. <laughs> 780 in the middle. No slight to Greenwood, of course, but Phil's just given poker fans so many memories through the years, and they want more. But the Queen-10-8 board doesn't rate to give it to them. Top two for Sam. Ivy reaching for the mic early for the time being. It's with good reason. Turn, no, and yeah. that's seven dangler. Suddenly turning into a gut shot straight draw. Four outs for Phil. And the deuce of spades is not going to get it done as we have another casualty. The fourth and final min cash will belong to Phil Ivey. 28th place finish 
alongside Bradley Bonomo and Satubayev. Pay jump realized by the remainder of the field, 45,800. Pretty nice rebound for Greenwood from the start of the day. There will be a total redraw at 24. But pretty flat payouts, though, for a while. No big jumps in prize money, as we do have three players sitting with sub-10 bigs. Five seconds. Raise 125,000. Fold. Fold. Jax for Greenwood, bringing a chuckle out of you, Maria, as all of a sudden he begins to heat up. Yeah, they might want to look for a different dance partner after this, though. Right. It was his ace jack against the tens of Webster. Now he hands Webster the ace jack and holds Jax himself, not to mention the queen ten that just showered Phil Ivey. Plays it as a flat, though, from the button. Yeah, giving Lim some respect for... His opening range from under the gun plus one. Very similar stacks for both players, just around 28 bigs and <laughs> Lim spikes the ace. Yeah, repaying the favor of being outflopped with his two tens. And now that flat by Greenwood, feeling like a prudent decision with 370 in the middle and just 9% equity with two to come. Jack of clubs is nice to have as you see Greenwood check back his holding to make sure that that is indeed one of the two jacks in his hand, giving him some backdoor possibilities and it's not necessary to start attributing that ace on the flop to something that connects with Lim's holding just because he C bets as the pre-flop aggressor. Obviously less clarity when we do flat the button than if we had three bet in terms of being able to assign a range to Webster. Yeah. His 120K C bet does get flat at 610 in the middle now. Go on, Maria. I think King Queen's though gonna be very natural as some of the hands it's gonna be opening up front and also continuing on that flop. <laughs> yeah. okay. Greenwood, of course, still going to be ahead of those. And Lim going to slow down here. Perhaps feeling like Greenwood can at times have sets here. You know, if Greenwood flats with jacks, then he's certainly going to be flatting with tens and nines. So just cautious. Out of the ace jack uh -huh. of Webster. Pretty textured board. Won't mind seeing the check back from Greenwood. Clubs do get there on the end, though. And Lim probably not feeling like there's going to be a lot of hands he could get value from if he were to decide to bet here with all of that texture coming through. So no further betting after that one barrel on the flop as Greenwood checks back, gets shown the ace. Kept the damage to a minimum though, Maria. Could have bloated that one up and yeah. been facing an even bigger barrel potentially out of Webster at some point, depending on the line taken.
Looks like JNT's on the rail, sweating his buddy. Delval. The French have so much style, don't they? You know what I mean? Even just the, the scarf and the glasses, you know? And so then that very stylish pair of kings that he's also wearing. It's not really just about the scarf. It's like how they tie the scarf. Yeah. Great point. Five seconds. Ready? 135 k the open. Adams with an ace in the small blind. Get away. Now Heath. Queen nine. Unfortunately for him, will not connect in the form of a pair. Ace Jack Seven board though, that pesky overcard to the Ace Magnets, aka Pocket Kings. A lot of times though on this texture you can just see that small with range. Still, of course, gonna get value from Jack X's, flush draws, straight draws. Fifty-five K as Delval does not flinch, despite the presence of the ace. Easy check fold for Heath. Et maintenant que mon coach est arrivé, je vais va falloir que je m'appuie. How's that high school French working for us there, Maria? You got some translations? No, they talk too fast for me. I get it. Actually, French was one of my favorite classes in high school. When did it all go wrong? <laughs> Delval, things going right. He's 10 suited open, a couple of nines. This time, the temptation far greater for Tim on the button. Could choose to isolate if he wanted to. Covered, though. Not going to bloat it. Yeah, to Delval, you know, we've only seen a little bit of him today, but hasn't seemed to be very active. So Adams just going to hope for some safe flops. Play post in position with a really nice hand. Wait a minute. Got one brewing elsewhere in the room. Let us take a quick peek at what is developing here on the eight deuce, 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 10 board. It is Arthur Martirosian. Smiling at showdown, courtesy of the fact that he had ace king against ace queen. They got it all in pre eight deuce, deuce, 10. King, as you saw it run out. So Martirosian doubling through Punsri. He was unable to hang on to his chips, newly obtained. Very long. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, we flip back over to where it looks like Tim Adams has flopped himself a set of nines on the Queen 9 8 board, where Delval did check the gut shot. In lieu of following through, backdoor club's working as well. Does flap the 125K C bet. Red four it was that came down on the turn, but we've got something else brewing elsewhere in the room. Lewis Spencer has called an all-in on the flop here against Mario Mosbach, who already has a title under his belt here at this festival for Spencer. It's ace-queen for Mosbach. It's ace-eight on the ace-queen five flop. Mosbach going to be doubling up the Brit. Pre-flop, Spencer put 465 in there, Mosbach made the call. Just 60K was left for Mario Spencer. The covered stack. 350. Meanwhile, this pot continues to progress. Adams trying to go for three streets of value, but Delval not turning backdoor flush draw to go with his gut shot straight draw decides to fold. Well, there's still time to sign up over at the world's biggest poker room, GG Poker, and get yourself heaps of value in the process by using the sign-up code Triton underscore 2023. Get yourself some GG Millions tickets. Hop in on that $50 million Bounty Hunter series. And then spin the wheel in the flip and go. It all happens only at the world's biggest poker room, GG Poker. Meanwhile, Ying Yang Chow and Yuri Zivilevsky, blind versus blind, both connect on a King 9 8 board. Pre flop, Yuri made it 200 to go. Sizing up when opening from the small BVB. Over 3x. Chow with the best of it. Bottom pair playing better as a bluff catcher, though. Just a lot of other hands that wouldn't mind playing a bigger pot. Still going to be ahead, of course, of the flush draws and straight draws. <coughs> 175 k understandably <laughs> delivered by Chow in the face of the check. Zivilevsky does stick around. See what's what on the turn. Pesky ace. See if that'll... Activate Yuri. Or for that matter, deactivate Chow. Yeah, well, Yuri, as the pre flop aggressor, certainly could have check called the flop with some ace X's. So, does Chow want to play some pot control on a card that might feel a little bit more favorable? for Yuri's range. So the deactivation from Chow, and now a less nervy second ace rolling off on the end. Yuri's kicker improves. Yeah, and if Yuri showed up here with a hand that had no showdown value, perhaps we would see him try to bluff not only, you know, the turn, but also the river as well. But in this spot, with that check back from Chow, you know, probably not going to get a king X to fold at this point. Maybe not even a nine X. Is chopping with other eight Xs. So the shutdown on the end. 
We'll reach out and haul it in. Every time you get the far forward lean to try to bring, bring the pot in, reminds me of Hungry Hungry Hippos. You remember that game, right? Yeah, of course. With the marbles, and you had to mash the little lever in the back of the hippo. Yeah. Four player, it's a right? fun game. Yeah, four if player. If I'm not mistaken. You know Crazy Mike Thorpe, a legend out in Las Vegas, actually gambled high stakes Hungry Hungry Hippos. <laughs> he would. True story. He used to try to get you to come out to Circus Circus on the strip and get involved in the carnival games for big bets. I didn't want to challenge him at Hungry Hungry Hippos, though, because, you know, he's always hopped up on the ADD meds and... I thought he might be able to, yeah, it's like a PED of sorts, you know what I mean? You just jam the, you know what I mean? I don't actually think he's hopped up on the ADD nuts, by the way. I'm just making it up. Meanwhile, a couple of king queens seem to have locked horns here. Putra and Boss Paul Pua will be chopping. Good friends. Friendly poker. Percher, one of those guys that you love to see out there, just like Paul, always wearing a smile, Maria, win, lose, or draw. <laughs> Don't ever seem to be stressed. I gotta find out what the secret is for those guys. You know what I mean? I can get a little stressed from time to time. Well, you engage in highly stressful activities. No one knows what you're talking about. <laughs> It's funny, I would have answered my phone just now, but of course, one cannot reply to the margin call department at their local brokerage whilst on air. <laughs> that would be unprofessional. Like, uh, Staying here, it would seem. Paul giving Lewis a walk. And Lewis seems to have had something there. Still staying here at our outer table where it seems that Henrik Hecklin is the man pushing chips forward. Just a min raise to 120,000. Now back around to Spencer. Small blind. Boss stretching it out in the background. Looks like an all in button it has been delivered there by Spencer. Hecklin has made the call. What have we? Jacks against Ace King. Hecklin with the Jack. Spencer at risk here. And on the flop, we find a Jack. Jack 6 5, top set. The Ace King in real trouble. And now it's official. A four on the turn. And Spencer's roller coaster ride here in the GG Millions will come to an official end. First of the $45,800 payouts. We'll go to Lewis. He will add to his 623,000 in career Triton earnings. This is fourth cash. <laughs> Two of them coming already here in Monaco in five attempts. 11th in the 125K main, 22nd in the 40K mystery bounty. And Poonsery, who's been on the short stack for a while, you know, even leading up to the bubble, is really doing a good job of hanging on, but now down to three big blinds. And yeah. He is the shortest stack in the room once more. Pot 
Pause button has been pressed. Here at the feature, do need to keep things balanced out there as players are eliminated. Currently 26 runners, runners remaining. You can tell that dealer wants to get cards in the air. He doesn't like sitting still. Arms crossed. Mm. What am I doing here? They get paid by the Do hour, you know? right? By every down. I don't know. I don't think it's by the card, if that's <laughs> what you're wondering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, looks like Ren Lin is the overall, no, second in chips behind Yuri Zivilevsky. Just a moment ago, I could have sworn he was at the top. Yuri recapturing the lead. Whippert's the opener. Queen Jack offsuit. Early position. O'Dwyer wagging his finger with the ace deuce suited. Ren Lin, plenty of chips with which to do battle. He will come along. O'Dwyer, by the way, has slipped to eighth overall in chips. So three players take the nine high two club board. Ren with the gut shot straight draw. <coughs> two checks in front of the party starter. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna wanna be betting against two players with that type of texture because O'Dwyer should have a pretty strong range to be calling out of the small blind. Sometimes that's going to contain smaller pairs that could have sets, you know, could also, you know, have some reason to continue without the presence of over cards. But also with that second check from O'Dwyer did open things up potentially for Lynn to rep especially with the gut shot straight draw having equity if he gets called. What was that about a gut shot <laughs> straight draw, Maria? As the two rounds of checks result in the arrival of clubs, but of course that 10 high straight for Ren Lin checked over to him. See what's on his mind. Well, it doesn't really seem like his opponents are too interested in this pot. And it's getting really coordinated here on the river with the straight draws and the flush draws coming in. So probably isn't going to go too big. You know, it looks like your opponents have potentially some ace high showdown or a weak one pair hand. So really looking to get paid off. I think this is definitely not going to get any action. Confirmed. It's been a hot day for Renlin so far. Yeah, it might be cold outside, but in here, things heating up for Ren and definitely was hoping, he said, to put together a couple of nice scores and some deep finishes. Hasn't really come to fruition yet, but this could be his tournament still. A lot of tournament left though. My favorite days to play poker are on rainy days, Ali. Why, no one quits? <laughs> Just lock the doors? Or there's nothing better to do? Oh, yeah. 
Pocket three is going to play it as a jam here for Webster. Not concerned about Benitez and Delval. Excuse me, can you please? We'll haul in the blinds and any chips. Redraw is 24, 24. Average stack currently 1.8 million, 30 bigs, with the blinds at 30 and 60. Every orbit costing 150k. 25 runners like remaining here. In the last in the GG I millions. I was the hijack just now, and I was just like, didn't I just open the cutoff like 10 minutes ago? <laughs> Back around to Webster. Twenty-five k, just north of the min. One twenty. See how Greenwood feels about Jack Three suited. Suited combos tend to defend Maria, as we've experienced. And wait a minute, looks like we've got some collisions brewing between Bogdanov and Bruno Volkman here. Bogdanov jammed it with an ace ten. Volkman with a couple of queens made the call. Ace Jack Three ten six. The full run out. And Volkman's Queens will be doubling up. Julian Bogdanov. So we don't lose another runner. Do flip it back over here to where Ren Lin opened from the button with an A6 to 150,000. Schwippert's defended with a couple of fours and this is the kind of board texture that should keep him interested. Checking and facing a follow through of 75. Five seconds. You know, sometimes, of course, you can just check call for the four. Sometimes you could also check raise, especially against a button open. Of course, there's going to be some bet folds <coughs> giving your fours more protection against the random overcard equity. Now I mentioned that, of course, Lynn will have more bet folds the wider he's opening, but the ace high is gonna continue, especially with the six of diamonds would be the better of the two flush draws if a diamond did show up as Schwippert's taking the initiative and the five is an overcard but not one that should be at all worrisome more worrisome perhaps being out of position in this inflated pot with the betting lead and wondering whether or not a queen doesn't lurk in Lynn's hands Well, the continuing range of Lynn can certainly contain trips, but also potential for them to have flush draws here, some three X's as well. And the sizing that Schwipperts chooses does keep in the three X, does keep in, you know, deuces. No black. Leave it, Lose. We can play 220k second barrel as Lynn asks to be shown the bluff, but not available. And Schwipperts will take down the last pot of this grouping as we are down to just 24 players, and that is courtesy of the departure of Sweden's Robert Fink. 0 for 4 thus far here in Monte Carlo, and he's not going to be picking up a cash in this one either. One last look then at the chip counts at our feature, where Yuri Zivilevsky does preside over the chip lead, not just at that table, 
but the overall lead. Henrik Hecklin running in second behind him as you see Ren Lin off of his peak. Running in third overall, bringing you back to the desk now, Ali and Maria with you. And it was a bit fast and furious, breakneck. We had to bounce back to the outer tables, but we did march toward the bubble and in rather short order, burst that bubble. And now here we are starting to get deeper and deeper into the payouts. But Steve O'Dwyer, Maria, the guy who came in with the chip lead, very quiet thus far in this frame. Yeah, we didn't really get to see much of him, but wh who we saw a lot of was Ren Lin, who happened to be the recipient of a couple of premium holdings, I think aces twice, kings once, you know, maximizing the value with those hands. And Lin, who's had a slow start to his first ever Triton series, definitely is looking to make a final table here, have a breakthrough, perhaps win a little bit of his previous lost buy-ins back. Um, but Yuri Zivileski, just somebody that we have to talk about, not only because he's sitting atop the chip counts, but also because everybody knows him to be a tremendously skilled player, both online and live, you know, still haven't had the results that he's been looking for this trip. Yep. But again, still a really good chance in the biggest 25K we've ever seen at Triton in terms of runners. You know, a really good trip saver as I keep referring yeah, to it. Absolutely. Not much more left to say then as we've got a bit of an extended schedule break and redraw break. So about 15 minutes time, we're going to bring you back here to the desk and then get you back to the action here in the GG Millions. Don't go anywhere. Continuing coverage after this. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song, the biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of GG Poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time five. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Jump, jump, jump. 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 Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Webster and the river 
Less scary. Webster checking again. Exactly half pot back for Webster. And if Greenwood can perhaps put Lim on a hand like Jack X here, you might think that the third barrel could get it done. And like I said, with that turn pairing the nine, as long as Lim didn't turn trips, Greenwood could easily <coughs> go for this bet on the river with aces, kings, and queens because counterfeits, of course, a hand like Jack 10 and that's exactly what Webster's concerned about now is the overpair, let alone the king-queen that you talked about earlier. Yeah, obviously a little less likely that Greenwood has jacks and tens here because Webster blocks those boats. But Greenwood, you know, certainly trying to rep that part as well. Trying to get a jack X to fold. I've seen Lim take considerable time on these spots. You know, I've seen him put to the test where, you know, he's come up with the right decision before. He's come up with the fold. He's definitely somebody that in these situations where perhaps he's thinking awesome. about making a hero call, he's, he's never going to be hasty with the decision. It almost always feels like he's so close to a call every time. But you're not going to be right every time in this spot. And that is the hard part, especially against a capable player like Greenwood. Yes, could he have some busted draws? Could he have some queen x diamond type Five hands, times. king x diamond oh. type hands? And it looks like Lim does call. And that is Satubayev, 1.7 million. Oh. Ying Yang Chow. Having doubled with the ace queen against the two queens earlier, sits in second. Hecklin and Kulev level in third and fourth. Now then, James Chen, whose queens fell to that ace queen, does jam an ace eight from the cutoff, and he is going to run into an ace jack suited of Henrik Hecklin, who will make the call, <coughs> and Chen needs help. Yeah, terrible start for Chen with that BVB confrontation. And now behind, could he get lucky the way that Chow did against him? 10-9 deuce board, not looking that way thus far. Two spades as well to make matters worse. Turn is dusty. And a lonely two-outer for James Chen, which doesn't come in on the end as Henrik makes the nut flush. And that is a pretty unexciting way to play a day two there. Queens into ace-king, ace-eight first out on the day. Espen Jorstad not far behind him. Then Carl Schappe got in. Christian Rudolph and, as we just saw, James Chen all hit in the locker room. 36 remaining. Five away from the money, Julian Sipon. The shortest of all stacks. Greenwood, King Queen suited, takes us upstairs. <laughs> Found himself a bit of a nemesis in Webster Lim from the big pot they played earlier, and now aces. Yeah, speaks up. Three betting to 180,000 in black oh. jacks for Theologius. This is problematic. Yeah. And it's, it's the fact that the three bets coming in from the button out of Webster, who's got some depth to him now. Granted, Greenwood up front, Maria, but the jacks could get real tempted, couldn't they? Yeah, especially because Greenwood will have some raise folds from under the gun plus one off of 14 bigs. So, you know, it doesn't mean that Lim can't be targeting that part of Greenwood's range with this three bet. Doesn't have to be as strong as aces. You know, sometimes we'll see, you know, something like a suited ace, a small, you know, ace three, ace four, ace five, do this against 
an early position open off of a shorter stack. So Theolo just can't blame him, but just ill-timed 20 bigs. Nowhere to go with Jax. His jam for 785,000. Dishearteningly snapped as Greenwood gets out of the way. And more of that two outer business is going to be needed. As we just saw for James Chen this time. It's pre-flop for Theologis, and he can't find a jack on a queen eight deuce board. Perhaps a path to a gutter. <laughs> I don't control the turn. I just know what's possible. And now, all of a sudden, six outs in total for Alex. Ten or a jack needed. But it's just the five of clubs that innocently rolls off and devastatingly sends Theologus at a and sit and play, not just for these stakes, but alongside people who you've been watching mm -hmm. and fanboying or fangirling. Yeah. For a long, long time, and Webster will be a big fan of this, Pocket Aces. You remember the first time you played pots against players that you had only heard of, you know, watched on TV. You're like, am I really here? Mm -hmm. Did I just really bluff that guy or girl? You're like, my goodness. And it's so easy to psych yourself out, too, when you... Oh. Yeah. Put a pin in that, is it is so easy to think that Webster opening on the button presents an opportunity for you to ship it with an A7 suited, as we see Vaitiekunas do here. But unfortunately for him, he gets shown the aces after the snap. Queen, eight, six. Could be some straight prospects for Paulius on the turn. And there's one, the four, as he goes from drawing dead to drawing live. Better than nothing, but a five still needed. And not available. A wrap at the table as we lose Paulius. Webster running red hot. Yeah. Already had a couple of tours of duty with aces, I believe, now with kings. Would explain his ascent up the leaderboard here. As the stone money bubble remains intact here in the GG Millions. Schwipperts. Queen 10 suited in the cutoff. The only customer is flat. Bringing the pot to 335,000 and the flop bringing him two overs and a gutter and possible added expenses. Yeah, fairly interesting for Schwipperts to, of course, have two overs and a gut shot. And sometimes expecting, I think, Lim to see bet and sometimes expecting him to check. It's not really a spot where I think. The pre-flop aggressor is going to be continuing, you know, over 70% of the time. I think that's just a little bit ambitious for this board against a cutoff caller who presum presumably is going to have some pretty strong hands here. Oh, and now courtesy of the check from Webster, Schwippert's able to hit this queen free of charge, but it could get expensive. Yeah, it would appear that Lim was trying to go for a check raise on the flop, but now gonna have to start betting as there's gonna be, you know, some Jack X, 10 X wanting to get involved and don't wanna let those types of hands see a free card. No, you don't. 175,000, Webster no longer looking to do any trapping or texture. A bit riskier.
350 more into the middle as Schwippertz flats and gets there the awkward way. Queen's intense, but the four-liner on the board. Something not lost on Webster. How much Jack X is he going to give Schwippertz as played? Yeah, I mean, certainly going to be hands like Ace Jack in the calling range of Schwippert and King Jack suited, Queen Jack suited, those types of hands. So I think that limb is going to likely be checking here, but I think once checked to, Schwippert can certainly think about going for value with top two. But does end up checking back. You surprised to see Schwibberts not go for value? I think fourth, third rather, ever Triton Festival, Kulev, sixteenth in the 30k seven max. That's the lone cash across seven attempts for him. Meanwhile, Renlin's aces are going to have a customer here as they open the hijack. And on the button with an ace-king suited and a stack of this depth, Santubayev would be expected to put in a three bet. Quarter million. And let's see how Ren wants to play it, Maria. Obviously, this is heaps of hand. Yeah, well, I feel like the problem is, is when you three bet off of 18 bigs, sometimes your opponent might feel like that looks quite strong, strong enough that would call a jam if Lynn decided to just four bet over this three bet non all in. Lynn probably doesn't have a lot of experience against Sadabayev specifically. You know, sometimes these decisions as to whether or not to slow play here is going to be opponent. They're just going to go all in. Yeah, Shing is always knew what the plan was in the event that Ren did mutter those two syllables. It's a bit better than the Lady Gaga. You can understand why Satubayev is on his feet here as the Kazakh needs to hit something special simply to draw live. 1.9 in the middle, and a club-free 10 high board is about as ugly as it gets for an ace-king. Jack-queen needed to draw live, and there is a ray of hope, but... But it's awkward, because you've already started demiking. so do you keep going? Do again. Now you do. Yeah. <laughs> Six on the river. As Ren able to fade the queen, and dispatch got called, and then... The ace this on the end. Both players hitting it. Zivilevsky jammed for 1.9 million, the overbet. Jeremy would make the call and send a massive pot Zivilevsky's way. Meanwhile, Bonomo, a massive open sizing with 740,000 and not unlike And welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series. Don't adjust your screen. Maria has not morphed or shape-shifted whatsoever. Ali Najad joined now by a man who's got plenty of reasons to be smiling here at the desk. Jonathan Jaffe, two and a half million plus in career Triton earnings. Eight caches, one of which was a title right here in Monte Carlo, just get a look. The 50K Turbo Bounty was won by Jonathan. 501,000 there. One of three caches that you already tallied here thus far. Give us your thoughts, Jonathan, on this uh, festival thus far as we're just about to get back to play. It's been great. Yeah, I mean, uh, the weather's been pretty darn good. The views are amazing. The food here is great. The service is just Triton A+, plus as always. And, uh, yeah, for a moment, the fields look like they might be a little tougher than usual, and then they turned out to be awesome. <laughs> awesome is what we like to hear, obviously, as we take a look at that remaining field right now, which is presided over by Brazil's Yuri Zivilevsky, your overall chip leader with 
24 runners remaining. There's a look at it. A couple of new feature tables will be coming our way shortly. Right behind Zivilevsky is Henrik Hecklund, the Dane, and then Ren Lin rounding out the top three. Steve O'Dwyer, who came in as the chip leader, now sits in 10th. And as you take a look at these two feature tables, Jonathan, anything jump out at you in terms of themes, sort of uh, guys you know go hard at one another, or maybe some uh, interesting seat draws? Yeah, I mean, uh, looking at the top three, I see a theme, which is uh, charisma wins the day. You've got Yuri, Henrik, and Ren, the top three. They're like three of the most charismatic people I know. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. So then we have uh, the first of our two feature tables where boss Paul Pua is sitting on a stack of what is now 41 bigs, and that is a nice outcome for him as he was toward the bottom of the chip counts at one point, now two and a half million, always smiling. And... Plenty of charisma on boss as well. So then let's send it back down into the arena, shall we? And give you a whack at some color commentary here. And I'm sure Maria might be nervously watching right now. Let's not do any threatening of people's jobs out mm. here, Jonathan. Don't All be right. too good at this now. So I should go hard at you. Not at <laughs> I'm always game. You know me. Nice. Blinds of 30 and 60,000 with the 60K ante. Those chip counts brought to you by GG Poker there. You see Ben Heath, 21 bigs alongside Bruno Volkman, the, quote, short stacks, but obviously plenty of playability for the two of them. Ding Biao joins the affair as well. Wait a second, for my time. Oh, uh, yeah. Zivilevsky just to the right of his compatriot, Bruno Volkman, by the way, who is tapped into the 70s for this lovely <laughs> leather bit that we see. A little quilted padding maybe even in there. Didn't get a good look. Looks like the stitching the of a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Something we'd see out here parked on Monaco. King Jack suited. Parks the min rays up front. Now Jan Schwipper. It's one of these names that we don't call all that often here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. And that is due to the fact that Jan is playing his second ever event. 30K7 max, failed to cash. But as Maria put it, a guy that many of you could be familiar with from having played online, Jonathan? Definitely. I know the name. Um, I wish I knew his online name because I think then he'd be more familiar to me. But uh, yeah, gives off uh, strong reg vibes immediately. But I can't say I know much about his game. On the topic anything. of wishes, Jan is going to be wishing that he didn't flop this king given that Zivilevsky, who is betting 100,000 with the action check to him, has him out kicked and in a bad way. We've got something happening elsewhere in the room. Looks to be involving both Greenwood and Alex Kulev. It is ace-jack against two nines for Kulev. Flop, jack-6-3, and Greenwood's ace-jack. Hopping in front. Greenwood, the covered stack here. Needs to fade the nine and does just that. So Kulev... Disappointingly must place his stack forward to have the axe run through it. A couple of tough customers there. Easy to say that about just about any tandem that we Definitely. see on screen. As we do flip it back over to the situation between Zivilevsky and Schwipperts. Looks like the check call on the flop brings us to this turn. Unimproved is King-9. Checking once more and now facing the upsized 600 into 530 and overbet from the Brazilian. Yeah, I think it's an awesome bet. I think this is something that you find a lot from the best players in the world that might be lacking at one or two levels below, which is taking a really good hand that's nowhere near the nuts and putting in so much money for value. I think a lot of people, they look at their hand strength, they say, maybe this is worth two-thirds pot, but Yuri understands how many bluffs he's gonna have here, 
how much Jan has to be calling, not just with a king. And he's going to, you know, really try and maximize his value from 8x of hearts or, um, you know, some of these like ace 10 of hearts type hands in addition to the queen x hands he has to call. And then, of course, the hand that Jan has where it's like pretty near impossible to get away from. And you do see Schwippert's not getting away from it as the call of 600 places another 1.2 into the middle, a third and final check from the German. And let's see, in spite of the fact that he has already bombed the turn with the overbet, will Zivilevsky bring the Gordon Gecko on the end with a little bit of greed is good? <laughs> Safe river, it would seem like the opportunity is there. Right. Sure, I think, uh, well, Jams. now we've seen it. And now, the blender setting is certainly not on the mix side, but touch more toward ice crush yeah. for Schwippert's. Incredibly difficult to fold a king here when, you know, just everything missed. There's not, you know, what did Yuri hit? Pocket fours. So you had to have had it beforehand. And it is precisely that everything missed aspect that presents this terrific situation for Yuri to polarize, make the hand look light mm -hmm. and desperate. Feels like it could be worthy of a few time banks, doesn't it? Definitely. I mean, it's first tournament life. I think it would be a heck of a fold, but uh, uh, I would call. And he agrees. So Schwipperts does call it off there. Those that have been in that spot and even those who haven't can certainly sympathize with the reasoning behind the call. But unfortunately, it is a call that will ultimately find him exiting here in the GG Millions. That departure in 24th place will earn him 45,800 while it will earn the field of 23 that he leaves behind, a roughly 5K pay jump. Now then, we flip it over to where Henrik Hecklin, one of the big stacks remaining, Jack-10 suited, takes us upstairs. Henrik's one of my absolute favorite players to watch. He just, if he thinks something's going to work, he does it. And I love people who play poker that way, who don't really feel too bound by the opinions of others or uh, what a solver might say. Um, he kind of, he's incredibly experienced. He's been in the streets, faced many different player types. Um, I think he's just a phenomenal player. Feels like a dying breed, doesn't it? The guys that are cut from the cloth that Hecklin is. It's a good point. I think it is kind of dying and then it always has this resurgence. So people today who make it to the high stakes when they're young, they have a phenomenal understanding of the solver. Then they get out here in the streets and they start picking up how to actually play poker also. Yeah, there yeah. is more to it than just what the computer does spit back, though clearly having grasp of those fundamentals is, let's call it a prerequisite yeah. for being able to enjoy successes as both of these guys have throughout the course of their Triton careers, both checking on the 6-4 deuce board, eight on the turn, and now a gutter and two overs for O'Dwyer. Yeah, everything I said about Hecklin uh, certainly applies to O'Dwyer just the same. No nonsense is the way I like to describe Steve, but he does have plenty of personality. Isn't always as on display as some others while he's out there in the office doing his thing. Mm -hmm. Takes his craft very seriously. Takes his dry humor seriously as well when he, we're lucky enough to get a taste of it. Nice. 250k lead there from Steve. Range advantage as the defender from the big blind. And Hecklin just steps away from things. Well off the high water mark is Steve, given that he did come in with that chip lead now. One of the top 10 stacks, but working his way back up that leaderboard. And work is kind of one of those words that is very synonymous, synonymous with Steve. Not exclusively, but mm. you know that he puts in the time. Yep. Yeah, he knows uh, what he's doing. He's out here grinding. He, I think he took a fair amount of time off a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, aside from that, you know, you just see him filling up the Henda mob sheet every year. Quietly and without much fanfare. Yeah, that seems accurate. Pocket fours now. Hecklin. 
can't picture you Steve as a big social media guy. No, not at all. Appreciate that about him, by the way, you know? One sure. of those few people who hasn't caught that hook in his cheek, like <laughs> many of the rest of us. <laughs> now, Adams, is he going to feel the lure of threes? We get our answer. Folds the button. One three was busy in Steve's hand anyhow. And now shears out Hisu. Big blind. No interest. I'm used to seeing him in his mom's lucky shirt. You know the story about no, this from no, tell me. back in Spain for Shirzat. He did cash in the main event. It was a fairly deep run for him. Madrid, the first festival, he paid us a visit. That was a 100K euro buy-in. 13th place finish, finish for him. And as he got deep, he brought the same shirt for multiple days. And I remember asking him about it. Is that your lucky shirt? He said, my mom got me this shirt. Nice. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There you go. That's the one and only cash that... Shirzat has enjoyed. This is his third ever festival, playing under the German banner. This is a guy who's got a 100% cash rate through like 40 live tournaments. Jan Jan just kills it, man. He, yeah, he's just an online killer who showed up and just decided, I'm going to win everything or at least cash. It's interesting because, you know, he's not one of the first names that came to mind when the Dutch delegation took mm -hmm. shape. It was Kevin Pake. Mm hmm it was Tom Vogel saying, mm -hmm. right? And yet he is the one who has continued to make appearances mm -hmm. here at Triton, absent those guys. Sure, sure. Jans is um, very logical, awesome dude. I've enjoyed um, the few chats I've had with him. He's just like hyper logical, so completely unpretentious. First guy to tell you, oh, I'm running amazing. This is like unreal. Yeah. But he doesn't make mistakes. The guy plays fantastic. He knows things inside and out. He's a human solver. Um, and yeah, he's just, uh, you know, getting rewarded for his phenomenal decisions. And he has Arthur Martirosian pipped here. Just noticing that the two flags are like a little scramble of one another here. The Russian flag for... Marta Rosian and Arends. Tune Mulder, by the way, the other name from the mm. Dutch delegation that we haven't seen mm -hmm. much of of late as we see Artur activating a I lead have. into the preflop opener of 110,000 on the strength of that King of Spades, yeah. two overs in the gutter. Yeah, um, it's a nice looking hand to be betting, especially into what Jans has. Uh, he's forcing some uh, kind of indifference in Jans' range and with exactly a hand like this, like, uh, call, fold, raise, could see it all. You're kind of able to really keep your opponent's options predominantly to just a call unless they're nutted, and even then mm. they might be slow playing on board texture like that. Mm -hmm. Hence the impunity with which I would imagine we're more inclined to lead and maybe take it right there. Yeah, I don't know about impunity at this depth. The nut advantage is worth something, but um, Jans has been getting it in with so many hands. You know, SPR was, what, maybe 2.5, a little bit higher. So um, with that being the case, you know, Arthur can't fully freeze Jans's range, um, whereas if we're looking at a texture like this, 200 big blinds deep, Jans is going to be very worried with hands like even Queen's. Well, that second barrel of 380K sends the unimproved king-queen into the muck, understandably. Nice line taken by Martirosian. Strongest hat game. Yeah, you know, normally he would bring the, the Gucci lion hat kind of exclusively, but we saw some pivots mm. here at this festival. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen him out there without a hat, though. It's going to be Gucci one way or another. <laughs> it's the lions or it's the uh, kind of classic Gucci logo, right. I think. Right, yeah. Once, the GG. Yeah, yeah, there's that. He was next to me. Um, I was playing in a Triton, and he was getting a massage, so his hat was off, and he was just kind of like a little bit out of it. I think he was in a hand, and so I just took the hat, and I put it on. I was right <laughs> next to him in like the four and five seat, and um, he didn't notice for like 20 minutes because he's getting his massage. <laughs> the rest of the table is kind of smiling, but then <laughs> I coolered Soiza, and I could see on the turn as I have like turned a flush in a three-bet pot, Arthur's looking at me with just a death stare like, what are you doing wearing my hat, bro? <laughs> but I had the nuts and it was three bat pot. And so then he waited till the hand was over. And then he just looks at me and takes the hat back. And I was like, come on, I get it. <laughs> Love that.
Yeah. Nice to see some levity out there in an otherwise typically tense environment. <laughs> Adams, King Queen, hijack open, Arens. Suited one gapper, plenty worthy of defense. 440 in the middle to the flop we go. Ace, King, six. A little piece for Jans, a bigger one for Tim. Action checked over. Adam's another one of these guys, Jaffe, and, it, you know, we can say it about so many of the folks left in the field, but who has truly deep respect from all of the Triton regs. Oh, yeah. I think you're going to find a lot of first place votes for Tim as potentially the best player out here. 90K. On the small side. And small enough to keep Jan's interested. In spite of the lack of a spade on board, that's six. We'll take a peek at a turn, which delivers Adams, the Broadway gutty. Second check from Jans. With that added equity, do we lean more toward continuing here or do we play pot control just in case that ASEC stuff lurks or you can't take the heat of a check raise? It's a good question. I think Tim's got a hand where it's really tough to fold Jans off a better hand. So it doesn't really have much of a bluff function. And as value, it's starting to get really thin trying to imagine what, aside from King X of Diamonds, he would be value betting at. So then the check back from Tim, delivering a nine to the board. So Jans is trying to go over, you know, am I low enough in my range to need to bluff? Well, what's worse that I have? Diamonds. And then he's also trying to factor in how good is this combo for a bluff? Does blocking the six actually block Tim's value range? And it looks like he is going to take a stab at this one, albeit just one third pot. Sure. Feels milky, but King Queen is a good amount of hand at this price. Mm -hmm. So if you're Tim, you're thinking about, aside from diamonds that didn't pair the jack, what bluffs does Jans really have? Does he turn a six into a bluff? If you're thinking about that, you want to know how many six X did Jans defend preflop? Certainly he's defending suited six, but is he defending offsuit six four? Next call. So, Arens unable to do away with the king queen, an understandable flat from Adams. And Nice pickup for Tim. Are these conversations, by the way, Jonathan, that those of you out there are having fairly regularly? Put a pin in it, though. Let's pay some bills. Poker Stake, our official staking partners, exclusively so, do give you the opportunity to buy action from the likes of Michael Soiza, Fedor Holtz, and others elsewhere on poker circuits worldwide. And they let you do it rate-free and transaction fee-free with winnings guaranteed. Pay them a visit, scan the QR code on your screen, or head on over to PokerStake.com and get yourself in on some of the action. Now then, to pick up where we left off, are these conversations that you guys are having amongst one another as you grab a meal together before the event or talk spots, who's the best? You know, is it even a discussion? Sure, yeah, I think that uh, it's interesting. There's, there's different levels to these discussions where, you know, uh -huh. Just about everyone is going to talk to you, you know, anyone else about a poker hand, should they ask. But people have those that they're really close to where they say, hey, you know what, this is a 100% information sharing partner where if I pick up anything on him, I'll let him know and vice versa. And we'll share our reads on, you know, anyone in the field. And then they have their, you know, kind of next level where, hey, if we really push, we can, you know, get this information from each other, but only assuming it's reciprocal. And then there's that, you know, that person that, hey, maybe we don't know each other so well. Why would we just be talking about hands when we're going to be facing each other um, right after? And you might be a little bit more guarded with them. Yeah. So I think everyone's got these different levels of relations and different levels of openness. Yeah. No need to be guarded here for Henrik Hecklin as in the big blind against a hijack open, he wakes up with two aces, a disaster 
for O'Dwyer. Five Let's point. see how Henrik wants to play it. Not slowly. Three bet up to 520,000. And will the ace nine suited be able to bear this weight? Another yeah. 360. I'm not folding ace nine suited. Nor is O'Dwyer. Price of admission does get paid. That's the kind of hand if you have Steve Spot where when you don't have enough respect for your opponent's ability to kind of dial up the aggression, particularly in the money, you can get away from a hand like that. But there's just no way you're making that full to someone as strong as Hecklund. Queen 9-6, and this is a bit of a problem for O'Dwyer as he's got middle pair and the backdoor spades, but just 13% equity, unbeknownst to him. Ooh, I was just gonna ask you, Ali, you like a check here? What uh, do you think? I mean, I don't like it insofar as it feels uncouth. It feels <laughs> a little dirty from Henrik. Looking to lure O'Dwyer into a sense that this ace nine is best right now, but as we can see, it is stone cold barbecued for the time being. All right, let me ask you. You're in Henrik's seat. What do you prefer more? Three barreling a bluff successfully on the river or check calling down and having your opponent bluff it off into your trap? I like the latter. I like the yeah. latter because of Right then and there, your opponent is going to know that they got played. Mm -hmm. And I think that you can kind of leverage, you know, the cage rattling impact of, you know, somebody hanging themselves yep. potentially yep. Uh, to further gains as things go on. Whereas you got to wait for the delay and the opponent to presumably look at the spot and mm -hmm. realize mm -hmm. that you bluffed them mm -hmm. before you can really take advantage of that impact. So you're a 3 0 change up, run the draw on <laughs> third and eight kind of guy? <laughs> Baseball inside talk there from. Jaffe, yeah, I don't mind a good change up, Jaffe. Nice. I like it. Circle change, maybe. Ooh. Knuckleball, even. Can you throw a knuckleball? Dying no, are you kidding me? Who can? <laughs> Nobody so that, that I talk know. about dying breeds. Yeah. Meanwhile, O'Dwyer does manage to find the check back on the turn, but that will lead Hecklin to activate as the texture does get a little more complex for the aces. 525, the number. Seth Davies was a pitcher. That's who you need to see. Maybe he can Ooh, throw a knuckle. Yeah. That's our resident baseball expert. Yep. Davies. Pretty nice turn for O'Dwyer to potentially get away. That's, uh, you know, even if he is ahead at this point, he's worried about a lot of different river cards. Is it getting away that he's thinking about? Apparently, yes. In spite of the fact that it went three bet check bet well dwyer just looking at that queen and the jack and the prospects of a nine not really having anywhere to go from there mm -hmm. i think yeah. suddenly that ace was no longer a great card for steve to have it might have blocked more bluffs than value at that point mm -hmm. and uh just about every other nine he has is going to be either two pair or the draw with the nine ten suited maybe king nine suited and also a gutter are you among those that that enjoys playing chess when you're not playing poker? Uh, three out of 10. I've probably okay. played about 150 chess games in my life. I think uh, you put the right substances in me, I play a quick game of chess. <laughs> but I mean, obviously 150 games under your belt, you understand the sort of forethought that goes into making a move in chess. And it's very similar, I think, mm -hmm. and appeals to you guys because of the manner in which it aids your, your poker, Absolutely. as you're always taking a spot and thinking, it ain't just this in a vacuum, but it's the turn, it's sure, the river, sure. and multi-way spots. What am I doing, you know, with all the permutations that, yep. that could transpire? Yep. You have to be a tactician thinking, you know, more than a couple uh, steps ahead, and, you know, the the prodigies like a Makita, um, they're thinking just, you know, so many moves ahead. I don't want to speak for him because I don't know about high-level chess, but... Um, that's what's going on here, and then respecting the ability of your opponent, understanding there's a tactician on the other side, mm. thinking just the same stuff, and trying to be one step ahead of him, just yep. a little ahead of the curve. Yep, and it's a proposition that can be challenging from time to time as we put a pin in that ace-jack open, while Hecklin has two nines. We flip it back over to where it would appear. Yulian Bogdanov has a7 up against queen-10. Putra. The all-in from the button pre for 485,000 got called. Queen 9-8 board 
It was always Putra's turn did give Bogdanov a pair of sevens, but failed to find the seven or the ace that were needed on the end. And as such, one of the short stacks in the room, Putra, is going to be able to double up. Now we flip it back over to where Hecklin did choose to flat from the small. That invited Webster along with this 10-8 to close the action with a flat from the big. 560 in the middle and two checks in front of Paul Pua with two over cards. Boom. Ace on the turn. The rewards of a check back by Pua. And on balance, just because he checked back doesn't mean he skewed more or less toward the ace, right? Sure. He's got a lot of checkbacks there, I think, with Henrik flatting the small blind. Twos, fours, sevens are all in play. Webster's got all those, too, and seven, four suited. I think it's very reasonable for uh, Boss to check back and overpair on the flop. Um, and then he's got plenty of just crummy hands, king queens, king jacks, etc., that are going to find a check on the flop at a really high frequency. And the other issue for Hecklin is once Paul reaches out and makes this bet, it could be just a function of representing, but he doesn't make that bet. Sure. And are you at all surprised at the check back with the ace jack on a second street? I think that's a very reasonable play um, for all the aforementioned reasons. Um, Henrik and Webster are going to be playing an extremely high frequency check on the turn um, because Paul does have the initiative now when that ace comes, um, both to value bet, maybe a hand like he had, maybe even a stronger hand like ace-king on occasion, something like an ace-four suited. But additionally, Paul has, you know, if not a mandate, some leverage to bluff the turn. Didn't want to get put into the blender by some pressure applied. As we flip back over to where it appears, Mario Mosbach has got his chips forward. Two of the best smiles on tour, Santosh and Mario. There it is. Mario might not be smiling so much with ace-queen against two aces, though. And Hearts. look at this flop. Jack 4-3. Suvarna with Ooh. the overpair Ooh. and the ace. A queen on the turn, though. Yeah, almost the series of Mario continued. <laughs> Unable to successfully. There's that Santa smile. Find that. A smile and a laugh, by the way. Yeah. Look at Mario giving love in spite of the fact that he's on the losing end of this exchange. Yeah, I think he's going to be smiling the whole plane ride home. He's had a pretty darn good series. does feel like there are some guys here at Triton as we see Paul picking this one up on the river, having bet 210K. Unclear whether or not Henrik paid off. Here's no, right. he did not, it would appear, folded. Now, all of a sudden, our heads are spinning as we've got another all-in with a seven suited. Small blind, Yuri jamming, ace 10. The opener, Ben Heath, covered but digging in, and he'll be quite pleased to be the dominant ace here. All in the call. 3.6 million chip pot. Crucial pot and a safe flop. A pair of tens. Can't help but think Bruno's jacket's still taking center stage. It is. There's no question about it. It looks like a 1964 Porsche died and went to heaven and then was reincarnated with a zipper. That was a rare rookie mistake from Ben. He pushed his stack forward on the king turn. It's true he couldn't lose, but uh, wasn't an ace going to make a chop there? Yes, <laughs> yes it was. He was tempting the poker gods yeah. to discipline him. You never see a slip like that from Ben. He is very sharp. One, one, one. And perhaps a bit superstitious? I'm going to guess one point on the scale eight. of poker players, Ben is maybe... Bottom five superstitious. Who's top five? So, uh, now I'm going to oh, say Shaman man. O'Dwyer comes in right there, top five. I mean, come on, Sean Winter? Sean Winter also deeply superstitious, okay. Yeah. I think some people might use a word like spiritual or mystical instead of superstitious, so maybe okay. Chewy's entering that list. Oh, yeah, for sure. I wouldn't call him superstitious, but He's I think... He's our guru. Yeah. Meanwhile, Greenwood... 9-10 offsuit up against Queens of Yulian Bogdanov. This was a Greenwood open, a jam from Yulian, who just 
Lost a bundle of chips not long ago at this table. Greenwood gave him a spin, flopped the gutter on the King Jack 5 board. Unable, however. He's got a pretty good ritual of just going to the food after every all-in. Yeah. Oh, I'm loving Win, it. Win, lose, or draw. We're going to get the calories down, aren't we? Definitely. Hey, free 99. Price is right. Utilitarian vibes coming out of that part of the world. Hmm. Hecklin. Ace 10 open here. Cut off. Adams deliberates with the 9 5 suited. Gonna defend. Suited combos, regardless of how far apart they are, tend to be candidates for these defenses. Yeah. Against yeah. standard sizing. I think that's one of those things that uh, many years ago people might have thought this was uh, pretty fishy to be defending a uh, hand like 9-5 suited, and now right. it's just completely standard fare. Thank the computers for that. <laughs> <laughs> King 8-7 here. Adams with the gutter. Hecklin's ace of clubs working. Check back, and now probably Gutty delivered to Henrik's doorstep. Ace 10 remains best. Hecklin's been a check back monster. That's a couple of uh, mixed spots he's had between this and the Jack 10 of Diamonds, and both times opting for the check. Yeah, the nines against Paul also ended up having to check three streets and fold. Mm. Granted, was beat mm -hmm. on the turn at least. Second check in front of him. Will he look for a free showdown? Or try to clear something that's in think, front of Ace 10? What do you think Jans is thinking about right now? I can see. He's checked out. What, what do you think he's thinking about? Jans? Yeah. Strudel? Yeah. I was thinking something from back home. Yeah. I miss my Speed girlfriend. Skating. Speed skating. All right. Yeah. We're you going know, Dutch. I love the, it. The Dutch are strong. Yeah. Maybe tulips. Tulips. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. Now the, now the stereotyping is complete. <laughs> I've heard you like your investing. I figure tulips is uh, <laughs> never far from your mind. Eklund, 350K does clear the nine high and the gutter. Inferior edition, 790. Going his way. Briefly started talking about Mario oh, Mosbach as we checked in on that outer table, by the way. He was elated to win mm -hmm. his first Triton title earlier here at this festival. And it seemed like quite a few people were very proud of him as well. As he, you know, he's not as tenured, perhaps, sure. as others. And turned away well, from another career as a professional footballer to take mm -hmm. up poker. Very validating moment for him. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, I watched the, the little blip on the Triton Instagram, and it was wonderful just seeing uh, how thrilled he was and his close mm -hmm. friends, how excited they were for him. Yeah. Um, I've gotten a chance to talk to him a fair amount on this trip, and uh, we played some code names. Just a great dude. Takes a bit of a village at times. You know, there's some lone wolves on the circuit, but sure. most everybody's got a crew of guys that they bounce hands off of. Mm -hmm. Like you said, 100% information yep. sharing spots where you deeply trust the reciprocity of the friendship so people won't be misguiding you or, you know, leveling in any way, shape, or form. And I think that definitely lends to all parties involved in those sorts of uh, accords benefiting sure sure i think some of the you know some of the newer guys to establish themselves it might not be full reciprocity because they don't know you know the older guys don't know whether or not they can trust that you're you know just kind of plundering information mm. so um you know showing that you're a good vibes dude who's not just trying to you know ladder through people and take advantage of their information is uh, is pretty important for newer people this scene Little information coming through the YouTube chat, by the way. Blunder on my part. Oh. Jans, I said he's thinking about Strudel. It's not Dutch. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything, but... Yeah. You're just going to leave me out there I to try? Know. I thought we were uh, part of that accord that we were talking about, 100% information sharing. You just Oh, no, I never thought we were peers. Strudel. God, no. <laughs> Please. Oh. <laughs> Rightfully so, yeah, by the way. Yeah, to say mildly insulted is... <laughs> Ooh, it's going to take seven, a moment. 7-7-3 seven, seven, with a couple of spades here as Hecklin involved yet again, this time against Boss. And Boss with the pair on the button. This one came down, min, raise, and flat. 
Henrik not going to follow through. So now that you know where we're at, when I yeah. ask you what would you do here, you understand you can answer that however you want. There's no reciprocity coming. Got it. So okay. I can kind of try to mislead. Yeah, what do you like as boss here? I don't know. I feel like bet. This flop, it's mm -hmm. clean. Why let something peel off on the turn that might make things uncomfortable? Just little questions asked. That feels honest to me. We can whisper, not shout. 125,000. <laughs> boss seems to agree. Now, Hecklin, lack of a spade and position, both somewhat problematic. And he just gets away. Do you find yourself, Jonathan, adjusting lines in an opponent-specific manner? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's think. not always just what the solver might say in a vacuum, sure. but rather your database with respect to prior engagements. Sure, sure. You're constantly kind of gauging um, in which direction you think mm -hmm. your opponents might lean. Maybe less so in these high rollers than in a lower stakes tournament, but poker's still a human game and uh, nobody is completely a solver. And, you know, people have these human emotions and thoughts that are going to dictate um, a lot of whether they're being more aggressive or less aggressive. I think you'll hear a lot of... Same story, and it very much isn't. Absolutely. For that type of guy, I think that they maybe there's this kind of idea that a tell is simply, you know, what you might see in rounders clicking a cookie next to your ear. <laughs> but you don't need to get nervous to have tells. Tells can just be more of a feel thing. Like, hey, this guy's not ready to bluff off his fourth bullet, you know, three tournaments in a row. So I just think this guy's going to pass on a lot of the aggressive lines, something like that. Or this guy really wants to win a tournament, so he's just going to plow through bullets until he mm. finds a stack. Mm. Those kinds of things are going to dictate a lot about how you uh, perceive different people in different situations. Have nuanced art that of the tell as mm -hmm. we see Webster How come you guys raising and taking it, it was mainly Chinese no, it's not. Dan in Smith Malaysia. also picked up a title already here yeah, but in this in festival in do you guys have conversations Malaysia? about the best uh, Triton uh, reg uh, yet to have a title oh, I think right now Ike Haxton has no, kind of emerged as perhaps yet. The okay, one who everybody so expects so to see a title next to his bad. name when we pop into the app okay. and yet <laughs> denied. Yeah. I've never had that conversation uh, with anyone really, but if you say that Ike doesn't have a, tur uh, a title, then I don't need to look at the list because Ike's the best without a title then. That's wow. just how it is. Mm. Strong and convincing. Not all that strong, but still tempting. He's too suited here for Jans. Under the gun. Toaster strudel in the muck. See, that's the thing. I don't know. what What is Dutch cuisine? Uh, that's a good question. YouTube, help us out. Like a glass of fjord water? Does that qualify? Do they have fjords? I think of Norway. Oh, no. That's Norway? I'm really butchering it today. Kai and Mokri was uh, doing one of those... Uh, American anti-intellectual rants the other day talking about none of us knowing European capitals, uh, but he didn't know like five. He was like of his own European you know, capitals. I'm thinking okay, about there you yeah, go. yeah. You know. I'm not doing much for us though in the booth here today between strudels and fjords. What I'm pointing out is that maybe these European guys don't know much about it either. Level playing field in that regard, or at least kind. We nailed speed skating though. It's speed skating, you know, right. every four years Olympics sure. winter edition, you just know. That's safe. Okay. The tulips thing, everybody. The wooden shoes, that's them. Yep. Okay. Yep. Clogs, All right. right. Clogs, nice. Mm -hmm. Windmills. Yeah, right. windmills. Okay. Um, so it's not fjords, it's just canals? You know right? what? In Amsterdam? They're, they're very known levees, okay. I knew they're robotics on the ports that, you know, Rotterdam is like a big port yeah. city, and I yeah. think they're big innovators when it comes. I think I picked this up from The Wire. I think season two of The Wire, oh, they which discussed was, by this. the way, Dark Horse season. My personal fave. Your favorite. All yeah. right. A lot of people, it's like the Empire Strikes Back, favorite or least favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Polarizing. Yeah. I guess maybe but, it's uh, uh, something about second editions. I think I saw, you know, these Discovery Channel shows that every now and again you're watching and Liv Barry pops up and has something really? to say. Yeah, she's like a consultant. and so Maybe That's no great. longer, but in, in any case, I digress. That's where I think I caught the, the Rotterdam intel. Nice. Adams. Can't wait for the chat to just tell us we're just wrong again. <laughs> it is one of the busiest ports in the world, if I'm not mistaken, Rotterdam. Mm. Ace-5 suited. Going to work here. Hijack. 
Suited one gapper for Shirzat Khisu on the button. 3-5. Not sure if we're still stalled there. Mm. Action doesn't appear to be on Jan Zarens just yet. Okay, now it's official. Producer James stepping in to advise 11th busiest port on earth, busiest in Europe. Okay. Is All right, Rotterdam. Something. Okay. Gun to my head, I would have said top three. Oh, really just because why else would I have heard of Rotterdam? Mm, good point. I don't know. Yeah. Flawed logic. Jan's logic mm. leads him to a defense in the big blind and now an open ender, courtesy of the Jack-10-8 board, which he checks over to Adams. I think this is a texture that a lot of people underrate for the hijack here. They're thinking, oh, the big blind hit that flop a lot, like Jan's somewhat did with his open ender. But it's just so good for Tim's range. He's got, you know, plenty of top pairs, plenty of middle pairs, and it's many of his fun. whiffs happen to be ace-king, ace-queen, king-queen type hands. Um, and of course, he has the over pairs. So it's just such a good looking board for the hijack. Hence the follow through. But of course, Jans, on the strength of the open ender, decides he's not going to take a passive line, but rather speak up. Sure. 375, the check raise. Yeah, very small. So small that there's a path forward for an ace five? I would not. Nor would Tim. Feels like those are the spots where every now and again you mix in a flat and then you get out into the weeds. <laughs> gets checked to you on the turn. You start wondering if you can try to steal it. Spade comes off, it gets expensive. Sure. You know, you miss on the end, it gets checked to you. You've got this big pot in front of you. So just keeping it clean. Yeah. I think we Adams. need a little less connectivity. I think Tim's just got so many natural hands that get to continue there um, between his own ace nine, king nine suited types. And then of course he's got the, uh, the aforementioned over pair sets and um, two overs with a straight draw. Within the spectrum of Triton regs who are sound fundamentally across the board, do you feel as though there are candidates, without naming any names necessarily, who are more inclined to take heroic, dare I say even sexy lines sure. as paths to winning pots and those who are far more inclined to simply, as we often like to call it here in the booth, fight clean mm -hmm. and simple? Yeah, I think there's there's you know maybe not a clear delineation between one camp and the next. There's there's definitely some bleed over, and I don't think it's as obvious from the outside who you know might fall more into one camp than another. Um, but there are some guys who yeah I like that fight dirty, fight clean. Um, mm -hmm. I would put it as those that are okay with looking stupid and those that are a little bit maybe too worried about making a large blunder. And I'm not saying one is necessarily better than the other. Um, you know, for all the times it works out when you're playing in the streets, some of those mistakes can be horrifically bad and cost you a lot. But if you have a sense of from what camp somebody comes, as we see Hecklin ripping Queen Jack suited here out of the big blind against Martirosian's mm -hmm. open which makes quick work of a dominant hand. Nicely done from Henrik. How many good hands can you realistically get? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about, if you're mid-pot, let's say, or, you know, heading to a flop against somebody, are you categorizing them and then wondering as, you know, the hand develops, which of the two characters am I working with here? Oh, and absolutely. as such, you know, how do I navigate accordingly? Absolutely. I think um, there's something... As bad as some of the punts can be from the group that is willing to get pretty out of line, mm -hmm. the one thing they have going for them is, you know, uh, back to the baseball, they could throw any pitch in any count. And that's pretty daunting to be facing, whereas these, you know, fight clean guys, as you're putting it, um, 
that group, you can have a more clear abstraction of the types of hands they can have in this situation if you're well studied yourself. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's still going to be a lot of hands. GTO is by no means ABC. Um, it's very, very complex, but you can start to rule certain things out that yeah. make your decision a little bit cleaner yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You're swimming in, in clear water versus murky water, as sure. we often like to call it. Sure. Nothing Mercury about opening with pocket tens here for Paul Pua under the gun. A flat from the eights yep. for Jans. By the way, chat stepping up to advise Stroopwafel is Stroopwafel, a distinctly nice. Dutch delight. Is Stroopwafel an actual type or is that just the company? Because I feel like I've eaten these little packages that say Stroopwafel and I don't know if it's a company or that's... Just Were you on an airplane item. when you got the Stroop waffle by Originally, chance? Originally, and yes, then I've actually too. purchased them at Walgreens since. They're uh, quite nice. They've oh, got so they got the you. Counter. Yeah, they got me. That, that was, was a good deal that they made with United Airlines, <laughs> wherever that was. Absolutely. The Stroop they, waffles get Pop corners, they got me that way, too. I buy those pop corners oh, now. That yeah, was in there a while ago. That yeah. was another thing in the snack basket for a minute. Meanwhile, Queen 7-3 as Paul plays it as a check, despite having only one over out there. And sure. the heart drop. But back to the other thing. You think they're losing on those? Like, it's Popcorners is basically paying them to get on the flight? They don't pay them to get on the flight, but do they? But it's just a severe discount? I, I would say so, okay. right? It's like shelf space at the grocery store. Yeah. You're willing to maybe cut the costs on the wholesale side mm -hmm. just to get the real estate, then get everybody hooked. I was thinking price is right. You know, you're putting a product on, getting it out there. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Well, free roll, maybe. I'm not sure. Should we come up with a snack and then approach the airlines and make that the path to victory? As we see Arens approaching this one to the tune of 125,000. Paul, flats. I don't dislike the way you're thinking. Well, we know that there's some working capital available based on conversations about your diversified investment strategy here. Mm. Maybe we reallocate some of that toward a... A snack enterprise. Competitive space, by the way, though. I've watched Shark Tank enough to sure. know that, the, you know, it's a losing enterprise more often than not. In my brief conversation with Maria entering the booth, I was strongly advised against following you into business. Yeah, that's uh, probably pretty sage advice. Mm. But this would be me following you into business. Oh, God, no, I have. <laughs> I'm an idea man. Once the business starts, count me out. <laughs> yeah, I uh, throw as much crap at the wall and see what sticks. Back to the business of this pot, where the second overcard draws a second check from the preflop raiser. A check back from Jan's interesting Ooh. one on the end, though. Yeah. What do you think? Is Jan's going to bluff it? Who has the range advantage in terms of the ace? I would expect the under-the-gun raiser. Sure. Certainly, boss looks strong enough to be throwing a check in here. I think if he wants to bluff, it's more of a check shove. He's just beating too many hands. I like that check a lot. Gonna be a bluff catcher. Now Jans is still beating some seven X, although Paul's under the gun, so all right. Not much thought. I don't think it was gonna work. I think uh I think Paul was gonna put in a check raise with the best hand if uh if Jans went for it. Turn it into a bluff. Obviously it would look pretty strong and on the strength of having two tens blocked in yeah. case of ten jack. I would have loved to see what Paul would do there. Sure. You know, we say that often here in the booth while we're watching, but when you're out there playing, you're obviously paying a lot of attention. Do you find yourself going, ooh, I would have much rather seen how this guy handled this spot in the face of a different line taken by the opposition? Sorry, I got caught at the assumption, which was just not right. Obviously paying a lot of attention. No, you haven't seen me much, huh? No? Are I'm you checked up, out? I'm stretching, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at hands from the other tables. I'm using the app to maximize. But uh, the vast majority of the time, I'm saying, hey, when I'm at the table, I'm not going to see what happens in this hand uh, very often. And if I do, I can check the app. The app is phenomenal mm. when you're playing a Triton. It's just a complete game changer. So I think there's a lot of stuff to pay attention to in the rest of the room. And personally, I just need to get up and stretch and move around a lot. Free snacks everywhere. It's amazing. <laughs> Sorry, what came after paying attention? <laughs> well, it was obviously something that you're not doing, which I was <laughs> speculating could be entertaining hypotheticals about wishing a different line had been taken, uh, like we just talked about, just to see how mm -hmm. people would have responded, as the response here seems to be 
predictable. Ace King in the big blind for Paul, who just got to showdown with those two tens and now faces an open from O'Dwyer. Just piles it in. Yep. O'Dwyer does work his way forward and gets shown the bad news. The so are we going to see a superstition here, or you think it's all between the ears? I don't know. I don't see any trinkets okay. for Shaman O'Dwyer at present. See if we can get another shot of him, perhaps. Going to need a lot of help in this 3.71 million chip pot. Jack 10-7 is a form of it, as he does pick up the king for a gutter. Uh, look at that little finger thing. Feels kind of superstitious. That might be something. Just kind of claw on the table. And unable to claw in the needed king. But some chop opportunities. Wrapping his fingers on the table once more. But the three of spades will lead to the demise of Shaman O'Dwyer. As he is out of here. In 23rd, $50,600 richer for the effort. Those Bombay hoodies are possible. Uh, people are loving them. Yeah, see it absolutely. everywhere. Part of the swag bags given out here. It's just uh, yeah, almost, she, almost she's almost Don't look now. <laughs> Paul Pua up to second in chips behind Yuri Zivilevsky. Yeah. Massive spin ups. Ren Lin still in third. Let's get some Ren. Can we see some Ren hands? Uh, I doubt that we're going to spend too much time away from Ren Lin. He is another one of those personalities in the room. Team Malaysia. Looking good here at this featured table. Yep. The Pua Lim 1 2 combo. Just a nose in front of Hecklin is Webster. Mm -hmm. Down to Martirosian, Avens, Adams, and Hisu in that order. 12 big blind stacks begin to become kind of precarious in that range where we may expect to see a much higher frequency of jamming with the blinds at 50, 100,000, 100K Annie. Can't afford to sit back and wait. All that long. This chip counts brought to you by betacr.eu. Is there anybody who milks a short stack better than Farmer Sean Winner? Whew. Yeah, he, he makes the most of it. I, I don't think so. I think he's number one there, milk short stack. I mean, the guy with eight big blinds feels like he's the chip leader of the tournament. I mean, he just doesn't even know what to do with a stack that deep. I've seen him three big blinds deep just... And not even always making it seem like he's just trolling, mm -hmm. you know, but actually going hard at a spot. Yeah, yeah. And I don't see people do that that often. Obviously, missing Sean at this particular stop, unclear yeah. what he's up to. I think he's playing PLO in Vegas. We got three PLO events coming up after this, though. So opportunities yeah, here for but he lives the in four Vegas. card. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Marta Rosian opening with King Queen. Did get bullied off of this hand by Hecklin. Tight fold there from Webster. Jack nine suited. That was button. Webster was indeed on the button. Yeah. Some ICM at play. Relatively short stack from Arthur's open. Seems quite reasonable. First will pay one million in this one. Pay out flat at 50,600 for 22nd and 21st. With Don't our see a 25K with a mil up top very often. That's pretty awesome. Two runners. Yeah, this was a yeah. record-setting number of entries that we had, 187 mm -hmm. in total here in this event. And one of the conversations that I have as we continue to set records, Jonathan, is, oh, hang on. We've got something developing over here, an A7 suited against what looks to be a pair of kings. And Mossbach on the wrong end of this one. And covered. Doesn't Mario have one of the stranger uh, Arkansas accents you've ever heard? <laughs> His fiance, Amanda, the person from Arkansas. By the way, that pot there came down as a jam from the small and a call from the big. So fairly uneventful. You can understand why Mario would dig in with the A7 suited, but it will lead to his departure in 22nd as he collects another one of those $50,600 payouts. And we flip it back over to the feature where we find Henrik Hecklin hijack, ace deuce suited. Raising to 200. Hisu will defend for the men.
King 9 8 board. Perilous are both players. Five fifty in the middle, Hecklin thinking it over. Gonna play it as a check back. Check back monster continues. Now a beautiful turn for Hisu. Picks up the open ender. Just because we're facing a check back from an opener pre out of the hijack doesn't mean that we can suddenly feel comfortable barreling at this, though. Mm. Hisu agrees. I was a little surprised with the defend uh, against the hijack open here. We are a little decently. too light, jack uh, six. We're decently into the money. You know, I think you can make arguments both ways. Well, no argument now. After a second check back from the ace high, this board is as ugly as it gets. Question is, does Hisu call Hecklin's bet? Because Henrik's going to be firing. But first, we need the check. Standing by with the four-liner on board and obviously the sense that there's a decent number of Queen X combos in Henrik's range has played. Isu does find the check. And now will Hecklin find the aforementioned bet? He certainly expects that Isu would get busy betting a straight of his own here. Yeah, I would expect uh, a fair number of bets from Isu on the river if he did have a queen. Even maybe a nice small bet from a seven. Tough spot. You're trying to figure out what did Henrik check all this way to want to bluff at this point. Mm. Mid to low pocket pair, somehow an A6 or lower of which would almost certainly need to be suited. Um, it's a really tough call to make. You know, you can make the case that that six blocks a couple of bluffs and pocket sixes and A6 suited. Um, you know, you, maybe you'd slightly prefer having something like uh, Jack two suited as Henrik might not open pocket twos, but that's really digging into the details. Hey, what a call. Finds it. And strangely enough, in situations like that where it can feel tempting if you're in Hecklin's seat to regard this as disrespect, it mm. actually is a function of some respect that he understands Hecklin is capable of barreling there with air. And it wasn't the you know, right. most complex sure. spot sure. in that regard, but you know, just a different way to look at it. Yeah, I can see that. Are we that slow? Of course, it's a tough sell when you're on the receiving end in that moment. Yeah, yeah, I was also thinking the way, <laughs> the way he just slapped those cards down didn't feel super respectful. No, but the slap maybe, uh, was, <laughs> it was more in his own uh, realm more so than was, Yeah, excited, he made Hecklin. a good call. Yeah. I don't think I make yeah. that call. I think, I think that's a, you know, a really nice win there that uh, a lot of us are folding. So something Shirzad can feel good about there. Yep. Bluff catching. Oh. Breeze Webster. quickly in the muck from the hijack. Yeah, yeah. Yep. not feeling great about the crabs and the sevens sure. awaited them. Understandable. Cut off. Paul Foot now. Biggest stack in the room. Overall chip leader, Zivilevsky, has slipped mm. to second. Just north of the min, the open sizing. Adam suited ace right behind Paul. Now I know that the ace five suited specifically is the one that tends to yeah. bring the three bets with great frequency. Is the ace six a candidate as well? Button versus cutoff, as you see Tim do here. It's uh, You're less concerned with what card is accompanying your ace as much as you're just like, wow, I've got a suited ace and nine big blinds. Chip leader opening on my right. And you know, I say chip leader in an encouraging manner in that that means Paul has a lot of opens, not that, oh, he gets to call with everything. Right, but with sevens, he does get to call sure. and you can see some concern on Adam's face as yeah. a wider range than that should have been mm -hmm. a part of the equation. Unfortunately, not on this occasion as Paul's got it. Yeah, you saw Tim glance upwards to see, am I on a payout bubble? Should I use some time banks here to potentially uh, scrape out an extra couple grand? But uh, certainly with the quick call, they must not be close to a payout move. To 
the flop we go. And how about that for Tim Adams? He's up against a set, but still so many paths to a victory. Yeah. That's not one. Now a chop <laughs> available to him as well. Nine hearts falling off the board as an out. Ooh. And the Jack of Clubs on the river. A disappointing run out for Adams. And that, unfortunately, will spell the end of the road for Tim. 21st place finish, 50,600 will go his way. And it actually was a pay bubble. As oh. 55,400 will be going to 20th on up. So mm. had someone else managed to bust without us being in a hand-for-hand -hand situation. Gotcha. Tim could have eked out that extra five dimes, but... Mm -hmm. did milk the spot, and the surge continues for Paul Fua. 6.4 with Yuri uh, below five as second place. How about it? 65 big blinds at this stage is uh, pretty darn good. That it is. Paul's played six events so far here at this festival. Didn't make it to the final table of the 200K Invitational, but did finish in 10th. For 315,000, then finished 20th in the 40K Mystery Bounty for roughly 39,000. 33 caches to his name, almost 17 million wow. in career Triton earnings. His loan title coming all the way back in Madrid, was it, I want to say? All in. That it was, a 30K7 max. Bit of a dry spell for Paul since then. King six suited, cut off. Is open. Gets jammed on by Jans, who had the dominant king. Hmm. Jans, by the way, great sense of humor. He's always trolling us on these bios. Nice. We're left wondering whether or not that actually was something that he did Let's hear him. for a living. You know, He'll be like, oh, yeah, I was a skydiving instructor one summer <laughs> in Dubai. And you're like, no, come on, that's not true. That's phenomenal. Did I fill out a bio? I don't feel like I did this. I feel like you've had some trolley stuff in a bio before, uh, no? That you always feel played right. straight up? I'm pretty sure. I can't imagine I've. It doesn't feel like me. I know you're capable. I know it's in your range, Jaffe. No, no. I try to be straight up with the commentators. I feel like you guys have a hard enough job, and I just I want you guys to have all the correct info, and uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't do that. Look at me. Okay. I'll believe it. <laughs> 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 Couple of kings here for Webster, 210K open. Martirosian, king, queen, and a problem on his hands. Off of 1.8, and he does three bet, but not mm. a very big one. Mm -hmm. Clears yeah, an I mean, ace jack. He's facing an under the gun open here, so uh, it's, it's not the same kind of hand king, queen usually is with 13 bigs when you're in the money facing a UTG open. And certainly, if Webster could see the hands, he'd be making that call. But uh, well, it's tough on. to not jam kings. We can see the hands, and kings have popped up elsewhere in the room on this occasion in the stewardship of Frederick Delval, who's got Alex Kulev That's it. in a bad way on the flop and drawing dead on the turn. So Kulev will take his toys and go home. Showered. Kings performing well. Yeah. Elsewhere in the room, as they tend to do. Back here, we still await Webster's response, and it is in the form of a four bet to 800,000. Tough to have many bluffs here. So, did Arthur start with 1.75 or he had 1.3? Arthur began the pot with 1.8 okay. million. Got he it. Three okay, bet it okay. to 450, and then gets away from nice. the extra 350 sure. on request by Webster there. Got it. Wisely avoiding that collision, and obviously the under the gun factor mm -hmm. playing a part. Yep. Not to mention the lack of durability of King Queen in a four bet pot. I would imagine it does have the blocker effects prior to that, but mm -hmm. then we begin to wonder how much trouble do you feel like blockers have gotten you? Do you think on the whole? Blockers have earned you more chips than they've cost you? Yes. They have. 
earned then, me more than yeah. they cost me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, then you must be doing the guys. right things with them. <laughs> I, see, I play the draw games. I'm a mixed game guy. You know, sure. you see three sevens in a deuce to seven hand, and you think, oh, this eight's got to be nutted. Yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah. of course, there's four in the deck, aren't there? I think you just have to be forgiving of the, mis you know, sometimes it's a mistake you'll make with misapplying um, the relevance of blockers in different situations, and sometimes you applied it perfectly, but uh, blockers, uh, it's not a game genie. You don't, you know, it's not a cheat code. It's, right. it's a hint in the right direction. Love the way you put that. Game genie. You remember that? I do. Phenomenal tool. <laughs> Cheaters. That was the OG, like, console solver. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, more than the solver. That was the uh, that was the RTA. That was god mode. Yeah. Hisu, ace eight. Opening, Webster defending. 550 in the middle. Heading to a flop. Queen 6-3. No pair anywhere. Dry board texture such as this, somewhat inviting, but obviously we know that Webster off of that deep stack could be defending a broad range. Mm -hmm. Pretty good texture for Hisu to just bet everything. Um, Webster has so many easy folds like the hand he's holding. Yeah. Um, let's not stress ourselves out having to try and figure out whether to bluff catch an ace high later or not. And can credibly rep a queen here. Mm -hmm. Can shears up. 150k, and we're always happy to just see the opposition hit the muck. Change me this one. No, no, change 100 in this smile. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to ask you the hard-hitting questions here, and by that I mean not at all. Who's got the best chip architecture out there, like the most exotic designs and configurations? It's a good question. I, I saw Ren Lin doing some cool stuff today. All right, well, that's that's a point against Ren, because I was going to say the better your chip architecture, typically the worse the player. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> you know, Ren well, maybe knows the less what he's active doing. the player, because obviously uh, he can't afford to sit there and make a, you know, a beautiful chip design mm -hmm. if those chips are in motion. I'm a believer if you've if you've spent a lot of time working on crafting beautiful stacks or learning chip tricks and whatnot, then you probably are diverting attention from getting better at the game. Fair. Marta Rosian, Jack 10, sheds a queen 10, and now another iteration of a 10 just behind it, finding the muck as well. Suited combo in the big blind for the big stack. Yeah, it's doing pretty okay against uh, the short stacks open. He's not going to have many seven or three, so you can feel pretty clean about your pairs and straights and whatnot. So the defense from Paul. And he makes a pair of threes, but he's up against that case 10, which finds its way to the flop and gives Martirosian top pair and way the best of it. What's Arthur's shirt? I can't quite see where it's like a painting or? I, I want to say it's a portal into like some sort of aquatic Yeah, it looks realm. awesome. I'm a big fan from what I can make out. Not the kind of shirt I feel like I'm accustomed to seeing on him, but I don't think uh -huh. that's from the House of Gucci. No. Big bet. Two hundred seventy five K. Half pot. And this is where these seven threes feel compelled to take one off with the back door straight and flush prospects and the pair. Yeah, that'd be a very snug fold from Paul here. So another 550, slipping into the middle. And that queen of clubs is an unwelcome sight for Pua. Yeah, looks like it's going to save him some money, though. Got Tough decision for uh, Arthur here. Because of the 
Queen X combos? For You're kind of Paul? in the middle. Uh, no, I don't think he's thinking about saving any money. It's just uh, how many inferior hands are going to call if I shove. So he does check back. And a free pull at the river is a disastrous outcome for Martirosian. Sure. Sevens and threes. Nobody expects to be shown this sort of kid. Very, very difficult hand for uh, Arthur to fold here now when Paul puts him in. You're trying to figure out at the same time, what is he bluffing? Because if he had a 7-9, he made a pair. If he had the jack-9, he made a straight. Hang on now. Outer table action once more. Greenwood looks like he's submitting his chips forward. This one came down as a shove from Putra, who had 640K, a reshove from the button of Greenwood. Bogdanov from the small blind woke up. Putra had sixes. Greenwood ace-five suited. Bogdanov ace-ten. The run out was jack nine four. Two clubs, and by the time, oh, hang on, <laughs> hang on, I'm a little bit ahead of us. I'm feeling so much better about my comment earlier that we're not peers. This, I didn't want to sign on for this. That was. <laughs> well, I can't look in two places at <laughs> once, you know? Yeah. Not always clear. I was letting you do your thing. I, I don't know. These outer wow. table hands. They're all over the place. Here's Santosh with a smile. A bit nuanced. He's a, got a thinker. Is that a shirt from uh, Martyr Ocean's wardrobe? <laughs> Very easily could be. Mm. That is the GG. Santosh, by the way, push the time banks forward here. Okay. What happened? Did they just switch hands? Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. Are these two <laughs> tables? Is that Putra's hat, though? Maybe this is the same table. Someone in the comments, enlighten us. What are we seeing? All right. My clairvoyance aside, we do know in part what rates to be transpiring over there. But we flip it back over to Bruno Volkman's ace four suited, tussling with an ace seven for Hing Yang Chow. It was a open from the button to 225, a three bet to 800 and change. Now the zipper on the back of the neck, what do you put in that? Nothing, it's just for style. Oh, I love it. Chow got it in there, his A7 in the lead on a 10-9 deuce board. Bruno needs a lot of help. Only a four is gonna save the Brazilian. Ooh, close. close, not there Ooh. though. A five of diamonds and it's goodbye to Bruno Volkman. But we are back here now at this outer table where to reiterate the action pre, it was Putra shoving 640,000, two sixes. Greenwood over shoved 1.1 with ace five suited. Bogdanov called for 1.1. His hand, ace 10. There's the flop, the two clubs. That's as far as I had gotten in this one on the turn. The deuce of diamonds. Greenwood threatening a wow. lot of paths to victory. And did he just hit a clean five on the end? But sixes, sixes are good, yeah. Sixes will hold versus that. For Putra, the five takes Bogdanov's. Yeah, so a little side pot is gonna go to Greenwood. Putra's gonna triple. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Wonder we what love to had. a couple of ace -X's. I would imagine maybe an ace -X. I would think just a better hand than ace-10, yeah. That's uh, given wooden tank with much worse. Yeah, just the, the pause that he showed there. Now no pause for ace-king suited on the button. The three bet to 700,000 from Paul in the face of a heckling open. Been a tough run for Henrik there. Yeah, and you can just feel that frustration, the yep. product of somewhat of an abusive stretch. Sure, I think he's made some good decisions, uh, but that's poker. 
able, obviously, to keep any of that frustration from impacting the way that he proceeds. You know, some people can be more demonstratively emotional than others, but that doesn't always correlate to any sort of difference in the way that they're playing hands. And I think sometimes we can be guilty of making presumptions about the idea that somebody is visibly frustrated and thinking, oh, this guy's opened up, this guy's tilted, maybe we make an adjustment, but we don't realize the cards aren't tilting. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's really accurate. I think it's easy to judge people based on how much emotion they're showing, but you can uh, you can make the reverse argument and say those that are expressing a lot of emotion are getting their frustration out, and then they can go back to making clean decisions. And some people who are um, you know internalizing it more, maybe it's affecting them even more because they haven't found that outlet. Yeah, I, I think that's really astute because having that purge switch, you know, where you're able to just get it out and then come back refocused. Sure without that venom coursing through your veins yeah. can be beneficial. Although a lot of times I think there is some judgment, dare I even say some admonishment that comes from time to time directed towards those that aren't able to kind of keep it in. Oh yeah, inside. I feel that way quite strongly. I've had that conversation with plenty of people. You might be doing what's right for you, but it's somewhat, you know, at the extremes, it's toxic. And uh, even a, a small dose, it's just negative for the environment and we don't mm. want to be around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meanwhile, King 6-5 in a raised pot pre. Paul started this party from the cutoff and has flopped top pair. Jan's defended with ace high. Now ready to check fold promptly in the face of the 175K declaration. As yet again, this is a familiar sight. Chips heading toward Paul Pua. Breaching the 7 million chip threshold. And a massive gap between he and Hing Yang Chow. Something I really like in Jan's game. Um, if he has a fold, he folds. He just moves on. If, uh, if everyone played like that, we'd probably see twice as many hands. You know, a lot of guys will make the argument that they just want to make sure that they're allowing themselves time to make a decision and never do anything hastily just to prevent sure. you know, any oversights, things like that. And I, you know, I think that there's a measure of understanding that we can express toward that. There are, of course, some extreme examples of even in what seem to be straightforward spots, people taking what many might consider an egregious amount of time to get sure. to that spot. And obviously it's impactful in terms of the number of hands you're able to play when you're seated at a table with one of the guilty parties in that mm -hmm. respect. The diaper for Jans, deuce three suited. Hecklin, 7-5 suited in the big. We'll play it as a check back. Hello, clubs. Bad news for Hecklin, despite flopping the flushes. Jans just has complete air here. Yeah. yeah, gonna be really tough to make any money. Have to check and find some uh, pretty kamikaze bluff from Jans. Check fold in the face of the 100K. Well, as the dealers swap spots, we stay consistent. There's one message Triton wants to give you, and that is that of the exclusive merch giveaway. Now, listen. I don't know exactly what we're giving away, and I don't know exactly when we're giving it away. All I know is it's going to be dope, and you're going to want in on it. Type exclamation point giveaway in the chat or scan the QR code. Get yourself in on the Triton merch. Jonathan, maybe they don't take our word for it. You own plenty of Triton merch. It is really nice. It is very nice. I agree with that. Absolutely. Oh, and look at that. No sooner do I say I don't have intel 
on what we're giving away and when. Then producer James finally, nine days into the festival, walks over these details. Thanks for that, James. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to report that we will be giving away a reversible bucket hat. Now, we've seen Richard Young rock that. I believe Dan Smith also owns that, the bucket hat. Baseball cap, one hoodie, and one T-shirt. Now, we do have a range of hoodies. Unclear which one we're going to be giving away. I certainly have my personal faves, but... They're all pretty quality. Very much so. Not exactly top quality. The King 8 and the Queen 9. Nevertheless, Arens from the button opens. Webster defends. Ace-Jack 10. Interactions for both. Webster, two-way straight draw. Knuckles over. 180. Yance wants to tell a story. Interesting decision for Webster here. I mean, and you can see him going either way as far as your bluffs go. It's... Uh, it's tough to find many more appealing hands than this one. But at the same time, you see ace-jack-10, and you're kind of struggling to say, what story am I telling for value? Three of spades on the turn, as Webster does play it as a flat. Both players picking up the flush draw. Advantage Webster in that department. With 9-10 in the middle, he checks once more. Jans is going to be uh, folding a lot of the low suited spades preflop here. So flush advantage, maybe uh, more Webster, who's got some hands like 7-4 spades that we'd see Jans fold on the button. 325. 325. Yeah. I think we're going to see Webster pull the trigger. I think he's just got the combo. And he's going to put it in Jans's face. It does present a real problem, even for the one pair ace holdings, to face a stuffing. Pretty fun spot to muscle up. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. Hey, we're in the money. It's the nine high flush draw. We can be drawing dead very easily. Very conservative navigations there yeah. from Webster, but perhaps sort of designating, him, designating rather himself in that camp of the fight clean type characters sure. that we talked about before. Yeah. Not to suggest that he's incapable of, you know, activating when yeah. the situation presents itself, but maybe when it isn't quite as enticing, he skews. No, if he likes direction. it, he'll go for it for sure. Yeah. Now back over to the other feature. A peek at Igor Yaroshevsky. This is a guy that I haven't had an opportunity to observe much. Jonathan, have you played with him thus far this festival? I have, and I've played with him um, many other tournaments previously. He plays well. He knows what he's doing. He's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I think he observes his table, knows how to react differently to different players. Do you find, stylistically speaking, that you're able to maybe profile to a degree players that hail from an area of the world just because of what the zeitgeist or, you know, what the trend is in terms of poker, maybe, you know, the infancy or, you know, the more uh, steeped kind of uh, poker community sure. somewhere when you're out there? I think that, you know, these kind of population reads on different countries existed a lot more 10 years ago and even to some degree five years ago at the highest stakes i think they've all but disappeared uh not because oh not because you know, everyone's internationalized really and more so just that so much information is public that um i don't think it's just hey aggressive players come from brazil and uh passive players come from the u.s and canada right. i think that might have been much more true a few years ago well zivilevsky Pushed back on by Benitez. 200 became 1.1, and that became the end of that one. 
Yeah, had a loose open that you can kind of make when you have a lot of chips uh, once you're in the money. Opening ace two off in the cutoff. <clears throat> 18 left. Current payout. 55,400. We do have another jump on our hands of roughly 7,000 if you can slide into the top 17. Benitez. This time an opener with King Queen suited and Ding Biao. Ace 10 suited off of, let's call it 16, 17 blinds. I think we're going to see a 30 big blind flip. Yeah, there's the jam. Yaroshevsky snap folds. Benitez is covered. Yeah, not getting away from this one. Obviously, the disasters are the ace kings, ace queens, and then the queens on up yep. in terms of pairs. But he blocks most of that. And there is the call. 42% equity for Benitez. Things could be worse. Top two pair for Ding Biao, but Benitez, four outs to Broadway. Five of clubs isn't going to cut it. Will he find the necessary jack or will a patient Ding Biao double? It will be the latter. Seven of diamonds on the end. And that'll be it for Francisco Benitez. Did I put in the five pair? Third cash. That's why it made me do it. Here it is, first ever. It's a pre -roll. Triton Festival. <laughs> Batting 500. <laughs> Three for six. As so we flip Three. it back over to where King Jack and King sure. 10 are embroiled. Jan Zarens, the covering stack against Marta Rosian. Got his man pipped with King High and fades to 10 on the end. So just like that, bang, bang. 18 becomes 17. Marta Rosian will be getting the pay jump, I believe. Not on a hand for hand, so they won't be dividing that jump. As Martirosian's bust comes subsequent. Arens hauling one in with no complaints there. He continues to ascend. When do the red ones get refreshed? And if we're down to 16, then that means okay. Got it. we will have a redraw upon us. Time to pick a winner, Ali. Give me, give me Ooh. a short stack choice and uh, and a top five choice. Do you guys play these games, by the way? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I love it. I'm going to, but amongst um, yourselves on a break? No. no. If I'm not in the tournament, I don't watch. And if I'm in the tournament, I'm trying to play well or stretching. Yeah. All right. So look. Big stack wise. I'll take Yuri Zivilevsky sixth right now. Okay. In chips overall. With 3.3 million, 33 bigs, only because I feel like it's unfair to take boss up at the top. Okay. It's, it's just such a, you know, kind of a no-brainer when he has there. that Fair. many bigs. Okay. So your turn. We'll, we'll do it as a draft. Now you can take a big stack, then the short, and I'll take another short. I'm taking Ben. Ben Heath. Yep. Okay. Currently third overall with three and a half million in front of him is Ben Heath as you get one last look at these chip counts. Officially, the redraw is upon us here with the blinds at 50 and 100,000 in this 25K GG Millions event. Just moments away from bringing you back to the desk where the action is on you for a short stack. Oh, it's a snake draft. Yeah. Does short stack just mean below average or are we looking at one sure. of these? Otherwise, we've got two choices. So, okay. Let's go with short stack. Who do you like right now? 10th through 16th. By the way, you can take a peek at this in the Triton Poker Plus app. Not sure if Director Martins wants to let everybody look at Jonathan Jaffe's choices. There they are. Snake draft upon us. Who do you like? Hecklin. Ooh, that's, yeah. a, that's a very strong choice I feel choice really there. good about that for my shorty choice. Yeah. I like Ben, but that's Hecklin's great. a real, I mean, for a shorty, you know that's what? the play. There's another name out there who's got a title. 
Yeah, and it's Santosh Suvarna. I knew you were going Three point one. Now, not just a product of the fact that he's got twenty four bigs, because it's tempting to look at Greenwood and think a spin. He's at eighteen bigs. We know he's going to navigate properly. But Suvarna has improved, and I think you'll agree with me, Jonathan. Each and every time we've seen him, I think first. When you say it's tempting to choose the absolute shortest stack, I'm just hearkening back to what Maria said and following your investment advice just has to be the absolute <laughs> worst decision a person well, no, can make. no, but Greenwood is the most seasoned operator outside of Hecklin Nine in that collection. Nine big lines. You can in choose 24, 21, you know? 19, just like the shittiest coin you can find. You I just want to find Greenwood, the pure shit coin. Jonathan... Throw some respect on the man's name. Greenwood is a fantastic player. Right. Nine big blinds <laughs> is a fantastically short stack, <laughs> and you're being offered a 24 big blind stack or a 21. Now, granted, you went with Santosh, but you were so tempted to make the worst possible choice that it scares me. You know, all right, I get it. We're Fancy not going to end syndrome. up coming up with a snack brand. I get it. We're not going to go into business together. But, you know, I like, I like a home run ball. You know what I mean? you got to strike out. You know, you're swinging for the fences. It's not always going to work Kyle out. Kyle Schwarber, it's all the strikeouts and home runs. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's your guy? I'm okay. Backwards right. Ks every now and again, too, you know, just <laughs> grinding. Back to the question. Santosh is phenomenal. He is, right? And he's gotten better and better every single stop. You'd agree. He's a beast. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I was playing with him. Uh, he, he was playing excellent. Um, you know, every hand I tangled with him, uh, he trapped me pretty good. Um, I almost busted my final bullet when he trapped sevens versus my ace seven suited, but uh, I binked on him. Flopped him dead with the ace ace ten. <sighs> Oof. Wiped but the sweat from the brow. I busted like an hour later. But nevertheless, fact remains, Suvarna has been impressive. So yeah. then, Jonathan and I going to send you a break. You going to hang out with us for a little Absolutely. while longer? All right. That's going to be to the de de delight of the chat, who has been very much enjoying your commentary, as have I. So then, keep it close. Jonathan and myself will be coming back to bring you more with two tables remaining here in the GG Millions after this. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of the GG Poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No <laughs> way. Jump, <laughs> jump, jump, jump. Jump, jump, jump. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
across Why? the moon. Why? So many players. This is a crazy. It's a doozy. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Larger than all other GG players. Traffic reaches all-time high. Jump, 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 jump. And welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series. 25K GG Millions is upon us. Alina Jad alongside Jonathan Jaffe. We went heavy at the top, so we're just about 30 seconds from getting back to the action. A million dollars up top, on deck payout, 62,000. We did draft our players, so why don't we just send it back there and see how they do then? Both of us have a big stack and a short stack. Your picks were? Ben and Hecklin. Don't and let I me down, boys. And I took Santosh and... Who was my other pick? I think you were going for Greenwood. You wanted Dine No, bigs. stop. I didn't take Greenwood. Let's get about Yuri Zivilevsky yes. is my other pick. There it is. And let's see. Yuri Zivilevsky is here at this particular table. I gotta be like, I've talked to Yuri countless times. I've never attempted saying his last name, so this has been very, you know, illuminating for me. You just, Yuri, you just rattle it off like <laughs> nothing. Yeah, he's Yuri. 5,100,000 with 100K. As the big blind Annie, a quarter million, the price of every orbit here. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. Shortest of the stacks, the aforementioned Greenwood, who I was tempted to take in our snake draft as the shorty, just on the strength of if he did double, mm -hmm. being one of the better operators sure. remaining to choose from. Sure, I, I justify my bad plays too. <laughs> um, so <laughs> let me be clear. Is it... We just ignore the D, or the D is very subtle. Zivilevsky? Yeah, very, very subtle. Okay, I yeah. can't pull off the side. Let me hear it again. Zivilevsky. Wow, I hear it. That's phenomenal. <laughs> How many times did you practice before the first time on you air? Know, that one didn't give me as many fits as some of the other ones that have been out there. The Eastern Euro yeah. crew, you know, the the former Russian republics, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. ones can be... The stands? The, the, the stands can be a bit tough. The Lithuanians... Can oh really, yeah, really. There's, some, there's a guy the here. S with this is one. an What's SH sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's an mm -hmm. S other times. I don't know. Depends on the former republic. What well, What were some of the toughest at this festival that were first timers for you? Uh, Paulius Vitianicus or something. Oh I mean, man, you sound practiced even I with your lack of confidence uh -huh. there. It sounds like you uh, know what you're doing. The place jumps so small. Like there yeah, seemed like there was uh, even an accent inflection. I bluff my up. way through the booth often. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Ding Biao. Wasn't bluffing when he opened a 250k, but that's going to feel like a light holding from he plus two. Jam. Feels bluffy. Hey. Bogdanov, ace queen suited, making quick work. Loving the track suit. I want to know what it says. Yeah, you know what it reminds me of. Once upon a time, we did have a white Triton hoodie. Had the zipper on it with the red Chinese characters across the front. Huh. Do you remember this this uh, piece? I'm sure you've seen me. it. I, I've yeah, only been not. playing one year. Have you not seen the, the, the one I'm talking Wait, about? Wait, is it the red, like... Uh, red lettering? Oh, oh no, no, no. Okay, I'm thinking hoodie. about the red tracksuit that debuted in Vietnam. The oh, one the where, Teddy KGB. Uh, yeah, yeah, what's his... Um, Rudolph? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. No, 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 no. Did no. he wear it? There's someone who was full I KGB. I, you'll know <clears throat> who I'm talking about. Yes, yes. Milko. Daniel Smilkovich. The third Greenwood brother. Yeah. <laughs> That was uh, <laughs> phenomenal. He had the full KGB. Actually, going. we call him Redwood. Redwood. Uh, just on account of the beard. That's awesome. We're having too much fun You know fun what it kind of looks like? It, it makes me think I, there's like some symbol, like is it Hendemob or GPI that has like a little symbol that kind of looks like uh, what's on the tracksuit. I don't know if it's you've like ever played character. any Mahjong, but Hongzong, I believe, is the symbol on the far left, with which represents the, the central wind in the kind of symbols in a Mahjong set. Oh, but all right. Mom, if you're watching, uh, Ali is catering oh, to the 70-year-old women right now. Nice. Well, remember, in the Far East, Mahjong is also played. That's it's not true. Just a, a predominantly 
Jewish game. I know that the is it the elder Jewish. No, it isn't. I'm oh. saying it's. I think its origins are in the Far East. But I know that that older Jewish people like to play the game as well. I was shocked when I first found that out. I did not know that. I believe it's played a little bit differently. There's mm. some tweaks, but nevertheless, are you a mahjong player? Yeah, oh, I played a. I actually made a living playing mahjong one summer when I was in my. 20s, believe it or not. That was a product of the poker game breaking down. Awesome. Oh. And then everybody ushered me over to the Mahjong. and I paid tuition, but, you know. On the topic, look at right. Pete setting up a chessboard over there. There's some side games. We're going to see uh, Dan Smith, uh, Botez, maybe. I'm drawing stone dead. Makita. In the, in the chess match. I'll tell you that right now. 9-5 not drawn dead, though. Greenwood, who is operating off of that ultra lean nine bigs. Does lead out Gutter against what is top pair here. Ferdinand Putra of Indonesia in position. These are tricky spots. You see, you know, uh, Sam's got an extremely short stack. It's, uh, it's a peculiar range you're trying to figure out <coughs> Ferdinand, but he just bombs it in. Doesn't want to make things complicated moving forward. Looks like Sam's been oscillating between forward, backwards on that cap today, trying to get the mojo right. <laughs> That's another bit of baseball superstition, the rally cap. Mm. Inside out, yet to be utilized. But now All right. Would, Which mm. team's fans originated the rally cap? I'm going to go with Chicago Cubs. I could be completely out of line here, but I remember it as being the Mike Sosha Angels that beat... The Giants oh. in the World Series. I want to no say. No way. It's got to predate, it predates that. that. Yeah. I thought they were. I maybe was that was the Rally fan. Monkey. I remember that. The Rally Monkey was that was the, Okay. Because I saw the hats angels. everywhere. I think I'd just never seen it before that. That was a heartbreaker as a Giants fan, that series there. Yeah. And hand Russ Ortiz, the baseball. Congrats on the win. That now is not a win. No. Greenwood perhaps a little heartbroken himself here to have to fold with nary more than a gut shot. I really tapped into my inner Shakespeare that nary more than a gut. Who am I? Whoa, nary. Look, I reached for this so sweater today, mm. and all of a sudden I'm a thespian. <laughs> yeah, what? I like that. Oh. Clothes make the man <laughs> fill the role. <laughs> Maybe Bruno Volkman's out riding a motorcycle right now. I sure hope so. Yeah. And I would hop in his sidecar for the record. I was privileged enough to hit tennis with him for like five minutes the other day. That was phenomenal. He Is he just, a monster? Oh, yeah, he's a pro. Yeah, yeah. he brought Still a practice partner with him. They've been playing uh, a couple times. I've been on the court next to them just watching. It's just, I've never seen tennis at that level. What it's a awesome. treat, right? Yeah. It is cool. Ace-queen off here. Yes, Ren -Lin. give me some Renlin. Opens. Stalled on Bogdanov's deuce for offsuit. Don't tell me he's thinking naughty thoughts. No. In the end, does go into the bin where it belonged. Offsuit Motown for Putra. More dust. Okay. Sampa. <laughs> Sampa. 3 8. Lays it down to Ren. Keep the camera on Ren. One more hour. It's only going to be good stuff. Keep the microphone on, Ren. Yeah. He's just uh, possibly the most enjoyed guy on tour. He's just always in good spirits, always entertaining. Um, you know, of course, takes his bus very well, but he's just a positive influence every time he joins a tournament. Um, Beyond the antics, though, I mean, he can play a lick, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. And he's gotten better and better. Um, you can see his game improving constantly. Do you think that those that set their sights on coming to a Triton do so with the awareness that obviously it's going to be a tough proposition to pop on tour and then post results? You're playing against world beaters. But at the same time, it is often said that the best way to get better is to play against better opposition, no matter what the sport or the game. 
Yeah, I think if you can afford it, this is the tour where you're going to get better the quickest. It's also, yes, you're playing against the best players, but when you play at these stakes, field sizes are never that large. This is a record-breaking 187. 187, for many people, is going to be the smallest tournament they play all year. So it's really winnable. Like, it's going to be the toughest competition you face probably in your career and at the same time there's some of the most winnable tournaments you'll ever play that said nowhere to hide because that's going to be 187 entries spread across tough opposition top to bottom more often than not queen nine seven here as putra got after it from the button Ding Biao checking it over with just King High. Biao yeah, was thinking right now, I want to take this spot, but uh I don't know. There's probably a lot of better choices uh, for Ding to use here. Check back from Putra brought the three. Look at this. It's Undaunted by having nothing more than King Deuce. He does. I think this is one of those uh, play dirty type things that we're seeing here. Mm -hmm. This is someone who's maybe deviating, thinking Putra's not going to be slow playing a hand in this situation, and that three is not going to improve him. Let's just apply max pressure. If Putra does have a hand like 7x or pocket 8s, I think uh, Ding is confident he can get him to fold the river. Nice timing there from Ding Biao as he does shed the ace high, understandably, on that board. Okay. Nowhere to go. Talk about those kind of population reads we touched on earlier, kind of nations and whatnot. Ding coming from China, obviously a very populous nation. For a time, it seemed like poker was going to explode over there. Sure. And then things have very much slowed down due to governmental restrictions and things of this sort. Mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, he's come out here and he's performed. Yeah, I think Ding uh, Ding showed up uh, playing Tritons like the same time I did. I can't remember if his first event was, you know what, I think it was Vietnam, which was my second event, uh, or my second stop. And uh, immediately, very glad to see him. Very populous nation. If somebody is a world-class player, you think there's a pretty good chance you're going to know it. And uh, so... It was about two or three tournaments in, found out, wow, this guy can really play. Yeah, He's he made two FTs, yep. a sixth, a second, then also had a 12th place finish. Three for six in total there at Vietnam. And we see Paul on the button, A7, yeah. does open. Yuri's going to defend. Ding is uh, an excellent player. I think it's uh, very clear, not just from his results, but uh, the hands he's been playing, that he he has more than a clue. He's He's really good. Not involved in this one, though, as it comes King 9 8. Advantage Zivilevsky. Checking over. Mindful of the big stack end position, along with the betting lead for Pua. One of the questions that's going to be going through Yuri's head as he, you know, proceeds with the hand is how wide is Paul's range opening the button with all these chips? On the one hand, he has a pretty big chip lead. We're into the money, relatively deep, so he should be able to expand his range. But he's opening it to two really strong players in uh, Ding and Yuri. So does he restrict his opens to a more reasonable chips open, or is he playing all the extra hands that his stack might dictate he can? And when you're Yuri... If you're thinking that Paul is opening an incredibly wide range, he might have some real garbage hands in this situation. You know, he could be working with uh, Sid, for example, or um, certainly he's opening an ace two off, but some more extra hands, maybe a jack two suited or whatnot, in which case Yuri wants to check to that weaker range. If Paul is more playing the chips range and has, you know, a lot of um, more standard fare, then Yuri can start treating his uh, jack nine more for value, trying to get hands like this ace high to pay him off. Well, the jack nine goes from kings and nines to kings and jacks on this river after two streets 
of checkbacks from Paul. I think, yeah, Yuri's got a pretty perfect hand combo-wise for a lot of checking. I think if he uh, saw Paul's hand, he'd probably put a bet in. But What makes it perfect for checking? Uh, in that one of Paul's stronger oh, checkbacks yes. is going to be a 9x. Um, and yet we have a jack and a nine, which makes Paul extra kind of... Um, weighted elsewhere? Yeah, mm -hmm. weighted towards non-pair hands. They're going to find a lot of bluffs here. Weighted towards those suited queens. Um, and also toward hands that aren't going to necessarily pay off, but we might be able to induce. Exactly, exactly. That's what, that's what we're looking for there. So then, Paul losing that one, but still resting comfortably atop the overall chip lead. Shy of seven million at present, but... An overwhelming lead at this table, specifically Ren Lin, second in chips, neck and neck with Zivilevsky. Ding Biao, trending in the right direction. Naroshevsky, Bogdanov, Putra, and Greenwood in that order. Sam down to just four big blinds. Playing 50, 125, 125. like our picks are still in. Not much movement on Ben or Yuri, Henrik or Santosh. All four of our snake draft choices here in the booth, still alive and well. Mm. Greenwood. Jams an ace nine. And Ding Biao on the button. King ten suited. Could be a customer. Looks like one of the weakest hands. Wow. He's going to fold. thought that might be one of the weakest he'd call. Oh. Ace nine of you. suited does give way. I'm three million chips behind. Three million. Pocket fives. No, Will force Sam like to the roulette wheel. Four, five, four, five, six. Sam's entering the bargaining stage. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Ace, Ace, ten, six. Five, Not quite five, at five. acceptance. Two side, two side. Greenwood way out in front two now. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> sides. No on the turn and no diamond either for Ren is okay, 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 let's just got a fade a two outer. Ooh. I had a Ren Lin vibe there. I thought we were seeing five. He has run rather hot on the day, but how much? Mild cooldown. <laughs> Greenwood does double, albeit back to that nine big blind range that he brought into this time. <laughs> I'll take a minute to acknowledge those of you who are streaming our coverage here from Sporting Monte Carlo of the Triton Super High Roller Series live, be it on the app. Be it on Twitch or be it on YouTube, where Jonathan and I are keeping an eye on the chat. Would love to see you mouse over and click like and subscribe and continue to build our numbers that will, in turn, allow us to continue to deliver the finest in streaming poker entertainment to you free of charge. And with pleasure, obviously, delighted to have Jaffe <laughs> stepping into the booth here. Many of you taking a minute to thank Jonathan for his time and his insights. As few and far between are the moments where you're not actually out there being commentated upon as opposed to available to come in here and talk about what we're seeing with us. Meanwhile, yeah. we're seeing two queens opening to 250,000 and a first look at Igor Yaroshevsky with a tempter in the big blind, ace three, he will come along. How much you mouse over, is that an internet term or what's that? Yeah, just, uh, you know, Take your mouse and then move the cursor over the link. Point the sure. link and the wow. What were you picturing? Picturing the creature. 
Ah, and I was just yeah. like, is this some sort of like through a maze or is it a cheese reference? I'm oh, picturing like I a see. kind of Tom and Jerry thing. <laughs> <laughs> Old school cartoons there. Yeah. Ace King Jack, by the way, not exactly the board that you had in mind as yeah. Paul Pua looks at the two overcards, one of which has connected with Yaroshevsky's defense. Igor in front, checking over. Paul's got one of those hands that wants to find a check here, but on a board that doesn't really want to find many checks. Reaches over toward the top of his stack for loose chips. 125 of them, a min bet. Delivered. Let me ask you a question. You see uh, Yaroshevsky's uh, card protector that he's got sitting on the chip stack? So I guess it's not a card protector. but oh, that, that little, little tiny trite? Yes. Uh, yeah. Somebody messaged me earlier today asking if there's a place he can buy those. Is that in the store at not all? Not to my knowledge, and mm. I believe you guys were given those card protectors as part of one of the... Ah, that's a very nice needle, welcome. given that I wasn't in the Invitational where they got those. That was ah, very so, clever. So you know where they got them from. Yeah, in the Invitational. Yes, but I was wondering if they make their way to the shop. No, they don't. And I don't believe so. And the scarf as well that many of you have been wearing here also yes. not at the shop. I, lovely material. I donated it to Daniel DeVoris, who has a, a much better climate suited towards scarves than I do. Yeah, north of the border mm -hmm. up in Canada. does get a little chilly as the ace three heated up on the turn, unable to get a bet out of Paul, though. His Broadway gutty comes up empty, and now he faces a bet of 750000 This is... Ali, while we're talking about classic assholes, can I tell you a divorce story? <laughs> When were we talking about? Well, I mentioned Dan, so it was obviously on everybody's mind. Now, hang on a second. Don't put those words in my mouth. You did not say I that? I don't feel that way about Dan whatsoever, but... Let me just tell you on. about his true colors. Okay. As you heard, I gave him a scarf. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, kind. Very Generous. kind. I might have also given him an ass-whooping in tennis, but that's beside the point. What followed was yesterday, me coming out of my room on break, three minutes left before dinner finishes, I have a nice coffee in my hand. As I get oh, out I'm of the elevator, that. he jumps on top of me, the coffee yeah. spills all over me, shirt and pants, everything, I've got no time to go back and change, and I have to go and play the rest of it. And you know what he said? I didn't know um, you would have coffee. That doesn't sound like sorry. Sort of no, it certainly doesn't. <laughs> no. 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 No bluffing behavior, no right? Bluff. Diamond bluff. No, no. I mean, Good fault. where do I, I go to get a suspension? Do we go to Kate? Do we go to Paul? How do we get somebody suspended from tour? You remember in school when something would happen off campus after school, mm -hmm. but then you would still face repercussions mm -hmm. from administration the next day at school? I don't. Go on. In the form of suspensions and whatnot, I remember this being a thing. Perhaps. You should take this you up with the powers that Every be, because never then you could earn like that moniker for yourself no, as opposed no to assigning it to Dan, <laughs> Dan no as you get him oh, barred maybe from an event <laughs> no, or two. I, I think like he it. would. <laughs> I think he would maybe then be more apt to find apologies <laughs> moving forward. That's fair. In yeah. Life. Boss well, seems tied up at the moment, but when he's done with this, I think he'll <laughs> want to hear about it. This is this is pressing matter. He did end up folding those two queens, by the way, eventually after some pause as Yaroshevsky able to take a nibble. Off of Pua stack. Now, King Jack. Dig Viewers, down. if you encounter Dan in the world, oh, feel free to shove him randomly. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot <laughs> encourage nor condone I mean, it's more than this, what this sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he's not saying no. In Jeju, we put three shots at you. And then Bob one. Knopf won't be saying no with Ace King oh. here. Oh. As he's got Ding Biao surrounded. From the big. And in it goes. Sub-20 blinds in the form of a three-bet out of the big. This is just too much on ask for a King Jack. Ding Biao does wave the white flag. Did you never use a mouse, Jonathan? I did. I did. You're I was just, just a trackpad guy now. No, no. Always. A, well, yeah. 
No, I use a mouse playing StarCraft, but I uh, I use the little, what's the, it's just the normal pad on the... Yeah, the little trackpad. Trackpad, track track right, okay, really. yeah. Touchpad. I just, whatever. I don't know, I went to the little creature and I thought it was some sort of metaphor and uh, you were just being honest. Are we that cryptic up here at the booth that you now just auto-skew toward... Mouse over. Mouse, yeah. you mouse over. That's fair, well, yeah. It just... What was the, you said earlier, Nera? Naria. Naria. I don't know what it was. I, let's not say it again. <laughs> I just thought it was fancy play syndrome, so I was I was checking out all the metaphors. Fancy play, FPS. Yeah. A real thing. Absolutely. Uh, I've been very guilty over the course of my career. Yeah. yeah. We like the glory, don't we out there? We yeah. know when a line's going to look extra sexy when it gets played back. I like adding some creativity to a game that sometimes doesn't have as much as I would like it to have. Yeah, especially at the level at which you guys have come to comprehend and kind of speak the language. Sure. Can be a bit monotonous at times. Pocket yeah. Kings don't require much creativity, Pre. I have. But. Oh, I Small thought he All right. Min raise. Yeah, it's true. I have small clubs. Tell you a funny one about seeing Thanks cards for. after Sam plays this. Yeah, Greenwood advising that he did see a small club. Or at least that's what he thought he saw. Love to see moments like that, by the way, in the spirit of fair play. Yeah. How does Sam? I think it speaks to his character. Will defend with 10 9, blind versus blind, against the min open. Jack 7, deuce. Got shot straight draw. The developments for Greenwood. One fifty. One fifty. Pogged enough. Look at the sizing here. One fifty into five and a quarter. Sub one third. No doubt Sam's suspicious that uh, Bogdanov has a hand like he does, but obviously there's just not many combos of queens, kings, aces. And for this price with that gutter, um, he's going nowhere. But the reason I say he's going to have his you know, antennae up is there's just not too many 2x opens into Sam's incredibly short stack there. So Bogdanov is very polarized between uh, really terrible hands and a hand like he has. Not a lot of people are going to, you know, find this small raise with something like an ace-jack suited or a pocket nines. Uh, you're looking at more premium or more trash. Greenwood did flat. Another 300 into the middle. And look at Bogdanov. No flush draws to be concerned about. Decides to pump the brakes. And if Greenwood thinks he's on the trash side of the spectrum, this 10 high could go speaking up, trying to lay claim to what they think is 925 up for grabs. Mm. Yeah, I think it's an interesting spot on the one hand. Bogdanov has to feel like he's pretty well protected if he's good, but oh. also... Oh, that was boss, huh? <laughs> Making his way back to the table. Greenwood <laughs> did end up checking back, by the way. Jonathan is... Nice. The jack pair is on the river. So now if you're Bogdanov, if you think Sam has a seven, a deuce, or a six, you definitely want to just put the money in and hope for the call. Um, you're not saving any money if he does have a jack, so that's not a concern. And if you think that Sam has something like he has, you want to do exactly this, check, give him a little rope, hope that he's got some sort of eight, nine, 10, nine, of which, you know, Sam's probably working with all 32 combos. Um, in addition to, you know, some of the more uh, creative hands he could have, which in this situation, it's tough to find which ones would bluff. I guess, theoretically, Sam should have like four or five suited. That's a pretty, um, maybe out of line check, if anything, by Sam. And I say that with, you know, being impressed. I think if you're not bluffing that hand in that situation, is Sam gonna bluff anything really? 
You can make the case that 8-9 bluffs better than 10-9, but they're the same thing. Could have been customer dependent. And Whoa, look at us. So My guy funny. knocking out your guy. Getting showered by Ben Heath, whose two kings went up against an ace seven suited the way this one shook out. Love Santosh, but love beating Ali. Like a yeah, yeah, yeah. free flop jam. Oh, my man. Yeah, I think that's one of those spots. Not saying Bogdanov played it poorly, but um, he's going to want to go back and think about what he might have been able to do better when. Uh, when Sam gets a cheap look at a gutter that's going to get fully paid and then puts no more money in, you know, he may want to look at the turn, possibly the river, or maybe rethink that preflop action. Maybe maybe the 2x is um, is going to leave his range and maybe it changes to a 2.5x. There's a chance so also that Greenwood just got the sense that there was no world in which his bet was going to be successful as he looked over at Bogdanov sure. and simply decided... I'm not going to torch off the rest of my hopes in this tournament. So then that's what Bogdanov is going to want to go back to. Is there something, you know, at work here where <laughs> Sam basically played his hand exactly how he would have had he seen the cards? I mean, maybe he doesn't call for it. But if that's the case, you want to be rethinking, is there something I can do better in this situation? Maybe not. <laughs> Savarna, by the way, <laughs> his departure <laughs> in 16th, earning him $62,000, like Martirosi and before him. Pay jump to $69,000. Bollywood, Bollywood, Bollywood. Bollywood, Bollywood, the titi, Bollywood. Fifteen left. Just got the chips in five seconds. <laughs> no, ten, ten seconds. First. Yeah, 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 I know. But Only ten seconds. It's though. crazy because. That's good for me. So gambling quick. All right. Fashion yeah. slow. He said suited for Yuri. Let me ask the you opener. something, Ali. I'm, I'm not too familiar with the law. Sure. If somebody watching were to attack Dan. Can I be taking a court over this? Oh, no, look, I don't have a degree. But you did seem to be in yeah, yeah, yeah. Granted, friendly violence, but violence nevertheless toward the horse in a vindictive manner on account of the fact that he dressed you in your own coffee in an elevator. Yeah. Um, I could see him naming you and perhaps a little Is Canada oh, yeah. litigious in the States? It started with my I would say like no. Six, six okay. People. I still yeah, want to walk it back a little bit. But is divorce as litigious as your average person is the real oh, that's a great thing question. that you need to worry about? I think he's more of a take the law into your own hands kind of guy. I think that's what I experienced. In which case, what event? absent someone actually attacking him, you have nothing to worry about. Um, you, on the other hand, yeah, yeah. I think, Odin, uh, should take oh, matters in your own hands and maybe so just a vindictive horses, pouring of coffee right. over Dan yeah, deep yeah, into the tank in man. an event like <laughs> on the stone Two, three, four, would be a, five, a wonderful way. Eight, this seems exactly extraordinarily <laughs> risky. I think you are Ice the one coffee. who's now inciting violence. Ice coffee sounds wonderful. That's got a Canadian That's vibe, a too. <laughs> you can't keep a coffee on it. I won the 10K PLO as well. In Greenwood in taking his last stand. King three suited from the cutoff. Yeah, I think Will so. Will it yeah, get yeah. through? Yeah, it me for sure. So far, so good. And yeah, it does feel. Yeah, I make a final table. I'm going to concede as well, which he does. <laughs> Sam's lurking out there. It's tight for the guys under the gun. Not that tight. Yeah, he's hanging in there. And then what's the other country? What's your most epic spin up that you've seen at a American guy In terms of somebody who just out the door. door. No, no, no. One big the other day, and then yeah. he just won it. Yeah. Oh, like I was just right. taking a walk with him, and he was uh, he was talking about how uh, how amazing that felt. One big blind, and all of a sudden, uh, a few hours later, he's holding a trophy. His first. Yeah, I mean, uh, as deserving as anybody, he's uh, phenomenal, and he's, uh, you know, run bad in some pretty big spots, and he just takes it so well, and he's just always, you know, pleasure to chat with, be around, super, I mean, super nice guy. One of the best attitudes you can ever hope to be around in terms yep. of a high-stakes reg. Yep. Relentless amounts of positivity, mm -hmm. not to invoke Helmuth, who 
leverages that more as a social media tool than an actually embraced sort of vibe. Hashtag Although empathy. He, you know, he's tries to be positive. I love Phil. <laughs> Ooh. Phil, come play some Tritons. Positively top of range here for Mr. Del Val. Trap oh. being laid. A limp of 125,000. Heath. Ben is trying to make sense of this with such a nice looking hand. What is Frederick going to limp in the cutoff? What does this range look like? This is not something he's going to find in the solver. So Ben is accessing his instincts, trying to figure out what's the best course of action. Folding would seem really out of line. Finds a limp. Brigade ensues now. Heath flats the button. He sues. <laughs> Jan's with small. a little shake of his head yeah. and the brow up. <laughs> All right. Wondering what he's got himself involuntarily involved in here. A four way affair. Not exactly how you script it with the two aces. Mm. That late position limp. King 10 10 and Arens rates to be the customer. I'm going to say this is the only four-way limped pot we're going to see from 15 down. Concur. Quite a spot for Jan's here, trying to figure out what are the bluffs? What am I beating? Yeah. But can I ever fold it this? Doesn't. It's one of those lines you just don't expect to see. An Absolutely. open limp, late position, four-way affair, paired flop, and all of a sudden... Frederick seems pretty comfortable. Delval jamming, and by the way, chatting as well. Yeah. Saying, hope you don't have a 10, I believe. Great fold by Jans. And he's going to get to see him? Yes. Wow. And Jans is very pleased. Indeed, with good reason, too. You got the maximum. So huh? You got the maximum. Yeah, I think so. If I show the... Uh, I call that bluff, Jans. No, it's I true. He's saying yeah, he got what the if maximum. He bet, what if he bet the min on the floor? That That's true. You're right. I think he was saying <laughs> had he had he <laughs> yeah. opened the hand, had he right. shoved, right. Um, we're seeing folds from everyone. Yeah, and yeah, uh, he picked dangerous, up uh, it's dangerous to do an that, extra blind and a half. Call, call, call. I was okay with the flop. So, Henrik, do you want to know the sickest fold that I have made? <laughs> I want to know the sickest fold Jan's ever made. I'm not surprised if that's the biggest fold you ever made. <laughs> Who's suggesting that it's the biggest fold he ever made? I don't know if he was suggesting that was. He, he said, do you want to know the sickest fold I ever made? Ah, okay. But I think he maybe was implying that. Might that be in the conversation? Oh, the Queen Eight of Hearts reminds me. There's a funny story from the other day. For so, listening. Lewis Spencer uh, was in the on the button. I'm in the cutoff. As it folds to me in the cutoff, oh, got to shove. Put a pin in it, just briefly. Hisu jamming over the top of this Heath open and at another 225K, a stack of 5.4 is not going to be going anywhere and will be behind this King Jack in a one and a half million chip pot. We'll hold Jonathan to that story eventually. Let's let this one play out, though, as he seems comfy. Cup of tea in hand, but not the lead on the all-diamond texture, which removes the queen and eight of diamonds from the disaster cards. Then Hisu is anti-sweating, board pairing four on the turn. All is clean and all is well. And all remains that way as Hisu 
you watch Will Bennett Dunn. and All In, you can kind of sense that he's not very invested in what's going on. And I don't think that's because he doesn't care. He absolutely does. But I think he's one of these guys who says, look, now it's out of my control. I made the decision I made. Right. And let's prepare for the next decision. Yeah. Rooting for things, you know, as natural as it is, isn't going to really help anything. And, uh, I've seen Ben during All In's and he never really, you know, seems to be getting all that emotional or hyped up for them. Yeah. Kind of one of the zen types definitely definitely Much like think. chewy i think sure i think just so then the story you were going to tell no yeah um lewis spencer uh, mentions that he saw a black oh, maybe okay. six or I seven okay. hit the luck okay. okay and actions on me so i just pause for a moment let them sort that okay, out okay, okay, the dealer okay. kind of looks at him funny in the situation of like hmm what do i do now you haven't pointed to which card do i do anything do we just kind of play on right and as I then fold, she decides to check the muck, which must have eight cards in it, maybe ten. Okay. Um, and she just looks up confidently, looks at Lewis and goes, nope, all red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and immediately puts her hand over her mouth like, oh, crap. Okay, I just realized I just revealed way more than Lewis even potentially oh, would have. Oh, man. You're yeah. not going for any harder diamond combos there, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as Lewis opens, Queen Eight of Hearts on the button. Savage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's the button. You got to do it. But uh, I thought that was pretty amusing. One of my favorites, as we see Heath opening with a seven here, was way back in the day on Poker After Dark when Ilari Sahamius, Zygmunt, as he was known online, of Finland, was playing 50K red blacks on the flop with Phil Ivey. And Ivey began to take far less interest in the cash game itself. Mm hmm and would take combos that were blocking his color and would then put a lot of action in pre to avoid wow. seeing a flop with that many less wow. outs to what it were the being stakes black of the game? or $50,000 per but flop. But what were the stakes of the... Oh, game? it was dwarfed by the 50 Yeah, so it was like 100, 200 or something? I mean, whatever wow. it was, yeah. they were never going to get unstuck from the prop. That's amazing. But it definitely did influence the action so to speak, as we see the gut shot straight draw for Lim on the heels of defending the big blind, facing the follow through barrel of A7, Ace of Spades working for Heath, as is that big stack. He is second in chips overall, coming into this one, and wow. Lobster just check folds. It's a snug one. No spade, can understand. Give him a spade, I think he's in there. Yeah, definitely. Who are sort of, you know, provided that you're willing to talk about it, um, Jonathan, your closest friends on, on tour <laughs> here at Triton, the people that you spend the most time with, the ones that you Thank talk you, most Nick about Nick hands with? Uh, Nick Petrangelo. Number one? Yeah. Okay. Nicky P? Yeah. There's no real uh, number two. I mean, my friend Chad Eva Slage, I'm really close with him, but this was his first Triton. Came through to his very first one, and obviously we prefer humans with whom to have conversations with about poker, but the solvers will do the trick as well. And our partners over at GTO Wizard are giving away free access to their app. Check them out at gtowizard.com slash Triton. Don't want to overlook the number one app for poker players where you can analyze played hands, practice by playing versus GTO, solve any spot in the game. It all happens over at GTO Wizard AI. Get in on that exclusive membership giveaway. Or click the link in our chat to get involved. Back to the action then. Let me ask you, is Espen the GTO Wizard? Well, I will, if anyone's a wizard in the field, it has to be Ole Shemion just based on what he wore Ooh, yesterday. That's full shamanistic gear. I mean, like sorcery. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised That's if, black magic. if you busted him and he just held up both his arms and nothing but like aces just flew out magically into Ooh, the room. And then I'm going to say like, bats. I think bats are going <laughs> to fly out. I think it's an Aleister Crowley <laughs> vibe I'm getting. Fairy dust yeah. sprinkled onto the flop and all of a sudden you were nutted and it just changes and he's nutted. In you're Vietnam, like, what? there was a fanny pack to go with it. And I was convinced there are some potions in there. Oh, potions a good word, by yeah. the way. It goes nicely with Merlin. Sorcerer, wizard. Acid. Well, uh, acid. Now, acid's a whole different story, Jaffe. Let's be okay. careful. Fair enough. Ace Jack here. 
for Hing Yang Chow. Third in chips overall. Hecklin, a couple of tens. Off of sub-20 bigs. Hecklin's been known to slug some potions. He he can put down more potion than just about anyone, I think, on or tour and then show up the next day for work as though no. it never happened. Let me ask you, do you know what the word gravitas means? I do. We did not. Um, I thought Hecklin used it perfectly in a sentence yesterday, but Chewy consulted with ChatGPT, and yeah. we were all pretty off. We thought we thought it might be a nice word for oozing morale, which uh, Henrik is always doing. No, not on point. that's not no. it. No, no, no. But he is. It was high morale. He is very. You know high the high morale, morale story? It was a boat that was named Morale, and then I guess the owner of the boat did better in life and bought another boat and then named it High Morale. If I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm butchering the details, but Henrik told a great story about this. That's pretty funny. I've got it right. Yeah, you All know, right. the first boat is morale, and then, and then the bigger <laughs> boat is high morale. We need a 10. Let's go, Henrik. High stakes. As Eklund's jam so here. One of my two guys. Sees him playing a 4.1 million chip pot against. You could be in trouble. I'll have two of the top the three game. guys. You sure will. Great picks by Jaffe, potentially. But he's got to fade the Acer Jack on the flop, which he's done successfully. 6-6-7. Six, six, the 10s are snug. Morale still high. That it is. Club on the turn. We'll remove two outs. You think he's picturing what kind of potion he's going to order if it goes poorly? There will be no potion until this day is done and he's until safe. this flop is complete as the 10s do hold. And Hecklin sat back. Waited for the right spot. Didn't get into the Merc. Two tens, straight forward, and straight up the leaderboard. Hecklin cheering section. Hecklin's horde. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Saw that Braveheart makeup you had on? No. Yeah, for the uh, Halloween party, they had a makeup artist. I didn't make artist. it out there. I was here at the desk. I was in bed, I, I but mean, uh, they is had there a little any video. Better candidate, by the way, for the Braveheart. Now, I know he's Him and Scottish. KCG, they both did. It was a perfect KCG pairing. KCG a bit of a hero. Yeah. I like the two of them. Yeah. That's a good tandem. Then I've got 75. Waiting for the dust to settle, and now it has in the app. We've updated things, and Hecklin slides into third overall behind Heath. Jaffe, your two picks running 2-3 behind Boss Paul Pua. Right. Maybe more. Suvarna, meanwhile. Three has been showered. One of my picks out of there. Zibolevsky though, in hey fifth, guys, threatening. No mistake before the break, never. 3.6 million it's on the books. in front of him. <laughs> I'm feeling <laughs> real good. Should be. Yeah. Look at that mouse. Second and third. Yeah. Careful though, you don't want to tempt any fate. Because listen, by the way, if I'm Heath or Hecklin and I come to find out, you pick me, and then all of a sudden you start talking about feeling real good, and it comes undone. I'm holding you accountable. These guys? Nah. Pure positivity. Low superstition index? Low superstition index. Okay, gotcha. I really want Henrik to play an event with one of those Nordic Viking hats, you know, the, the gold helmet with the, the horns out of either side. Maybe uh, him and KCG uh, pair up for an oh, invitation. Oh, they go fantastic. Braveheart makeup. Uh, yes. Maybe some Viking crowns. <laughs> Turkey everything. leg, <laughs> goblet. Oh. You Down see some it. mead. <laughs> you see it. Maybe they can drink out of one of those like ceremonial horns. You know, oh, the, yeah. I believe the explanation I've gotten for drinking out of a horn is you can't put it down. Oh, You're just right. You just have to house down. what's in yeah. there because it doesn't exactly yeah. stand up straight, does it? So then, 15 remaining here in the 25K GG Millions. Look at the chip counts at the feature. 75 and 150K will be the blinds when we come back from what is a scheduled break. Players on their feet and headed out of the room. As we bring you back to the desk, Alina Jad joined by Jonathan Jaffe. Unfortunately, we are going to have to say goodbye to you, Jaffe. We do pay other people that need to sit in the seat, but everybody very much enjoyed your time here. I assume you'll come back and see us again at some Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Awesome. Glad to see it. So your two picks, Heath and Hecklin, running 2-3. Good news for you. Zivilevsky in fifth. Boss Paul Pua 
up top in the shortest of all stacks. Sam Greenwood at seven big blinds. We'll uh, step away for, I want to say, about 10 minutes. Is it, Producer James? Okay, 10 minutes. Guys, go grab a snack, go grab a drink. Do what you got to do, and then come back and see us. Continuing coverage of the 25K GG Millions comes your way after this. Good Cut. job, bud. Nice. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series the of Poker. poker the biggest event. poker site. Now larger than all of the GG Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Three bets coming in from the button out of Webster, who's got some depth to him now. Granted, Greenwood up front, Maria, but the Jacks could get real tempted, couldn't they? Yeah, especially because Greenwood will have some raise folds from under the gun plus one off of 14 bigs. So, you know, it doesn't mean that Lim can't be targeting that part of Greenwood's range with this three bet. Doesn't have to be as strong as aces. You know, sometimes we'll see, you know, something like a suited ace a small you know ace three ace four ace five do this against an early position open off of a shorter stack so theolo just can't blame him but just ill-timed 20 bigs nowhere to go with jacks his jam for seven hundred eighty-five thousand, dishearteningly snapped as greenwood gets out of the way And more of that two outer business is going to be needed. We just saw for James Chen this time. It's pre-flop for Theologis, and he can't find a jack on a queen eight deuce board. Perhaps a path to a gutter. Mm. 
<laughs> I don't control the turn. I just know what's possible. And now, all of a sudden, six outs in total for Alex. Ten or a jack needed. But it's just the five of clubs that innocently rolls off and devastatingly sends the of duty with aces, I believe, now with kings. Would explain his ascent up the leaderboard here as the stone money bubble remains intact here in the GG Millions. Schwippert's Queen 10 suited in the cutoff. The only customer is flat, bringing the pot to 335,000, and the flop bringing him two overs and a gutter and possible added expenses. Yeah, fairly interesting for Schwippertz to, of course, have two overs and a gut shot. And sometimes expecting, I think, Lim to see bet and sometimes expecting him to check. It's not really a spot where I think the preflop aggressor is going to be continuing, you know, over... 70% of the time, I think that's just a little bit ambitious for this board against a cutoff caller who presum presumably is going to have some pretty strong hands here. Oh, and now courtesy of the check from Webster, Schwippert's able to hit this queen free of charge, but it could get expensive. Yeah, it would appear that Lim was trying to go for a check raise on the flop, but now gonna have to start betting as there's gonna be, you know, some Jack X, 10 X wanting to get involved and don't wanna let those types of hands see a free card. No, you don't. 175,000 Webster. No longer looking to do any trapping or texture. Bit riskier. Into the middle as Schwippert's flats and gets there the awkward way. Queen's intense, but the four liner on the board. Something not lost on Webster. How much Jack X is he going to give Schwippert's as played? Yeah, I mean, certainly going to be hands like Ace Jack in the calling range of Schwippert and King Jack suited, Queen Jack suited, those types of hands. So I think that Lim is going to likely be checking here. But I think once check two, Schwipper can certainly think about going for value with top two. And once your chips are at the new table. But does end up checking back. You may go on a 15-minute break. We're going to anticipate your break. You're now on a 15 You surprised to see Schwipper's not go for value? I think. Greenwood, very playable ace jack, had his challenges thus far here today. And Ivy, who's also been really patient today, has been pretty card dead throughout the early levels. here for Webster after Sam commits the bulk of his chips. The remainder get requested. Well, it does appear that Lim and Greenwood were destined to do battle today and 
limbs so far have been getting the best of Greenwood. Sam can do nothing but call as the commitment had been made. And now let's see if he can bounce off of the low water mark on the day. Has the two overs against the tens. Webster has been running well, though. Blemish free has been the outing for Lim thus far. Quite the inverse for Sam. Ace King four, though. That'll put Sam comfortably in front. Comfort remains, courtesy of the six, and just got a fade of 10 here. Mission accomplished. Greenwood rips the queen 10 suited from the small. And Ivy, king seven, deemed adequate. Better than the seven five before it. Just 4% though, the advantage for Phil. And I don't need to ask you, Maria, what the chat's rooting for here. <laughs> 780 in the middle. No slight to Greenwood, of course, but Phil's just given poker fans so many memories through the years, and they want more. But the Queen-10-8 board doesn't rate to give it to them. Top two for Sam. Ivy reaching for the mic early for the time being. It's with good reason. Turn, no, and yeah. that seven dangler suddenly turning into a gut shot straight draw. Four outs for Phil. And the deuce of spades is not going to get it done as we have another casualty. Well, a very warm welcome back to the final No Limit Hold'em event of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in Monte Carlo, Monaco. Randy Liu, alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, stepping in for Ali Najad and Jonathan Jaffe. Randy, I don't know if you had the chance to listen to some of the com commentary, but always a pleasure for us, who are typically stuck here in the booth, to have a player that is out there knows exactly what it's all about to compete at these levels. He knows these players. He has personal relationships with them and really provided some world-class insights. Exactly. It's a delight to have someone who competes at the highest levels willing to spend some time uh, away from the table in the booth, able to divulge, divulge some information that's uh, very insightful for the viewers. So it's nice when he didn't have to do it. It's out of his own will. And we're 100%. happy to have him again. Could put it better myself. Always fun at the tables and very entertaining. Some rogue chat and light-hearted banter between Ali and Jaffe. I feel like you put those two in the booth long enough, there's a potential car crash. But <laughs> shout out to JJ for stepping in on our behalf. It is Boss Paul Pua leading the final 15, Randy. And there's been several occasions over the course of 2023 where Boss has built a stack but ultimately come up short. Could this be it in the record-breaking field? Most definitely very possible, right? He's one of the few players who has so much experience, so many caches under his belt and one title. He would love to uh, make a big splash here in, in Monte Carlo. Would love to tie his co-founder. Richard Young on two titles. I would think. Well. I think uh, Richard Young is bragging right now. You still got uh, a <laughs> yeah, less than me? It. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 100%. That, that, you know, the one million that comes of it doesn't matter. It's, it's, you know, tie in your friend in any endeavor, always the case. He's leading the final 15 as Randy, is, Randy and I look to throw it to the main stage once more. These final 15 are going to battle it out for the seven figure payout up top. All currently guaranteed, Randy. $69,000 for their efforts. Not a bad day out for a 25K. Not even at the final table. Little two and a half, almost three X. But we know these 
million dollar payouts in a 25k don't come round all too often. In fact, first time ever at a Triton Super High Roller Series here in this record-breaking field. A lot of people left in these final 15 looking for a trip, seat, trip saver, perhaps. Yes. You um, fire the main, you fire the 200k, you fire the 100k. All comes down to this. You know, it's just amazing to see it go to such numbers, 187. It's impressive. We know it's just going to get bigger. And we also know that Ace 5 suit is going to get involved here for Ding Biao. Love to see Ding back at one of our feature tables. Always so entertaining. Yeah, has one Triton title under his belt. Been pretty impressive ever since he showed up in Vietnam. Did lose to Dao Min Phu for one of those trophies. Could have got two. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a heads up match that I would happily watch over and <laughs> over again. It was a really good one. Green one in the spot where he's going to have to spin it with Ding Biao. Fortune for him. Oh. Dame. Oh. See the Putra. Hello. Eight bigs, a welcome sight nice. with the overlay in the middle as well. Has fold equity. Ding asking for a count. Is, is there just too much in the middle there here, Randy? There seems like there's too much in there, right? There's, what, 825 more for him to call. But 925. Two-way, maybe knock out two people. It's tricky, yeah, but I think he just priced in. Yeah, that here we go. Oh, no. Oh, that's okay. It's okay. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> Go. Oh. Space. Ding Biao looking to do the dirty. Ten percent three ways. But you're looking for an ace or a king. Or some clubs. Greenwood looking to just fade. three ways. About as good as it gets. Oi. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> you get one hour. Yeah. No, no hour. To win this one now, uh, five of clubs would actually no. give Putra a flush. He's a runner, runner. Okay. Wow. Uh, wow. Is that a flash? Royal flash. Royal flash. Don't take what all royal flash. Ace of clubs. Drop it up. Wow. Too many clubs. How about that, Randy? That's the type of elimination by I feel like you don't mind. <laughs> it's an you achievement, know? right? Eliminated by Royal Flush. Check. And it was flash. two cards in the hand, flash. three on board Royal Flush. is the special no, the real one. The real one. <laughs> you got it. Wow. Double. Every time. Every time we More than double up. up. For Putra there. That was enough of a hand for Putra to take a photo of. Vaults his way up the leaderboard, up the chip counts, was on the short <laughs> stack now. Crazy. In the middle of the pack with around 24 bigs. Bit of breathing room. One big blank. For the Triton OG. No. 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 <laughs> Join us back in London 2019. Played the million pound buy <laughs> for charity event. The 100k main, the 100k short deck. Always involved in the high stakes cash games. Yeah, he's just a, one of those guys that plays the highest stakes and plays really well for someone who doesn't play professionally. Bogdanov, unfazed by the covering stacks behind. Yeah, just an 8-6 suited. All business. Paul's got king four of diamonds in the big. Definitely going to at least seal flop. Looks like Boss was perhaps mulling over the pre-flop aggression. Didn't yes. just defend. We'll dive back into that as Jan says, well, hold your horses. They straight up jammed from the small blind. 24 bigs. It's made the call, Randy. 
cards on their backs. Chow Allen for his tournament life. Great call up to King Jack Clubs. Reasonable favorite in the spot. Really is. This is for a good 17 bigs, Randy. This isn't a small pot. 17 bigs apiece. Whoever wins this is going to vault up to third or second in chips. 965, safe for Chow. Until the ten of spades. You see the shake of his head there. He's still got a shot. Hello. Pink. Queen of Diamonds. Corner pocket. How about that for a roller coaster of a hand for Chow? The hand's improving to top two. No good against the rivered straight. Back over here. Wow, boss. Boss going for the post flop aggression. Yeah, check raising just king four on 10 9 3. Technically, this is his board, and I don't really see how Yulian Bakunov can really continue while he's still calling here. Just a little gutter, no backdoor spades in hand. No more blacks, right? No. No more. We got a poker hand developing. We do. This is what we're here for. Action turn card as well. I think at this point, if I'm Paul, you just rip it in. You got so much equity in case you're behind. You can really apply a lot of pressure on like a king 10, an ace 10 that it's going to be quite scared of the overcard to the board. SPR of one. Gut shot. King high flush draw. Is one of those cards, however, Randy, that is perceived to favor Bogdanov's range. Right, but there's just so much in the middle, and if you check, you don't have that chance to just win it without showdown. Right, what do we do if we check and Bogdanov bets big? All of a sudden it gets uncomfortable, right? Right, if you're going to put it in anyways, why not give yourself a chance to win now? Love that. Only see what boss decides as he does empty the clip. How about that? Nice play. For some power poker awesome. with the chip lead. <clears throat> Check raising with the backdoor diamonds, picking them up on the turn. And all you can eat. Paul now up to 7 million. Would love nothing more than to tie his good friend and Triton co founder. On two titles apiece. So you saw Richard Young pick up his second title in the 25k short deck in uh, Cyprus this earlier this year. I, I, I don't know. A bit complicated. <laughs> okay, fine. It's getting quite closer, I think. It's fine, it's like. Yeah, he got one of his five. One of my favorite players, cool action on Randy. Renlin? Renlin. This man. I wish we could have him at every feature table. <laughs> Is he not uncomfortable when he's not holding a queen? It was Amma. Sambai. Sambai. Oh, two. Two point one. Okay. Sambai, Sam. Voila. Hello, pocket tens. Definitely a hand if he wants to just shove it in. Quite a good play. Hello, pocket tens. It is a plus one open, though. Tied in the middle of the pack as he takes the spot unfazed. This yes. is just annoying for Ace-10 suited because you know you want to at least see a flop. If it was later position, I'm certainly would be calling this one off. But the plus one range makes it so that Ding Biao's reshoving range should be tighter. Uh, yesterday, late in the evening in this 25k, Renlin was talking about the no gamble, no future. There's a few players getting a bit loose. And now's not the time to gamble. <laughs> now's definitely not the time. Gamble, no future would be the play right here. 
，他他包了个里里面的。好嘛，好嘛。Translation, Randy. Uh, I, I almost just saw your card. Thank you for that. I didn't count on the other pie. When you, when you uh, saw it, I struggled with that one myself. <laughs> Chip counts. Brought to you by BetACR.eu. Number one on Malaysia's all-time money list. Triton co-founder Paul Pua out in pole position in Monaco in the final podium event of the series. Final, but still, it's a million bucks for first. It's a million bucks for first, and it's a record-breaking field as well. Queen ten obviously for Yaroshevsky, getting kind of a shorter stack. I think it's Ugh. most players lean towards folding, but looks like he still will come in for raise. He is in early position. Bad timing as Pucher wakes up a puck to Queens right behind. What a few hands it's been for Pucher. The Royal Flush to eliminate Greenwood. Now Queens against the Arashevsky Open from plus one. Working his way up the leaderboard. Usually the game plan is kind of bump it up small to around 750 or so. With a smaller 3-bet, this allows you to have some 3-bet bluffs in your range where your opponent might convince himself to make a play back at you. Right. But perhaps the size up due to the fact that there's stacks behind that have him covered? Not sure. I would have definitely preferred maybe one big blind down, but it doesn't change that much, I suppose. We're back over to table one, the main stage. We've got Delval. JNT's best buddy, travel partner. Yeah, I always see him around whenever always JNT on makes the road. a deep run like every single stop, and you always see Frederick on the sidelines just like hanging out, Rudy on his buddy, and now maybe it's going to be the reverse. If he can just make it to this final table. I watched a hand with Delval when Ali and Jonathan Jaffe were in the booth. And? Got Trappy with the aces pre-flop off of sub-10, limped from the cutoff, I believe. It's like 800. So, well, talking of Delval, here he is in action. Yeah, yeah. Hecklin opening pipped him. on the button, and he is out pipped. Uh, with my, yeah, uh, with my... Uh, 750, I can. Eight. Eight, uh, Pipped yeah. by one. Frederick. All in for his tournament life, but in fantastic shape here. Chop, chop. Yes. <laughs> Call him for a chop. Down. <laughs> Why not just go for a scoop, Frederick? It's going to take my time. I'm far ahead. I'm far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you blocked the diamond. Oh, uh, oh five. That'll five. be tough to chop that one. <laughs> Queen eight, seven? five. No, I'd rather take a five. Five is better than seven. Did I should do Five's like a good. GNT, but take off my microphone? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's really is tough to chop now. Flipped out That's from sixes four. to sevens. Or like four, four or five, five for a chop. I like this four. This is no good. <laughs> All right. One, I love how nope. there's light-hearted banter deep into a record-breaking field. Frederick's kicker plays, uh, Randy. <laughs> uh, JNT celebration. Ren Lim, by the way, with a hoodie slash jacket, reminiscent of a piece that you rock up with for the Triton series. I don't know if you've seen the similarities, but take note, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to go ask him where he bought that. 
it's almost identical. <laughs> I'm I'm actually Ooh, suspicious that perhaps I'm actually really feeling this Ding Biao track jacket with the Chinese characters. You ever yeah. play Mahjong at all? That that yeah. red character on the left, the red dragon. Reminds me of uh, the jumpsuits from. Do you know what Korean show I'm talking about? Someone's gonna tell me that one that went really famous. I was like, I'm gonna just leave you there to dry. Thanks, man. <laughs> ah. What show are you talking about? Everyone in the chat knows what I'm talking about. Squid right? Game? Yes, thank you. They were green color. Yes, I know. That they is were green white color. and red. I said and they remind every me. Every time they play a hand here, everyone survives. Of the that jumpsuits. game is very different. <laughs> you fall into a pit, you don't you come die. back. <laughs> You don't win at showdown there, you know, it's like... <laughs> they play winner takes all. Here, Literally. we chop up the prize pool bit. It's very different. <laughs> that is true. Talking of game shows, GG Poker. Don't know if you heard. Saw some of the trailers. Shout out to GG. Trying to mix things up. We had our very own Ali Najad and Maria Ho out there filming that one. More details to be released. But that, I'm going to watch it. That teaser trail. Daniel Negreanu. We saw Jungle Man telling Yo Viral to F off in a heated exchange. I mean, reminds me of Survivor slash Big Brother meets Poker. 825. Yaroshevsky just defended Pre. Well, this boar technically is supposed to hit him, but does check once oh. more, and the queen is very bad. The worst card in the deck for Yaroshevsky. Yeah, with all the check throughs as well, this is going to allow Yuri to value bet if he gets to him even on this pretty coordinated board. But Igor might put in a bet himself as a block. 275. Should get snapped off. I don't think Yuri would ever raise ace queen in the spot with a four liner out there. There we go. Yeah, that block from Yaroshevsky kind of setting the price, Randy. Could have been slightly more expensive had he checked it on over. Yuri oh. just quietly getting it done here. Been a very rough series for the nerd guy. One of the greatest Brazilians to ever played the game. Not just Hold'em, by the way. Typically see Yuri he plays all being games. bid on for a high price during the series. Due to the fact that he is a bit of a wizard. When you think of the best Brazilian players, his name often comes up very quickly. For sure. For sure. In terms of not just Brazilian, by the way. Worldwide, there aren't many people as competent in as many different formats as Yuri is. You know, you have your Hold'em specialists, you have your Omaha specialists. <laughs> Yuri rocking the Reg Life t-shirt. It's been a rough trip, though. We've all been there. I fold Both the final table. for seven. <laughs> <laughs> Renlin says, I fold the final table. <laughs> Announce that strategy. I believe it. Raise no, him. That's when he starts raising next hand with hand. dust. No, real good. Igor <laughs> so short, trying to get a free flop. It's hand. But Bogdanov also short himself. Needs to decide, is this a trap or maybe I just take this down pre? Igor is supposed to jam all of his ace X's in this spot. Not have too many traps but gets away of at least seeing a flop here with this deuce eight of clubs. I don't want to be overly critical or too judgmental, but he's limped in from the small, the eight deuce, Wrapped around the 7-6, Randy, one club on board. Feels like a potential worthy candidate to take a stab. Good Just chance to fight, you know? Yeah, good chance he's going to fight now because 
He saw his opponent check back, who often will bet a pair on his flop. Board pairing is good. Let's see if five. the queen nine wants to call. It's interesting because I would expect all the ace aces to, to jam pre, so therefore you got the next best high card. Even king x's, they jam pre a lot off of that short stack in the small. That's a really good point, Randy. The two overs to the 7-6 with the queen nine as well, just in case Kashevsky had a piece for Bogdanov on a similar stack. You got to give credit to Igor for being able to limp in that spot, getting that free flop and yeah. stealing that one away. 100%. A lot of confidence in how his opponent was going to react to his limp. Yashevsky was one of the chip leaders on day one. One of the chip leaders coming in today too, actually. Joined us for the first time in Cyprus early this year. Came fourth in this very event, the GG Super Millions for 300. <coughs> 39,000 and then a third place finish in the 50k turbo for 240k. Cash ninth in the 30k here in Monte Carlo for another six figures. Bit of a pay jump, 7k ladder between 14th and 13th. Germany's Siza Hisu and Zaren's on short stack duty, both sub 10 bigs. Randy, this is where I wish we had artificial intelligence. You don't need artificial Listening. intelligence to translate Chinese. Listening to you just the need stream. someone who understands No, so Chinese. that it's automated. We don't need to hire someone to sit here and translate for us. I know what they're saying. I'm just not sharing it. Okay. I'm I don't. <laughs> we have this bit every trip, mate. I know. Every trip. One day I'm going to surprise you. Randy's our resident Asian. We expect him to translate during, for During us. my downtime in the next stop, I'm just going to go to Chinese school. King-Queen suited. Got to go to work here. Lots of fold equity. Nice hand. Occasionally you come in with a flat call just because it's an early position raise. But I after giving it the speech that he's going to fold his way to the final table. <laughs> I don't think anyone believed that statement, though, but I know where your head's at. I think the sizing is perfect. Well, I want to finish my thought, but I do see two aces right behind. Yaroshevsky with numero uno. 1,375,000 in the middle already. Is that a baby Triton trophy on his cards? It is. Card protector. I don't know where he got it from. So if he wins, is he going to switch it up to the big one? Well, and carry the big one around with him as a card <laughs> protector <laughs> everywhere he goes. Clearly a dreamy spot, these two aces. And the thing is, Ren Lin might be just priced in to call off given how shallow he is. Oh. Gonna save Yuri, as there's already a three bet in front of him. But he might have been enticed if Renlin didn't pick up a hand to play back at. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's hold that eight deuce off. Even worse, right? Because King somehow threw out. Is it 1.6? Yeah. Is it 1.6? 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 Is knows he's in rough shape, but nothing he can do. Priced in. Has to make the call and 
九十个。Well, Randy, just to give the viewers out there an idea of how tightly packed it is. If Igor can win this here, he goes from eleventh in chips up to fifth. Things looking bleak for the king, queen of diamonds. Diamonds will be his best hope. Dead on the turn. Huge double and then some. For Yashevsky just seems to get it done in these 25k GG millions live editions. Okay, fourth in Cyprus, as I mentioned not too long ago. Now in fantastic shape. Go back to back FTs in this very event. Yeah. Do you want to offer sympathy, Randy, entertaining, you know, those kind of exchanges that we just witnessed you? Do you just hit him with the, uh, yeah, you know, tough spot? You know, we've all been there kind of thing. Or are you not that chatty? No, no, I just keep it to myself. It's like, you're just like, don't ever talk to me again. To <laughs> yeah, so. Like, you know, buddy, I just lost like half my stack. It's like, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Love it. No, I mean, just depends, of course. Yeah. Who throws the ace eight? Depends if you're stuck or not. <laughs> depends if you're stuck. If you're stuck, then you're never talking. <laughs> Putra's had quite the couple of orbits. Look at the Triton Poker Plus app. You can scan back through all of the hands, all of the history of these players, all the pivotal moments throughout the day. So they've worked their way down to the final 14 here. Record breaking field in Monte Carlo, no less. Feels like a fitting place. To smash a record, Randy. High class, high stakes. The finer things in life, 50 euro cheeseburgers, you know. Paid 10 euros for a cappuccino yesterday. Did you? Just another deep run for Webster. I feel like we just saw him deep in yesterday's event. Let's take a look. Yeah, he cashed 15th in the 50k the other day and 11th in the 30k. Yeah, Not able to get that bars. final table just right. yet, but at least he's put himself in that position, doing well in this one. Yeah, I mean, that crew, uh, Catley, Webster, Soyser, Danny Tang, it's just insane what they've achieved as a collective, as a clique. You know, so often outside of Triton, you hear the German crew brought up, the Germans and the Austrians. You hear certain parts of the Vegas crew, the American crew, but that click seems to get slept on outside of Triton, and they keep showing up here and saying, hang on a minute, you know, no, we can also get it done. Sleep on us all you want because we're just going to be collecting the paychecks and the titles. I mean, look at Danny. 10 million this year. Soyser, millions. Webster, Kiat, millions. Look at Jan Zarens taking the spot off Ace-9. 875,000. Certainly will. Oh, he runs into the Ace King right behind for Hing Ying Chow. Tournament poker. 
So brutal at times, Randy. Chow did announce himself. Don't forget he had one nine one down. One foot out the door against Aaron's just an orbit ago. Now has Jans with one foot out the door with five to come. Diamonds and clubs working for Graf Dekel. Looking for his second title. Looking bad for Jans Aarons. Eight high flop. Tough ask. Until the five of diamonds present itself on the turn. You see Jans kind of, you know, will take it. Nine or seven needed. Doesn't find it, Randy. And with that, we are going to lose the last of the GG online qualifiers. Jans Aarons who won a package into this very event over on GG Poker. It's a nice little ROI there for the online legend. Going home with $69,000, which you know, graphical, known as being a bit of a meme lord, loves the memes, cashing for 69000 bit of a meme number. You know, perhaps... I, I think he would have preferred staying in the tournament, but I see where your head's at. I mean, hopefully... He just appreciates the meme. Well, how about Hing Yang Chow? And doesn't play professionally. Plays a few events at random spots. Actually showed up back in Montenegro in 2018 to play a single short deck event, but actually has one title. And do you know what's in? Pot Limit Omaha. Is it? Wow, yes, let's it go. is. Let's go. Well, perhaps he can snag a title here in No Limit Hold'em as he finds himself at the top of the chip counts at table one. I mean, this last two, three orbits has really summarized tournament poker for us. Chow, who is, you know, now chip leader, was one card <laughs> away from elimination. And you know, fast forward a couple of orbits, he's dispatched of Graf Tekel, and he's now sat second in chips with 13 left and a million up top. Should be Serza Jesus' time to shine and try to take some chips from the blinds. He's down to 675,000. Oh, and Chow picks up ace nine right behind. And the thing is, normally it's not the type of hand you are looking to get in with someone, but when they're just playing a 675k stack, now it starts to be quite enticing. It looks like he's throwing those chips in there to make that call. Wow, Chow is just on a Path to victory here. Two pips up. Happy to take the spot. Chop, chop. If he can hold here, we'll move up into pole position with 12 left. Shout out to Sirzat, by the way, rocking the UFC gear. Loves MMA. Some opportunities. He'll take the two high cards for sure. Oh, seven. Seven is good as well. Deuce or a six for a chop. Seven for the win. Deuce, six, seven. Doesn't find it, Randy. A deep run in this record-breaking 25K forces that, but that one going to leave a bit of a bitter taste coming so close to that final table but ultimately coming up short but love to see Sirzat back at the Triumph feature table in his second series picking up 76,000 oh, Ren efforts. Lin now in a great spot as he's swapped the set three ways in Ding Biao betting top pair inside straight draw 
two flush Oi. rolls out there. Ren just says run it. This is annoying. Just because when Renlin check raise all in against multiple opponents, it's even stronger. And Ding Biao doesn't have a kicker, as we can see. Does have a draw of his own, though. Yeah, is live. Looking for a five. Ren Lin would have much rather seen an ace king, ace queen drawing dead. Still in great shape. Still in great shape. As he doubles up on the Seven of Hearts <laughs> River and Ren Lin is back to 3.5 million. Good for 23 bigs. Now does he fall huh? to final table, as he says? <laughs> He's just gone from shortest stack to eighth on the leaderboard. Short stack duty is now belonging to Bogdanov and Frederick. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I it's not sunglasses, it's not <laughs> Don't kill everybody. Looks like is gonna get moved to a different table. Hopefully he gets better luck over there. Up to the main stage goes Julian Bogdanov, part of the Bulgarian posse. A lot of Bulgarians here to stop, and they've been doing well. There's quite a few people in town that have specifically shown up for the PLO, Randy. That 30k pot limit Omaha bounty with 74 entries. That has to be a record of sorts in I a PLO event. I mean, it holy. probably is. I wouldn't be surprised. And you can still register. That's insane. 74 runners in the 30k. Your chef's going to try to take another free flop from the small, but putra has got that ace-10 suited, a hand that he can actually raise call it off if he wants to. Should probably go at least 3x, maybe 3.5. <sighs> Is it Ping Ma showing it? Nah, face down. Ping Gun Ping Gun, I think you should be able had the pleasure of calling the action on Putra when he was involved in the million dollar cash game. Played a big part against Rob Young. I've watched Putra play quite a bit in cash games and tournament, and he's actually quite good. He's very solid. He chooses spots really well. Doesn't get too crazy, and then when he makes a play, it often works just because he's got that solid image. For someone who doesn't play professionally, I'm quite impressed. <laughs> every time, every time he's at the beach table. Trouble for Paul as he flops top pair, but out kicked by Yuri. And it's a great spot for Yuri to try to get multiple streets against this Queen 9. Yeah, Boss, who hasn't really set a foot wrong How much do you have behind? since Randy and I joined uh, 
the equation. 2.6. Yeah, thank you. 2.7. Uh, heroic bluff through. He's made this interesting with a min bat, where Paul is probably tempted to check raise. We know that would give him a lot of trouble. Good for him for just calling, not being tempted. Still time for money to find his way into the middle. Perhaps not on that turn card as front door flush does now get there. Paul thinking about putting in the lead. He should have more five X's in his range and could maybe deny some random equity. Feels like Yuri might be a bit worried about this run out so far, although his hand's a bit vulnerable. It's tricky though, let's just say sometimes you bet and then the big one has like a king jack off of the king of spades and they just rip it in on you and that's awful. And how did he hit two pairs all of a sudden? Nine of hearts, corner pocket. Boss is going to regain the chip lead here. Question is, is it only going to be a 1.1 million chip pot? Or is he going to be able to extract more value? Definitely want to try and get paid off by a worse queen. It's a little bit difficult to represent bluffs in his spot. Go small. Yeah, I think that's pot. why. Feels like an impossible fold for Yuri. Especially with the kicker he's got, right? In case your opponent's got a worse kicker who's just trying to block bet, you really just can't lay this one down and those ships are gone. Three pair. Three pair, good. Signs of a true professional there from Yuri just Nodding, not making a big meal out of it. You know, oh, look how you three outed me. No theatrics or anything like that. Just nodding. I would have sh sh shown him. You got lucky, boss. That's why you're in here. <laughs> <laughs> Yuri's out there. Because <laughs> I would have done the same, Randy. I'm petty like that. 100%. Ciao, rocking the poker dream. Thank you. Goody, shout out Winfred you big supporter of the Triton series and someone else. Jacob, if you haven't heard of him. Jacob and Co, a huge supporter of the Triton Super High Roller Series, our official timekeeper. In fact, we've been awarding special collaboration timepieces that have been won by many since Madrid of last year. Chidwick. Hecklin, Ter Seibinger, Timothy Adams, Jason Kuhn, all picking up a timepiece. And it's their Astronomia Casino piece that I've got my eyes on, Randy. One day, I'm telling you, functioning roulette wheel. So, Canapong <laughs> taking bets at the table. How, do you, how do you spin? Do you just like flick the wrist or what? I, I think there's like a... There's like a, a pulley like a system? Like a, yeah, like a slot machine? Okay. But you're taking like 1k bets where the upside is you win 1k, the downside is you lose, I don't know what the odds are, like 35 to 1 or something? <laughs> how rich. It's like, yo. Reshove spot for Henrik Hecklin. Should expect Chow to raise pretty wide from the cutoff with this big stack. One. It's going to be a little tough for Hing Ying Chow just because... Oh, he just has Ace-9 offsuit. Oh, an Ace-9 offsuit in the big. Who has a micro stack? Shades on. 
Is it go time? I actually think this is tricky, too, because Henrik can easily shove worse aces in the spot. And he would be dominating against those. Obviously, all the pocket pairs on the nines will also shove. Then again, bigger aces also shove. So what do you do here? Yeah, Frederick knows it. And he also has to worry about Hing Yang Chao waking up a hand. Because if he calls behind, usually he's in very rough shape. Possibly dominated multi-ways. Let's get out of there. I think it's 1975. Ping Yang Chao asking for a count. I could see him making the crying call in this spot just because his kicker is pretty decent. No means he'll love it, but he can definitely afford it. Well, for all the reasons that you mentioned as well, Randy. Uh, leveling of sorts. He knows that Hecklin knows he's meant to be opening wide. He actually has a strong holding. Ace nine out in front, 60 40. He's Four been hot second lately. in chips. He really has. Dispatching of Graf Deckel, Jan Zarens in 13th. Now looking to dispatch of the Madrid main event champ, Henrik Hecklin. As it comes, ace high, even has clubs covered, Randy. This is probably the end of Henrik Hecklin. Chow has learned and some of the Malaysian contingent on his rail as he locks up 100% equity on the turn. Eliminating the Great Dane. In 12th, yeah. Hecklin going to be bowing out, going home with 76,000 for his efforts. And with that, everyone now guaranteed 85K. 11 remain here, two off the final table of this record breaking field in Monte Carlo. And with that pot, should regain the chip lead. And this is his very first event here in Monte Carlo, the 25K GG millions for Hing Yang Chao. Yeah, 9.3 million. Dommage. Dommage. He's cruising. No, but if I pay, he says he fold. Voilà. Ace nine. Joined us for the first time in Montenegro 2018, no, no. as Randy mentioned. No, it's okay. No, no, it's Followed good. up huh? by Jay Ju the same year. Two final tables there. First, only title coming in the 200k HKD PLO event in Montenegro 2019. Haven't seen him since Vietnam earlier on this year. Great to have him back in the mix. A pole position, Malaysia in one and two. Chow and Boss Paul out in front with 11 left, a million dollars for first. It's okay. He's grinding up to 8.1. to just one big. Not too sure what happened, to be honest with you, as the hand hasn't been logged in the Triton Poker Plus app. I'm trying to figure pain. out you have 18 who it was against. You have 18 pros. <laughs> Couple fours for Ding Gao, sitting on 15 to 16 blinds. Gonna try to get in there. An average stack is only 21 bigs. Now Putra's got a7 of clubs in the big. Definitely a spot where default is probably to oh, just boy. flick in a call. 
which he is going to do that just that. Estrutura aperta demais esse final, né? JNT, sorry. Vamos lá, torce para umas cartas aí. JNT on the rail. Oh, that sounds of things. Isso é bom também. Bem o Onitsuka. Onitsuka. We can see that equity is actually quite close on this flop with Putra's back doors as well as counterfeiting turns that could arrive. <laughs> Four is clean. Full health for Ding Biao. And this could be trouble for Putra because he picks up that inside straight draw. Maybe he thinks his opponent's got a better ace high that he can kind of attack. But even if he checks, he might even call one off. One point one out there. Does he want to go for a little probe here? I mean, in the big blind, has equity. How good is this Obviously for Ding Biao? He thinks he has equity. Just seeing your opponent reach for chips. Such unfortunate timing. <laughs> for Ferdinand. This black chip no good, huh? Let's change color. You don't really want to raise here just in case your opponent's on a weak draw. You can't really handle the heat. That bomb man. Mm. 2.2 in the middle. Apologies for the slight graphical error. We even heard boss say, we're going to change the color of the chips to make sure it doesn't happen. Queen of Diamonds does hey, now present an opportunity yeah. for Putra <laughs> to get away from this bluff that he tried <laughs> setting up. No <laughs> diamond in hand. <laughs> But then he also knows that A7 never wins. If he's putting his opponent on like an A side, or very weak pair, he might take the shot at it. It would help to have the diamond like you mentioned. Does give up. Good for him because we know he would never see chips if he drops them in. <laughs> Surely just ask for all of it, Randy. Wants to go polar here, right? It kind of depends on what you put your opponent on. It's actually quite hard for even an 8x to hero call you on this board. 6x might still fall through for river bet. A flush as well. It, it kind of seems like Putra has got an 8 at best, usually. Well, he is going to slide and hope for the best. Hands over. <laughs> I love how Dig gave a little bit of a stare down, but then sheepishly looked back down at the table, not wanted to give anything away. Pick up there. 4.5 million. The lapana. <laughs> and to apologize, the graphics were off. Bogdan off. That's ten bits. Hold on. 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 Got 11 left in this record breaking field. A lot of people. Looking for a title. Also trying to get unstuck, right? Like we mentioned. <laughs> but for some, it's just their very first event, like Hing Yang Chow. So just trying to get as much winnings as he can get. And there's a look at the chip counts. Look at Paul, 8 million. But that's only a second place stack. It is. 
21 big blinds is the average. It's Hing Yang Chow out in front. Malaysia currently sat one and two. Boss Paul in second. Shorts that duty is belonging to Frederick, Yuri, and Bogdanov. Multiple people looking for their first title. Ben Heath. Yuri looking to take this one down. Jamming his suited ace and immediately gets asked for a count. Ren Lin's got the superpower to attack. Do you think that's a bit of a tell there, Randy? Just like asking that quickly. <coughs> but technically it doesn't really matter because no? okay. him putting shit in whether he asked that question or not is going to look pretty strong to the remaining players. It's not like Ren Lin wants extra action from another player. <coughs> oh, and now we have a real decision of two nines with the ahead against these two hands. Wait a sec, he wants extra action. Does Putra want to give it? That's a big lay down. That's a big fold. Putra is sat in eighth at the start of his hand. Lin in fantastic shape here. No. To eliminate. Yuri Zivilevsky, widely regarded as one of the best in the modern game as it comes ace-queen nine and he's out of there. Yuri Drurik to running aces to chop. Running ace-queen, sorry. What a gentleman. <laughs> Always. Always a gem. Here's Yuri Zivilevsky. That's a tough one. Tough pill to swallow around here because you mentioned there's a few people out there looking to get even on the series. Yuri was definitely one of them. 0 for 7 in the opening events. Picking up 85,000 oh, for These two nines aren't bending it and it's trouble though because right behind Julian Bogdanov wakes up with Queens. It's one of the short stacks. You saw Heath just perk up. What? You said all in, not Webster? Well, Jaffe made a great point when he was in the booth with Ali. Just at how stoic Heath is. He's one of those players that once he's made his decision, this spot now out of his control, Randy. Knows that it's part of the game. It's part of what he signed up for when he became a professional poker player. You've got to give him credit for just focusing on the task ahead rather than these uncontrollable variables. Not that he's not interested, by the way. So he would love nothing more to crack these queens. And now just trying to one out. The Ace of Diamonds completes the run out and Julian Bogdanov with a huge double up and then some. Ben Heath's going to drop down to the middle of the pack. The Bulgarians just seem so consistent here in Monte Carlo. Nothing Ben could have done there with the nines. No, he played the hand as good as he can, you know. What's he going to do? The big line just wakes up a hand, one player to act behind him. Often would have just took it down pre. I'm dead. So it sounds like this. waiting for the other table to catch up, which we're going to head on over to. <laughs> <laughs> <你有意義給我拿到那部牌我去了。笑> 
Only aces. Only aces are that? Okay. 100% if I got aces power, cool. Okay. That's brilliant. Okay. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, at least he had a reasonable hand to say that comment fall to final table this time. Pocket Deuce is in the muck. And now Paul in the small of the Jack-10 suited. He's played a lot with Ferdinand Putra. Remain powerless here. That's Randy mentioned so much history between these two. It's never comfortable, especially on a final table bubble with a million up top to play against someone who perhaps has had your number on more than one occasion over the years. Right. Sometimes level yourself into thinking, hang on, this guy has my number, knows how to get the better of me. Ferdinand checked back that flop very fast. A little bit more time on the turn. Well, now does Paul want to maybe take a up. shot? Feels like... It feels like you're up against Ace High a lot. Precisely. And you should have heard from a King X by the turn just because the wheel draw start to be present. Ace Queen, Ace Jack. Yeah, I like that he's reaching for chips. What intuition. Mandatory. Putra with kicker problems as well. Never thought that Paul was perhaps bluffing with an ace, bluffing with the best hand. I was trying to Oh, two yo, those he dial on. I still pick up there. I can tell you before I read. Just said in Mandarin. Go, 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 tell me. I would have turned a set, he said. Said, can't believe it. I tried folding down to the final table and I would have turned a set. You probably are right. No, I speak. What? Well, I mean, Jake, Jake, yeah, but I think I think you're actually right. <laughs> That's <laughs> the <laughs> thing. It's six up. You're smart. Oh, Thank you. Right. It's not my first language. No, no, I, I know. Shop, it's not my second. But that one you knew. It's not even my 15th. But your 16th. Oh, yes. Final table bubble, 187 runners in this one. You just don't get turnouts like this in a 25k outside of the WSOP. Chow leading the pack over here as Malaysia looks to convert here in Monte Carlo, something haven't been able to do just yet. Saving it for the back end of the series. Three of the final 10 players from Malaysia. Final table bubble is always very tense, isn't it? Here comes Ace-5 suited for Webster Lim. Webster with two titles of his own, looking for title number three. He's a grinder. Chip leader of the Queen Jack, gonna give him some action. Excellent board for Webster. Sure, it doesn't give him that much of a piece, but does have that backdoor potential. But more importantly, it's just such an unconnected board. Your opponent usually just gonna check fold. He's going to play cautious, and I believe the reason is it's hard for him to represent something, and his opponent has so many chips where he might just throw out a check raise, thinking that you can't really float him. It'd be tempting to bet now, though. Although you do see a lot more passive line from the middling stacks this deep in the tournament. Precisely that showcased here from Lim and Chow seems content in trying to get this queen high to showdown. Yeah, and also 
it's he's not really supposed to bet on the king. That's the card that hits the preflop razor more. Ace high is good. Nice little pick up there. Easy. For Lim. Moves up to fifth in chips. Do apologize, moves up to fourth in chips. That's how tight it is out there. Couple of runaway chip leaders in Chow and Boss Paul Pua. But shaping up to be one of those FTs, kind of similar to yesterday's where it feels like it's anyone's game. There's there's no one in clear control. There's no one with an overwhelming chip lead. Everyone just kind of waiting for the shorter stacks to make a move. Putra on 12 bigs, Frederick on eight. Yes, Frederick, 10-4 clubs in the muck. Maybe this Jack-10 suited wants to get in there. He's sitting on a reasonably healthy 20 big blind stack. Gonna try to pressure the big blind of Webster. Oh, maybe this hand is gonna put the pressure actually. Ace Queen suited right behind. I kinda like just three bet jam rather than three bet small because Ace Queen suited is just a powerhouse. It's not really a hand you're looking to induce right now on final table bubble. But he actually is gonna go kinda small. I wonder if it's intention to call off if he gets jammed on or not. Maybe we're going to find out, Randy. And Jack-10 suited is a... It's a pretty hand, isn't it? Especially against the small size. But you're out of position. High ICM pressure. It's a good candidate to do it with. Especially cut off the button. Heath currently sitting in 7th. Bogdanov in 6th. It doesn't look like he wants to get involved. That's part of me, Randy, that... Wanted to see a flop there. <laughs> yes, but, you know, as tempting as it may seem, you really just have to respect your stack and conserve it because it gives you more opportunities. The big pay jumps are when you get to the final table, just one away. And I think Ben Heath knows it best that he shouldn't be playing speculative spots, especially out of position right now. There's also a good chance that Frederick Delval is going to get it in soon, right? He's sitting on eight bigs. We're playing five and five-handed. He's about to be in the big blind as well. This very hand forced to put in 25% of his stack. Might be an opportunity for Yulian Bogdanov to lean in the cutoff as he's getting quite healthy with this five million chip stack. Chow gets out of the way. Green light. For Boggy. Gonna pick up the blinds in the big blind ante. Bogdanov on the climb. Woke up with the Queens, managed to hold against Ben Heath's pocket nines, and ever since then. Picking up a couple of back to back hands. Climbing up to third in chips overall. Does have the tournament chip leader. On his direct left to worry about. Bulgarian. Coming out to a Triton Series for the first time. Played five events here already. Been a bit of a rough trip, Randy. 0 for 5 so far. Played the 125k main, 25k turbo, 30k, 40k mystery bounty and the 50k. Never easy at a Triton series. In for 270,000 on the trip. Would love nothing more than to. Here comes Webster, pocket jacks. Find the trip saver. As you mentioned, jacks for limb. Frederick with a king. How do we feel? Short stack he announces himself. Has to go with it. Oh. Snap call from Webster. We do have to wait. Is that king or no? <laughs> <laughs> he saw just a single king. 
I love the honesty from Frederick. He could have slow rolled him a bit, like Ike Haxton did with Danny Tang last night. <laughs> Do have to wait for this hand over here to play out and finish. And of course, we will head back over to the outer table as we're hand for hand on the final table bubble. It's a good board to see bet for Ding Biao, but the problem is Paul's actually picked up an inside straight draw if his ace high, so he's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, perhaps. Path to victory, perhaps, for Paul. Whether it be in the form of turning a will, which he does not. It's a great card for Ding Biao because, well, a7 kicker will play very often if it does check down. Do you think this hand is going to check down? I, I think so. A lot of times just because Paul has the ace high that beats all the, the worst high card hands. It would be very difficult for Ding Biao to fire twice. Well, no Especially chop. on the deuce. No chop, as Randy mentioned. That's six of clubs on the turn. Ding with the check mark. What does Boss want to do? 1.7 out there, ace high. I think he should be happy to check this one down. Betting is to bet out exactly better ace highs, which is a decent part of Ding Biao's range. He's thinking about it. He's wondering, do I have enough showdown value? Do I need to just take a shot now? And to be fair, King X probably bets the turn a lot, so maybe he can get some baby pairs out sometimes too. It does feel like when Ding checks back on the turn, weighted towards those kind of weakish showdown holdings, such as these. Ops to check it on over. Great for Ding Biao. Yeah. Kicker. Aya. Aya. <laughs> Should bet. For Ding. A pass is boss. Confirmation bias, perhaps. This guy Should have fired out that. Not if you're a Ding Biao fan, as he chips up nicely, back up to around 5 million now. As we're going to head back over to so table one. It's Frederick Deval, part of JNT's entourage, always showing up to support JNT as they travel around the world playing poker together. Showing that he knows how to get it done himself. That's Jack in the window. Brutal. Oh. We need running straight to stay in here for Deval. Jack of Diamonds window card. There is still hope, but not much. As the Frenchman does. I see it. Find Sweet. hope, Sweet. Randy. <laughs> Queen or a seven needed for Frederick to double up here. Doesn't find it. Three hearts on the river as Webster acknowledges the GG's for Frederick Deval. Picks up a nice little pot to go along with it as Webster Lim up to 5.7, moving up to third in chips, heading into this final table of this record breaking 25K. 187 runners in this one, Randy. Yeah, but good game to Frederick, right? Good friends of JNT, doesn't play that much poker. His second event finally cashed in here. Second ever he's ever played at Triton, so good on him for someone who plays for fun. 85k going Frederick's way with that departure means that we are down to the final table of the last Hold'em event this series here in Monte Carlo. $100,000 guaranteed for these final nine. With all eyes on that top prize of what we're calling a trip saver, Randy. Million dollars up top in this one. <laughs> yes, it's a lot up there. And, uh, you know, we do have a quite a different crew for this final table. Six players reigning from Asia. Um, we do have 
a Ukrainian, a Brit, as well as a Bulgarian at this final table. Well, screenshot the Triton Poker Plus app, ladies and gentlemen, because the Malaysian contingent, not just in pole position, but sitting one, two, two three. and three. Webster Lim looking for title number three. We know that Boss Paul would love nothing more than to tie Triton co-founder Richard Young on two titles apiece because we know there's, there's more than just money here, Randy. There's some bragging rights involved. Of course. And of course, Hing Yang Chow out in pole position when we return. We do have a 30-minute dinner break for the players. going to be taking a bit of time to just mentally reset, grab some food, grab some fresh air before jumping into this final table. So for the viewers around the world, don't go too far. In 30 minutes when we return, we'll be crowning a champion here today in Monte Carlo. And said champion will be going home with $1 million. We'll see you in 30 minutes' time. GG Poker Why the world so record. many players This is a crazy thing to do GG Poker Broke the Guinness World Record Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker, poker song. The biggest event. poker song It's larger than all of GG Poker Why? Traffic reaches all time high Jump, 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 jump No <laughs> way Jump, 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 jump Jump, jump, jump Jump, jump, Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. himself a bit of a nemesis in Webster Lim from the big pot they played earlier and now aces. Yeah, speaks up. Three betting to 180,000 in black jacks for Theologius. This is problematic. Yeah. It's, it's the fact that the three bets coming in from the button out of Webster who's got some depth to him now. Granted Greenwood up front, Maria, but the jacks could get real tempted, couldn't they? Yeah, especially because Greenwood will have some raised folds from under the gun plus one off of 14 bigs. So, you know, it doesn't mean that Lim can't be targeting that part 
of Greenwood's range with this three bet. Doesn't have to be as strong as aces. You know, sometimes we'll see, you know, something like a suited ace, a small, you know, ace three, ace four, ace five do this against an early position open off of a shorter stack. So Theolo just can't blame him, but just ill-timed 20 bigs, nowhere to go with Jax. His jam for 785,000. Dishearteningly snapped as Greenwood gets out of the way. And more of that two outer business is gonna be needed. You just saw for James Chen this time it's pre-flop for Theologis and he can't find a jack on a queen eight deuce board. Perhaps a path to a gutter. <laughs> I don't control the turn. I just know what's possible. And now all of a sudden, six outs in total for Alex. Ten or a jack needed. But it's just the five of clubs that innocently rolls for that matter. The ability to come in here and sit and play, not just for these stakes, but alongside people who you've been watching mm -hmm. and fanboying or fangirling. Yeah. For a long, long time. And Webster will be a big fan of this, Pocket Aces. You remember the first time you played pots against players that you had only heard of, you know, watched on TV. You're like, am I really here? Mm -hmm. Did I just really bluff that guy or girl? You're like, my goodness. And it's so easy to psych yourself out, too, when you... Oh. Yeah. Put a pin in that. Is it is so easy to think that Webster opening on the button presents an opportunity for you to ship it with an A7 suited, as we see Vaitiekunas do here. But unfortunately for him, he gets shown the aces after the snap. Queen, eight, six. Could be some straight prospects for Paulius on the turn. And there's one, the four, as he goes from drawing dead to drawing live. Better than nothing, but a five still needed. And not available. A wrap at the table as we lose Paulius. And Webster. I have 100 back. Pocket tens here for Webster after Sam commits the bulk of his chips. The remainder get requested. Well, it does appear that Lim and Greenwood were destined to do battle today. And Lim so far have been getting the best of Greenwood. Sam can do nothing but call as the commitment had been made. And now let's see if he can bounce off of the low water mark on the day. Has the two overs against the tens. Webster has been running well, though. Blemish free has been the outing for Lim thus far. Quite the inverse for Sam. Ace King four, though. That'll put Sam comfortably in front. Comfort remains, courtesy of the six, and just got a fade of 10 here. Mission accomplished. Greenwood rips the queen 10 suited from the small. And Ivy, king seven, deemed adequate. Better than the seven five before it. Just 4% though, the advantage for Phil. And I don't need to ask you, Maria, what the chat's rooting for here. 
780 in the middle. No slight to Greenwood, of course, but Phil's just given poker fans so many memories through the years, and they want more. But the Queen-10-8 board doesn't rate to give it to them. Top two for Sam. Ivy reaching for the mic early for the time being. It's with good reason. Turn, though, and yeah. that seven dangler suddenly turning into a gut shot straight draw. Four outs for Phil. And the deuce of spades is not going to get it done as we have another casualty. Flop brings us to this turn. Unimproved is king nine. Checking once more and now facing the upsized 600 into 530 and overbet from the Brazilian. Yeah, I think it's an awesome bet. I think this is something that you find a lot from the best players in the world that might be lacking at one or two levels below, which is taking a really good hand that's nowhere near the nuts and putting in so much money for value. I think a lot of people, they look at their hand strength, they say, maybe this is worth two thirds pot, but Yuri understands how many bluffs he's gonna have here how much Jan has to be calling, not just with a king, and he's gonna you know, really try and maximize his value from 8x of hearts or um, you know, some of these like ace-10 of hearts type hands in addition to the queen-x hands he has to call. And then of course the hand that Jan has where it's like pretty near impossible to get away from. And you do see Schwippert's not getting away from it as the call of 600 places another 1.2 into the middle, a third and final check from the German. And let's see, in spite of the fact that he has already bombed the turn with the overbet, will Zivilevsky bring the Gordon Gecko on the end with a little bit of greed is good? <laughs> Safe river, it would seem like the opportunity is there. Right. Sure, I think, uh, well, Jams. now we've seen it. And now, the blender setting is certainly not on the mix side, but touch more toward ice crush yeah. for Schwipperts. Incredibly difficult to fold the king here when, you know, just everything missed. There's not, you know, what did Yuri hit? Pocket fours. So you had to have had it beforehand. And it is precisely that everything missed aspect that presents this terrific situation for Yuri to polarize, make the hand look light mm -hmm. and desperate. Feels like it could be worthy of a few time banks, doesn't it? Definitely. I mean, it's first tournament life. I think it would be a heck of a fold, but uh, uh, I would call. And he agrees. So Schwipperts does call it off there. Those that have been. All in the call. 3.6 million chip pot. Heath, crucial pot. A safe flop. Pair of tens. Can't help but think Bruno's jacket's still taking center stage. It is. There's no question about it. It looks like a 1964 Porsche died and went to heaven and then was reincarnated with a zipper. That was a rare rookie mistake from Ben. He pushed his stack forward on the king turn. It's true he couldn't lose, but hands from the other tables. I'm using the app to maximize, but uh, the vast majority of the time I'm saying, hey, when I'm at the table, I'm not going to see what happens in this hand uh, very often, and if I do, I can check the app. The app is phenomenal mm. when you're playing a Triton. It's just a complete game changer. So I think there's a lot of stuff to pay attention to in the rest of the room, and personally, I just need to get up and stretch and move around a lot. Free snacks everywhere. It's amazing. <laughs> Sorry, what came after paying attention? <laughs> well, it was obviously something that you're not doing, which I was <laughs> speculating could be entertaining hypotheticals about wishing a different line had been taken, uh, like we just talked about, just to see how mm -hmm. people would have responded, as the response here seems to be predictable. Ace-King in the big blind for Paul, who just got to showdown with those two tens and now faces an open from O'Dwyer. Just piles it in. Yep. O'Dwyer. 
does work his way forward and gets shown the bad news. The so are we going to see a superstition here, or you think it's all between the ears? I don't know. I don't see any trinkets okay. for Shaman O'Dwyer at present. See if we can get another shot of him, perhaps. Going to need a lot of help in this 3.7, 1 million chip pot. Jack 10-7 is a form of it, as he does pick up the king for a gutter. Uh, look at that little finger thing feels kind of superstitious. That might be something. It's kind of claw on the table. And unable to claw in the needed king, but some chop opportunities. Wrapping his fingers on the table once more, but the three of spades will lead to the demise. Fairly uneventful. You can understand why Mario would dig in with the A7 suited, but it will lead to his departure in 22nd as he collects another one of those $50,600 payouts. And we flip it back over to the feature where we find Henrik Hecklin hijack ace deuce suited. Raising to 200. Hisu will defend for the men. King 9 8 board. Perilous are both players. Five fifty in the middle, Hecklin thinking it over. Gonna play it as a check back. Check back monster continues. Now a beautiful turn for Hisu. Picks up the open ender. Just because we're facing a check back from an opener pre out of the hijack doesn't mean that we can suddenly feel comfortable barreling at this, though. Mm. Hisu agrees. I was a little surprised with the defend uh, against the hijack open here. We are a little decently. too light, jack six. Uh, we're decently into the money. You know, I think you can make arguments both ways. Well, no argument now. After a second check back from the ace high, this board is as ugly as it gets. Question is, does Hisu call Hecklin's bet? Because Henrik's going to be firing. But first, we need the check. Standing by with the four-liner on board, and obviously the sense that there's a decent number of Queen X combos in Henrik's range as played. Hisu does find the check. And now, Will Hecklin find the aforementioned bet? He certainly expects that Hisu would get busy betting a straight of his own here. Yeah, I would expect uh, a fair number of bets from Hisu on the river if he did have a queen. Even maybe a nice small bet from a seven. Tough spot. You're trying to figure out what did Henrik check all this way to want to bluff at this point. Mid to low pocket pair, somehow an A6 or lower, of which would almost certainly need to be suited. Um, it's a really tough call to make. You know, you can make the case that that six blocks a couple of bluffs and pocket sixes and A6 suited. Um, you know, you, maybe you'd slightly prefer having something like uh, Jack 2 suited, as Henrik might not open pocket twos, but that's really digging into the details. Hey, what a call. Finds it. And strangely enough, in situations like that where it can feel tempting if you're in Hecklin's seat to regard this as disrespect, it mm. actually is a function of some respect. Sevens sure. awaited them. Understandable. Cut off. Off what now? Biggest stack in the room. Overall chip leader, Zivilevsky, has slipped mm. to second. Just north of the min, the open sizing. Adam suited ace right behind Paul. Now I know that the ace five suited specifically is the one that tends to yeah. bring the three bets with great frequency. Is the ace six a candidate as well? Button versus cutoff, as you see Tim do here. It's uh, You're less concerned with what card is accompanying your ace as much as you're just like, wow, I've got a suited ace and nine big blinds. 
chip leader opening on my right. And, you know, I say chip leader in an encouraging manner in that that means Paul has a lot of opens, not that, oh, he gets to call with everything. Right. But with sevens, he does get to call, sure. and you can see some concern on Adam's face as yeah. a wider range than that should have been mm -hmm. a part of the equation. Unfortunately, not on this occasion as Paul's got it. Yeah, you saw Tim glance upwards to see, am I on a payout bubble? Should I use some time banks here to potentially uh, scrape out an extra couple grand? But uh, certainly with the quick call, they must not be close to a payout move. To the flop we go. And how about that for Tim Adams? He's up against a set, but still so many paths to a victory. Yeah. That's not one. Now, a chop <laughs> available to him as well. Nine hearts falling off the board as an out. And the Jack of Clubs on the river. A disappointing run out for Adams. And that, unfortunately, reversible bucket hat. And we've seen Richard Young rock that. I believe Dan Smith also owns that, the bucket hat. Baseball cap, one hoodie. And one t-shirt. Now, we do have a range of hoodies. Unclear which one we're going to be giving away. I certainly have my personal faves, but... They're all pretty quality. Very much so. Not exactly top quality. The king eight and the queen nine. Nevertheless, Arends from the button opens. Webster defends. Ace, jack, ten. Interactions for both. Webster, two-way straight draw, knuckles over. Jans wants to tell a story. Interesting decision for Webster here. I mean, and you can see him going either way as far as your bluffs go. It's, uh, it's tough to find many more appealing hands than this one. But at the same time, you see ace-jack-10, and you're kind of struggling to say, what story am I telling for value? Three of spades on the turn as Webster does play it as a flat. Both players picking up the flush draw. Advantage Webster in that department. With 9-10 in the middle, he checks once more. Jans is going to be uh, folding a lot of the low suited spades preflop here. So flush advantage, maybe uh, more Webster, who's got some hands like 7-4 of spades that we'd see Jans fold on the button. 325. Yeah. I think we're going to see Webster pull the trigger. I think he's just got the combo. And he's going to put it in Jans' face. It does present a real problem, even for the one pair ace holdings to face a stuffing. Pretty fun spot to muscle up. Oh boy. Wow. Yeah, okay. we're in the money. It's the nine high flush draw. We can be drawing dead very easily. 18 left, current payout. 55,400. We do have another jump on our hands of roughly 7,000 if you can slide into the top 17. Benitez. This time an opener with King Queen suited and Ding Biao. Ace 10 suited off of, let's call it 16, 17 blinds. I think we're going to see a 30 big blind flip. Yeah, there's the jam. Yaroshevsky snap folds. Benitez. Is covered. Yeah, not getting away from this one. Obviously, the disasters are the ace kings, ace queens, and then the queens on up yep. in terms of pairs, but he blocks most of that. And there is the call. 42% equity for Benitez. Things could be worse.
Top two pair for Ding Biao. But Benitez, four outs to Broadway. Five of clubs isn't going to cut it. Will he find the necessary jack or will a patient Ding Biao double? It will be the latter. Seven of diamonds on the end. And that'll be it. Triton Festival batting 500. Three for six. As we flip it back over to where King Jack and King 10 are embroiled. Jan Zarens, the covering stack against Marta Rosian. Got his man pipped with King High and fades to 10 on the end. So just like that, bang, bang. 18 becomes 17. Marta Rosian will be getting the pay jump, I believe. Greenwood jams an ace nine. And Ding Biao on the button. King 10 suited. Could be a customer. Looks like one of the weakest hands. Wow. It's going to fold. thought that might be one of the weakest you'd call. Oh. Okay, it's nine of your shit. <laughs> 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 two fives? Come on. <laughs> King 10 suited does give way. I fall three million. Pocket fives. Oh, Will force Sam game. to the roulette wheel. Four five, four five. Two. Sam's entering the bargaining stage. That's what I thought. Ace, ten, six. Not quite at acceptance. Two side, two side. Greenwood way out in front two now. Uh, yeah. No <laughs> sides yeah. on the turn and no diamond either for Ren. Is yeah. Just got to fade a two outer. Ooh. I had a Ren Lin vibe there. I thought we were seeing five. He has run rather hot on the day, but. I am going to bluff anything really. You can make the case that 8-9 bluffs better than 10-9, but they're the same thing. Could have been customer dependent and... Oh, look at us. Sibana. My guy knocking out your guy. Getting showered by Ben Heath, whose two kings went up against an ace-seven suited the way the Mr. Del Val. Oh, and the trap oh. being laid. A limp of 125,000, Heath. Ben is trying to make sense of this with such a nice looking hand. What is Frederick gonna limp in the cutoff? What does this range look like? This is not something he's gonna find in the solver. So Ben is accessing his instincts, trying to figure out what's the best course of action. Folding would seem really out of line. Finds a limp. Brigade ensues now. Heath flats the button. He sues. <laughs> Jan's with small. a little shake of his head yeah. and the brow up. <laughs> All right. Wondering what he's got himself involuntarily involved in here. A four way affair. Not exactly how you script it with the two aces. Mm. That late position limp. King 10 10 and Arens rates to be the customer. I'm going to say this is the only four-way limped pot we're going to see from 15 down. Concur. Quite a spot for Jan's here, trying to figure out what are the bluffs? What am I beating? Yeah. But can I ever fold this? It's one of those lines you just don't expect to see. An Absolutely. open limp, late position, four-way affair, paired flop, and all of a sudden... Frederick seems pretty comfortable. Delval jamming, and by the way, chatting as well. Yeah. Saying, hope you don't have a 10, I believe. Great fold by Jans. And he's going to get to see him? Yes. Wow. Julien, Julien. said, do you want to know the sickest fold I ever made? Ah, okay. But I think he maybe was implying that. Might that be in the conversation? Oh, the Queen Eight of Hearts reminds me. There's a funny story from the other day. We're so, listening. Lewis Spencer uh, was in the on the button. I'm in the cutoff as it folds to me in the cutoff. Oh, got a shove. 
Put a pin in it, just briefly. Hisu jamming over the top of this Heath Open and at another 225K, a stack of 5.4 is not gonna be going anywhere and will be behind this King Jack in a one and a half million chip pot. We'll hold Jonathan to that story eventually. Let's let this one play out though as Heath seems comfy. Cup of tea in hand but not the lead on the all-diamond texture, which removes the queen and eight of diamonds from the disaster cards. And Hisu is anti-sweating, board pairing four on the turn. All is clean and all is well. And all remains that way, as Hisu If you watch Ben and Well, I will, if anyone's a wizard in the field, it has to be Ole Shemion, just based on what he wore Ooh. yesterday. That's full shamanistic gear. I mean, like sorcery. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised That's if, black magic. if you busted him and he just held up both his arms and nothing but like aces just flew out magically into Ooh, the room. And then I'm going to say like, bats. I think bats are going to fly out. I think it's an <laughs> Alistair Crowley vibe I'm getting. Fairy dust yeah. sprinkled onto the flop and all of a sudden you were nutted and it just changes and he's nutted. In You're Vietnam, like, what? there was a fanny pack to go with it. I was convinced there were some potions in there. Oh, potion's a good word, by the yeah. way. It goes nicely with Merlin, sorcerer, wizard. Acid. Well, uh, acid. Now, acid's a whole different story, Jaffe. Let's be okay. careful. Fair enough. Ace Jack. Welcome back, where the final table is set here in Sporting Monte Carlo at our 25 million. 25K <laughs> GG millions. I'm not sure what I glitched right there. Alina Jad alongside Andrew Lucky, Chewy Lichtenberger. Perhaps his presence getting me a little bit discombobulated. Not too is often it? we get you here at the desk. You and I have been talking about an opportunity yeah. to come in and do some commentary together. The stream absolutely loves seeing you guys take the time out. Obviously, pleased to have you with us. The seat draw is what's happening right now, so we will be sending it down to play. That is a little bit of a wrinkle, by the way, in the GG Millions format. I wonder whether or not you have an opinion about the big stack being able to choose last in terms of where they want to sit, short stack being for forced to choose first. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I actually have never made a final table with this format, so I'm intrigued to see how it plays out here. Yeah, obviously advantages to be gained if you are the big stack in terms of being able to set yourself up nicely to be to the right and the left of who it is that you feel would prove for an optimal setup. Hing Yang Chow going to be that big stack, by the way, with that last choice as we dive into the Triton Poker Plus app briefly before we get down to play. He is your chip leader with 43 big blinds, 8.6 million in front of him. Ferdinand Putra going to be the shorty, under 10 big blinds. Expect him to have to make a move soon in terms of payouts. Up top, seven figures, $1 million. The on-tap payout, $100,000. $200 and not insignificant jumps in terms of 22K between 9th and 8th. Things to be pursued, obviously, by the field toward the bottom of the pack. Patience is virtue. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a pretty top heavy tournament here, so it's going to be intriguing to see if that affects players' strategies in terms of how they navigate different spots, whether they want to gamble or sort of avoid gambling a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited. All right. So then let's send it down to our own Luca Vivaldi for the player introductions as we get underway. A record-breaking event for the Triton Super Early Series. 187 entries in this 25K GG Millions Live. We're down to a final table of nine, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to them. You see number one from China with 4.8 million. Please welcome Biao Ding. Ding Biao. Hailing from China, coming in. One title, eight caches, and two and a half million in earn. You see number two with 5.7 million from Malaysia. Please put your hand together for Webster Lim. Webster hailing from see the number Malaysian three delegation. From the Ukraine with 4.3 million. Please welcome Igor Yaroshevsky. Our chip leader in scene number five from Malaysia with 8.7 million. Please put your hand together for Chao in Yang. C 
Jersey 6 from the UK with 3.2 million. Please welcome Ben Heath. Heath, 5.2 million plus in career. Triton earnings across 15 caches. One cache so far here. C number 7, 5.5 million from Bulgaria. Please welcome Julian Bogdanov. Bogdanov's first ever Triton. C number 8 first from cache. the US with 5.2 million. Please welcome Ren Lin. Ren Lin. 74,000 in Triton earnings here at his first ever stop. 7.6 million for our C9 from Malaysia. Please put your hand together for Mr. Paul Poi. Boss with a staggering 33 caches, one title, almost 17 million in career Triton earnings. Two caches so far here. Last but not least, you see number 10 from Indonesia with 1.8 million. Please welcome Ferdinand Putra. Ferdinand Putra, three caches to his name, two of them taking place here in Monaco, 466k in earnings. Hopefully as the seat swap has been completed, these are going to be our final seats. For the final table, the button has been drawn to seat number eight. We're going to play number of hands instead of time for raising the blinds. We had 15 minutes remaining on level 23, so we're going to play the last five hands on 100,000, 200,000, 200,000. The button has been drawn to seat number eight. Best of luck. Shuffle up a bit, please. Official chip counts on the screen there. Thank you, Luca, for those introductions. Don't want to overlook the fact, by the way, as I laid out a bit, Webster Lim, 5.2 million in career Triton earnings, third in chips right now, two titles. 17 caches to this point. Two of those caches coming right here in Monaco. And of course, Igor Yaroshevsky playing under the Ukrainian banner. Joining us for the second time. One cache under his belt thus far in seven attempts here in Monaco. 680,000 in career Triton earnings. Three caches in total. And Malaysia running one, two, and three here at this final table. Here we go, Chewy. All right. Ben Heath doesn't like the look of an ace five. I gather Ren quite likes the look of this king queen. You gather correctly. 450k, just north of the min, open yep. sizing. Yeah, it's an interesting spot for him. When Ferdinand has this seven big blind mm -hmm. stack, it's going to be rare if I'm at all go. in a current square, Ren One decides to play a hand for a raise that then folds to a shove. So it makes sense for him to raise a little bit bigger than the minimum, preventing Ferdinand from getting too good of a price to see a flop. And here we have our first all in. So then. Putra recognizing that the situation requires him to pick a spot and go with it from the big blind. Ace five suited. What better, especially against a button open? Does find himself in front here. Three to two favorite. Three and a half million chip pot. But the queen high board now putting Ren Lin firmly in control of this one. Just one hand in. Putra, wheel gutter. Backdoor hearts. Yeah, far from over. Okay, here it is. Flush draw sweat arriving. Sweat indeed, but still improvements that need to come through for Ferdinand to fight on here at this oh, FT. Yeah. And instead, it's top yeah. two on the end. <laughs> Good game to Ferdinand. Well fought. Absolutely. Putra, one of those that's always wearing a smile. Indeed he is. <laughs> We'll collect that roughly 100K, courtesy of the ninth place finish. But we'll leave behind eight players to do battle for $122,000. Butcher bringing his career Triton earnings up to 566,000 and change. His third consecutive cash here in Monte Carlo. Obviously heating up, unclear if we'll be seeing Putra in the four card streets. Great run though. Absolutely. Huh? 
I it always hate. feels a little bit uh, <laughs> relaxing when you're at a final table. Someone <laughs> gets knocked <laughs> out. It's like, okay, we're underway. We've laddered. Gives everyone a bit of ease. That or I should does. say, puts everyone a bit at ease. Sure. Only one big black. I'll move a bit. Ace King now as Ren Lin emerges as the hot hand early. It's a 200, right? Average stack is 5.2 million, good Thank for 26 you. big blinds. Ren Lin just below that mark. 450. The boss getting away from the pseudo connector. I like the decision there. It's a, it's a bit dicey to play such a hand at such a stage of the tournament. Cool. Easy money. <laughs> <laughs> Raise and take it. For Lin. As you look at the seat selections here, based upon obviously the inverse order with Big Stack being able to go last, do you take note of anything in terms of the choices that were made? Clearly, Ying Yang Chao last to be able to choose his seat, choosing to be directly to the left of Webster Lim and to the right of the short stack Putra. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting <laughs> choice. Um, I suppose, I mean, I think he, if I were him, I'm either choosing that seat or directly to the left of, of boss. Um, covering Paul's stack as the chip leader could certainly yield some benefit in, you know, sort of limiting his exposure to play certain hands uh, in different scenarios. It seems, it seems like a reasonable choice, though. Now with the elimination of Putra, the stack distribution, whether he had been in that seat or, or the one that he, he did choose, is going to be relatively similar. Ben Heath's turn to open. And take it down. Nicely done, Ben. Yeah, I would expect at this How many uh, stage of the final table with these chip stacks, as we see here, a lot of raise and take it, a lot of raise three bet, and either fold or shove. I'm not anticipating too many flops to be taken, but we will see the big blind defend on occasion. There's a look at the updated chip counts. Absent Indonesia, Indonesia's Ferdinand Putra. 3.7 million for Ben Heath. Inheriting short stack duties, 122,000. The on-tap payout, 44K. The jump from eighth to seventh. Total prize pool, 4.6 million and change. That breakdown brought to you by Poker Stake. Fives now for Ren. 450k. Can tell Paul's not thrilled throwing away the Jack 8 suited, but. He likes to get in there. Of course. We all do. Jack 10 suited, a different proposition on the button for Ding Biao. Indeed it is. It's not a trivial spot for him. It is sort of the type of hand that likes to shove at times. Calling, of course, always an attractive option. His main concern, I suppose, with calling hands like this is that at this stage of the event, uh, Ren is likely to be somewhat confident that he has two high cards. Uh, this is actually a, quite a good flop for him. 
with the flush draw, the presence of the ace, certainly something he can represent if he so chooses. Let's see how Bren proceeds. Out of position, wondering perhaps how much ace X is ending Biao's range as a flat on the button. Apparently not enough to dissuade him from following through for 325,000. And does Ding have options in terms of how he wants to approach from this point forward? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he could go for the raise, but typically I think, you know, most of the time we want to just proceed through a call. The challenge with raising is that, let's say he has a hand like Ace Jack or Ace 10 suited that he chose not to shove preflop with. Um, it tends to not really accomplish all that much with a raise. As we can see, you know, when he is against a hand like Ren has, he's only up against the two outs. Ren picks up a gut shot now. I imagine we'll see him check. It doesn't seem like Ding has too many hands which would fold to this bet. Uh, even the flush draw, seemingly enough of a hand to call once more. And unless Ren wants to go for three streets here and try to push Ding off of an ace, uh, which he may, you know, and possibly... Especially because the, the bigger aces for Ding we expect to have spoken up on the button as a three better pre. Agreed, yeah. I think we can eliminate ace king and ace queen from Ding's potential holdings here. And if Ren does decide to bet the turn and the heart comes, uh, that that would be a card that I would imagine he decides to continue bluffing on. And as we can see here, if Ding does call the turn bet and the heart comes, that will be sort of the dream scenario and likely result in him facing uh, just the amount of aggression he's looking for. Second barrel, 675,000. Perhaps tethered to the fact that the wheel draw yeah. has presented itself? I think so. In a sense, he's sort of naming his own price here. Um, we don't know what size Ding would bet if he, say, has a hand like Ace-10 suited and Ren checks. We do see him continue here. We're going to have a very interesting river coming up. And I maintain that if the heart comes, we see Ren continue to go for the bluff. Instead, it's a board pairing deuce. Yeah, and at this point, it's quite challenging for Ren to know that he has the best hand. Some of these suited broadways certainly candidates for Ding to have shoved on him preflop with. Um, we'll see, though. Sub 1 SPR for Ding Biao, 2.9 with 3.4 in the middle. And Ren does check, opening the door. Yeah, and I think, I think he will walk through this door. I certainly would if I were him. I mean, jack high, no hope to win if we check. And does he safely remove the ace X from Ren Lin's range? No, I don't think he can. I think Ren could absolutely have a hand like a weak ace. Ooh, he does check it. Very unfortunate for him when he sees these fives. It's not as though he thinks the jack high is ever a winner. It's more so whether or not he feels as though there's a sizing he could come with where the risk reward is appropriate to try to target what top of range felt like there, an ace X of sorts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the reasons that I would feel most compelled to bet in his shoes is not necessarily losing to a hand like fives, but let's say Ren had a hand like maybe king of hearts, queen, some kind of hand that was bluffing, uh, that you know you still unfortunately lose to. Um, not clear that he would necessarily need to bet all that big to represent the ace, but um, in any event, chose to take the more conservative route. Certainly uh, can't lose what you don't put in the middle, right? Good I've point. bluffed off many a tournament where I wish I had, you know, taken the more passive route. <laughs> So, Ren, moving on up this leaderboard into the chip lead ahead of Hing Yang Chow. Yeah, and on fire with another beautiful hand. Little suited connector again, a yeah. reluctant fold from Boss, but he's quite sound in terms of his preflop choices. It, it seems so, yeah, quite disciplined. And let's see, will we have, yeah, the two big stacks tussle a bit. 
Ping Yang Chao with a dominated Jack-10 until this board comes out. Yeah, he's got bottom two versus Jax and the Broadway Gutter. And these are the two big stacks colliding. 450 ahead pre-Ren. Decides Ooh. to play it as a check and then turns the bigger two pair. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised even if we saw go check check again and we do see Ren check back. And fortunately, you know, even though we see this run out, uh, okay. Hing Yang Chao losing, he's not gonna he's not gonna lose any more bets. <laughs> and fair enough, I mean it ran out quite scary for Ren. Bigger two pairs possible, maybe even checking a king with the prospects of him betting as a bluff or with a hand like that, perhaps fearing a check raise bluff from his opponent. But in any case, Ren's still climbing up the chip counts with ease in this first orbit. <laughs> Two streets of checking after the four-liner. Two ways materializes. Turn and river. And we have the blinds moving up. That we do, and that gives us an opportunity to talk about when the blinds move up in this particular format. Chewy, you, of course, as so many others, are accustomed to it being a tournament clock. But in mm -hmm. the GG Millions, it goes in accordance with how many players are remaining and by hands. Hmm. So 15 hands per level at present. When we get down to six players, it'll be 14. For five players, same story. Four players will be down to 13. Once we get to heads up, it'll be 12 hands per blind level. Wow, how interesting. Love that. And one of the benefits of going by hand is the stalling and, you know, weird little things yeah. that can happen. Just get thrown right out the window. Certainly protect someone like myself who is largely oblivious to such tactics. I tend to be there just to play cards, and I see people tanking. Oh. Blinds went up on my big blind again. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that always happening? <laughs> so we see Biao Ding here with an ace. Unclear what accompanies it. Ben with a close decision here. King eight is somewhat of a hand versus hijack. Opts to pass on it. Will be very hard to continue on uh, a variety of different board textures, perhaps even when he makes a pair, not always going to be what he's looking to get all of his chips into the middle with. Well, this gives us a chance to talk about our friends over at betacr.eu. Exclusive action prediction options on Triton events, a 15% free play up to $250, and the opportunity to elevate your sports engagement experience. It happens all at betacr.eu. Pay them a visit and see whether or not maybe you can spin up from the comfort of your own home. So when I feel especially good about myself, I can bet additional wow. via betacr. Hmm. I don't see why that would be an okay, issue. Really. Okay. Intriguing. Stakes not big enough for you out here, Chewy? No, they're unfortunately not small enough after my performance this week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really did have an absolutely lovely time, which has continued being in the booth here with you, Ali, uh, at my first Triton experience. Love to hear it. This is quite a tricky spot for Igor. These two fives in the cutoff. He has this 15 big blind stack. He doesn't really want to raise and fold to a shove, I imagine. He may just want to open shove. And we see him using a time bank. This, to me, is genuine thought. Really not a trivial situation. 3.8 million for Yaroshevsky. Sixth of eight runners right now. And he's going to put a not insignificant 1.7 of it out there. Leaves himself 2.1 back in case of emergency. But it is obviously on the high side in relation to the blinds. We'll be relieved not to have to navigate further. Indeed. And those are the important pickups. Very important pickups. For the smaller stacks in the room. Without Every question. pot, so big at this stage. Thank you.
There's a peek at Paul Pua's current circumstance. Seven and a half million, 30 bigs, 16% of the chips in play. Yeah, great spot for him, especially being on Ren's left. We see Ren has mostly had good hands. He got a little bit creative with those fives, but I imagine as things go on, we'll see some of his classic creative play. And uh, we'll see how, how that works for Paul, being directly one seat over to the left from him. Ace-Queen now for Igor, as once more he'll be able to open a pot. Indeed he will. Obviously mindful of Chow to his direct left. Second biggest stack. Yeah, I think with that win of the last pot, he now has enough chips where he's likely going to want to just come in for a standard raise and be able to sort of proceed accordingly, depending on what action he faces. Off of roughly 18 bigs. He does open minimum. Bogdanov not making a meal of a7. Look yeah. <laughs> you know he wants to get in there covering his yeah. opponent by two times uh, the effective stack, but six deuce just not the one for the job. That it isn't. So so. If I'm Biao Ding, I'm still thinking. Should I have bet that river? Was it just an unlikely occurrence he had those fives? Would I often just be torching my money into the ace? How good are you at letting things go at the table, Ali? You play not a hand, great. you lose, Chewy, not great, yeah. You know, I tend to be a dweller, for I sure. I, I kind of saw that coming, but I wanted to confirm. <laughs> good read. <laughs> I wear my heart on my sleeve. Me too, pal. Sometimes on other people's sleeves as yeah. well. <laughs> King Queen now for Webster. By the way, you may be hearing some laughter and some hijinks off to the side of the broadcast booth right now. Alexandra Botez, who cut her teeth in the chess streets before transitioning over to poker, is actually squaring off against Dan Smith, our resident grandmaster here at Triton. Indeed. Well, we can call him a grandmaster amongst our circle, but... Yeah. Yeah. Let's not slight the man. Yeah. No, let's not slight him. You know. He's got some real chops when it comes to the game of chess and I'm poker taking, as well. I'm taking him over all of the other uh, Triton regs without question. I think Makita's quite talented. You I got know, action? I don't know what his rating is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take Dan. I don't know a thing about Makita. I just know Dan is a monster. He is. Webster. Picked up company from Boss. Suited combo, understandably. But on yeah, an 8 deuce board, it does go check back from Webster. It was a bit of a struggle on these boards with these types of hands, right? He has some interaction. He's got a backdoor straight draw. He's got the king of hearts. Does he want to leverage that into pushing Paul off of various hands that can pick up draws? that can semi-bluff or just outright improve? Um, or does he want to take his equity? He opts for the latter. Six of spades on the turn. Had a sense that maybe this would be good board texture for Paul to get busy on, given the Broadway combos and the bigger aces are not interacting. And I think you're right, and it is. But I think probably the thought from Boss is that his hand is just too weak. Holding the king especially, as we see, Webster has a hand of a very similar nature. Perhaps he's thinking that when he has the king, Webster's a bit more likely to have slightly different holding. But this seven may open the door. Now we've seen two checks. You know, Webster probably folds to any bet. 
I would imagine, unless he goes for a bluff raise. I don't quite expect him to call. We'll see what Paul goes for here. Four liner. A 10 not outside the realm of possibility for Webster to be holding in this line. We see he did opt to take his equity with the king-queen, a hand like ace-10 or king-10 also possible. Very nice from Paul here. Yeah, 500 looks credible into 1.375, and obviously the king high would be an ambitious flat. The raises aren't out of the question if Webster wanted to be a hero, but keeps his cape. Nicely done. Away from this pot. Sometimes those spots feel funny because you imagine that a lot of the hands that have a 10 in them will just be betting the turn from Paul's perspective. Um, but nevertheless, not always so easy when you're out there and exceptionally easy when we can see our opponent's hand. Yeah. We get a bit spoiled when we're here in the booth. Yeah, I could get used to this. It's like the Monday morning quarterback effect, right? <laughs> yes, of course. You know all the plays to call in <laughs> retrospect. <laughs> that shot there was like when the space station is orbiting and they give you that Earth mm. view from above. Love that. Of the trophy. Lower orbit, of course, for our camera, but nevertheless. Beautiful trophies and accoutrements here for the victors of these Triton events. You know, oftentimes we do wonder deeply, for those of you who have been at it as long as you have, at the stakes that you have, whether or not there's a bit of apathy towards things like trophies, things mm. like Player of the Year awards and whatnot. But through observation and some conversation, it does seem that here in particular, a product perhaps of just how much of a minefield every one of the victories are, how much of a sense of accomplishment and achievement is associated with working your way through all of the best of your peers. Absolutely. There is an investment in some of the accolade. Yeah. I mean, I'm always grateful when I win because I know how challenging it is to do just that. And here, speaking of, we see Ding picking up ace-queen suited against the button raise. Yeah, going for the win. And Redlin forced to concede. Yeah, I think it's cool just over the years accruing different items which are representative of successes. Mm -hmm. A tangible, real physical manifestation yeah. of success. Hallmarks and reminders. Yeah. Likely important when you're having one of those moments of self-doubt, which I think are quite natural. Sure. Especially during downswings. I mean, you talked about, obviously, this particular Triton, your first 0 for 7, I think it is. And since you're here now and you've opened up the topic, yeah. I wonder, how is it that you're able to maintain, you know, I heard you laughing heartily before we came back. <laughs> yes, for as this. I like to do. As you like to do, yeah, it's, a, it's quite infectious, by the way. But you don't seem affected at all by it. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, I love using poker as a vehicle for self-improvement, self-growth. I've learned so much about myself through both the ups and the downs. They're really, you know, sort of different learning mechanisms. And I really just you know, do what I can to take the best from each experience, win or lose, and, you know, just come back better the next time. So I suppose, in a sense, I go into each event or event series knowing that um, I will win if I stick around long enough and do what I can uh, to improve myself and my game. Mm -hmm. And at times, those wins won't come in, and that's okay, too focused more in the micro sense on just making the best decision available to you in every given hand is obviously one way to take comfort in the results just being the product of things beyond your control, yeah. beyond that. And turning up as your best self so that you can make that best decision. And I find in these longer trips that to uh, sometimes be quite a challenge. Yeah. Ace, nine, deuce. And both of these hands have their respective challenges. Perilous. Heath with the benefit of position, the opener to 500,000. Webster defending and checking. Yeah, if I'm Ben, I'm quite pleased to see this ace. Obviously, he doesn't know what Webster holds, but a board that he'll be doing a lot of betting on and prospect of winning the hand with this particular holding quite high in his mind, I imagine. Goes for the minimum bet. I'm a fan. 
such a tight preflop range in this particular setup from Ben. Towards the bottom with this queen jack. Nicely getting the king high out. Yeah. Now and again, you'll see some guys more inclined to get into the weeds with king highs on boards like that, just on the occasions in which their opponent doesn't have an ace, looking for an opportunity maybe to take the pot away. Sure. Lack of a heart for Webster in that combo, making things yeah. less attractive, of course. No backdoor straight draw, no backdoor flush draw. All of these subtle aspects of the hand adding up. Ben's raise also coming in from relatively early position. He was the low jack, I believe. He was. Ben, 16 blinds, now level at the bottom of the chip counts with both Ding Biao and Ben Heath. Uh, and uh, Webster Lim, rather. Give me. Talk to me a bit, Chewy, about the impact. You know, we talk so much about ICM pressure. When you mm -hmm. have three players with 16 blinds, 8th, 7th, and 6th, you've got two at 20 bigs, 5th and 4th, mm -hmm. and then you've got level stacks of 32 for 3rd and 2nd. 36 big blinds is the biggest of all around. How does one expect action to play out just based on the distribution? Yeah, I would expect to see very little calling of raises outside of the big blind. Just sort of understanding that any pot you take post flop is it's a bit it's a bit dicier in terms of your prospects of winning, but you know sort of taking initiative or reseizing initiative pre flop, uh, you clarify matters a lot more. In a sense, you leave your range uncapped, um, and I think that that's why we see so much aggression pre flop at final tables. And thus far. With that said, though, we do have a limp spot on versus blind. Yeah. And it's a very uh, it's a very reasonable play from Webster. He could certainly be limping here to trap Igor with a variety of different hands. Not so short that he feels the compulsion to shove all of his strongest uh, pairs, ASEX, suited broadways, and whatnot. A funny board texture that doesn't connect with either of them particularly well. Igor, with the benefit of position, we'll see if he decides to seize the initiative. He does pick up a gutter. Webster with second pair now. And Lim could be feeling quite cozy, given the check back by Yaroshevsky on that dry texture. Indeed. Or perhaps we expect to hear from the 10 more often than not. I would imagine so. Hence, reaching for chips and delivering 300 into 750. Yeah, and Igor has the decision. He has a relatively weak draw. He is in position. He may want to try and bluff spades, but there are so many straight draws that fit into this category of hand that if he gets too carried away with such a plan, it could not bearing fruit that he would hope. He does just let it go, and I think I'm a fan of that. Nicely done. Sometimes it isn't just about that gutter, but more... Having position and seeing whether or not another barrel is inbound on the river. For sure, yeah. But then if it's not, we're stuck there with nine high. Have we not improved? And Yeah. That's when you regret it as you find yourself <laughs> bluffing and getting snapped by a yeah. river check. And I think it speaks to somewhat of the discipline that's required in making looser calls on flops and turns in deciding how likely is it that if I miss, I'm actually going to be able to take this pot down. Uh oh. Because, you know, sometimes he'll catch the right cards to to bluff on. It'll be very challenging for him to get called. Um, but, you know, not always getting direct odds with these sorts of hands against the types of uh, value bets, as we saw Webster with the seven there. It is amazing how much you can dissect a spot that, you know, to the naked eye, proverbially speaking, might seem very mundane. Mm. You know, limp pot, blind versus blind. But a lot of times there's quite a bit to unpack in oh, those sorts of exchanges. Absolutely. I mean, I spend my life unpacking such things. I mean, uh, I'm about as much of a poker nerd as you can find in the world. So 
all these little subtle nuances to what's going on in the construction of ranges and strategies and you know what weights one thing over another. I just find it endlessly fascinating. And also gratifying when you take all of that nerding out, whether it be in the solver streets or conversations with other enthusiasts who are at the top of their game, and then experiment, tinker a little Absolutely. bit when you're out there no, and the find things that are effective. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, a walk with 7-3 offsuit. That's, that's a lovely experience. Yeah, no doubt. And not unlike other things, Chewy, I would imagine that there are trends that emerge and fade away yeah, from well time said. to time in, in poker. Are there any, as you played out here during this festival, that you took note of that maybe struck you at all? Great question. Um, as you mentioned this, I can certainly recall at times online having seen trends emerge. Uh, you get a lot more hands in online, even over the course of you know, one Sunday than you do in you know, perhaps a week's play out here. Uh, so it's a lot more noticeable. Um, nothing coming to mind, really. So as you expected, for the most part, what you observed? Yeah, I mean, something I loved about this trip is I got to see a lot of guys that I don't see as much playing stateside. Mm -hmm. um, guys that I've played with in years past. And seeing sort of the evolution of this international crowd of high rollers and being a part of it was Ooh. quite fascinating. But let's, let's yeah. observe these kings here. This pot is going to be evolving as Ren Lin's ace-jack is yeah. going to be pushed back upon, one would imagine, from this button of Yaroshevsky, pocket kings. Absolutely. I'm expecting some sort of three-bet non-all-in, and Ren's going to have a decision here. I think if Igor does decide to shove, Ren will get away from his hand. If he comes in for a 1.2 type million three bet, Ren will find it to be a non-trivial spot. Okay, he's going for the same sort of play he went for with the fives, yeah. a committal amount. I'm thinking Ren will find a fold, but we never know. As you alluded to earlier, the Monday morning quarterback effect, very real in the booth. Flat would seem quite absurd, even at Ren's depth, with a holding such as ace-jack out of position and the expectation that the remainder will be en route post-flop. Yeah, I don't foresee a call unless he was going for some sort of uh, stop-and-go type play. <laughs> The so classic nice. slap of the back of the hand. No. <laughs> Show it one time. Oh, yeah. oh, oh and Ren King successfully King. managing to negotiate Very a free nicely peak. done. <laughs> I have to say, Ren, one of the highest morale guys out here. Just <laughs> out. such so a fun off. dude to play <laughs> cards with. Always no, laughing, no, chatting it up. Yeah. You're kind of opponent. Yeah, he's 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 great. Makes uh makes everyone feel comfortable and certainly if he's running you over and you know throwing out his his classic catchphrases, one's you know tilt may be tested. But he means Lady Gaga. Well. Lady Gaga, yeah, as he drills the queen on you for the seventeenth time. Yeah, yeah. It does feel like he shows up with queens way more than the <laughs> average person. I know it's just a psychological phenomenon. Because right. he's always saying it, and it's a complete free roll. It's either there or it isn't. Speaking of. Uh, Ace Gaga. Yeah, Ace Gaga. Suited. <laughs> Ren really has been on fire here at this FT so far. He really Shot has been. right to the top of the leaderboard and has stayed active. Yeah, something like six or seven very playable hands. And Yulian with quite a playable hand himself. This king eight suited, imagine we'll see a defend. And off we go. Is that a four medium behind, right? Is that four, yeah. four medium. Four, yeah. <sighs> king eight suited defends. Comes up empty on the 10-7-5 board. Same story for Ren. Lack of a heart is dissuasive, but let's see how he chooses to proceed in position. Checked in front of him, 1-4 in the middle. 
Yeah, and Ren again, kind of in a similar situation to what we saw Webster in earlier. Two overcards. He has much less of sort of backdoor potential, just that straight draw and you know, the overcards as pair outs. Nicely done, getting Yulian out with a formidable amount of equity, and certainly we can see this as a spot where had Ren checked and just looked to take his hand to showdown, many different turns where Yulian could activate, turning either straight draw or flush draw, or just improving to the best hand with a pair himself. Chooses not to go about his business in that manner, and one can understand when facing a perceived aggressive opponent with that big stack and the hot hand. Yeah. Not Ren opening from under the gun and, you know, Yulian being covered by quite a bit. Seems a prudent right? fold with That's a hand just as weak as King High and backdoor <laughs> potentials. <laughs> but every now and again, Ali, you get a sense your man just didn't connect. You just decide, this is my time to shine. 1.5 million, what's up, man? You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. Because we've all been there. There is a weird spidey six sense sort of aspect to poker. Indeed, there is. But those six senses can walk us right into some very <laughs> murky spots that suddenly see us looking up at a far bigger pot than we intended to play with a hand that shouldn't really have found its way there <laughs> and going, how did this all happen? Right. Yep. No, I've been there. It's uh, it's sort of what you ask for when you take a walk on the wild side yeah. and decide, you know what, I'm tired of this guy, you know, betting in position every time. And in that case, likely it would have worked, but how can you know? A lot of times a function of high V-pip, you know, high, high C bet frequencies. Yeah. You start to just oh tell my. yourself, no, it's not possible. And Lady Gaga, he's back. Ren Lin, just like that, blind versus blind. Bogdanov, nothing wrong with taking the queen 10 suited, nope, I would imagine, with 4.2. I think it's and just a great play. Getting it in front and just runs into, of all things, pocket queens. Did we contribute to this? For Yulian, I'm not going to hold myself accountable for this yeah. development. <laughs> top set up against top pair as the K's card rolls off. Ten becomes somewhat relevant. The ten is very relevant. As see. We see all the queens on the board. I thought you were going to refer to the two on the rail there. Oh, very nice. Now an official draw dead, though, for Bogdanov, who did end up making two pair, by the way. My goodness. Well fought and a good game to Yulian Bogdanov. I played with this guy a few times. He's a very tough competitor. I'm sure we'll be seeing quite a, quite a bit more of him, not just in Triton events, but other events. Yeah, part of that Bulgarian delegation that really showed up here. <laughs> the Bulgarian takeover is real. Yeah, Dimov already with the title, and now another FT under that nation's belt here, as the best to ever do it from that nation made their way, way here, took on Triton's best, but falling short on this occasion is Yulian. $122,000, courtesy of an eighth place finish. As the field enjoys a pay jump of 44,000. Seven remaining. As Heath, Ding, and company thrilled to have locked up 166,000 and change. 228, the jump. If you can work your way into the top six. We don't really eulogize the departed, do we? No. What What can you do, you know? The show must go on. The show must go on. <laughs> he did his thing, and uh, Ren did his. Do you ever feel guilty when you sun run? Um, no, I don't feel guilty, but I will say that while I derive joy from winning, Yes. I don't derive joy from other people losing. And while those two things are inseparable, uh, yeah, I just sort of take it as, you know, part of what everyone has signed up for. It is a zero-sum affair, inescapably, poker. At least in, you know, the sense of chips in any given game, yep. that's for sure.
Mm -hmm. We're going to have to reinforce that end of the table. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't think structurally we were pre prepared for that kind of stack. No, certainly not. I mean, that's just, it looks beautiful. Not quite as beautiful. A7-5 for these two Jack X's. <laughs> yeah. Neither with a heart. Though Ren's going to have a peek. Was that eight a diamond? Yes, yes it was. This is one of those whoever breathes first sort of instances. But neither hand really the type of hand that seems naturally uh, intuitive to put chips in with. Board does wow, pair. the eight plays. Yeah, Jack eight, still a winner at showdown. And you could see Paul checking back, thinking that Jack high is going to be good with some yeah. frequency. You could not. Also he possible that he's up against a jack high that splits. You see him asking queen high. I got better kicker. Ooh, very nice. Wow. I'm not fluent in Chinese, but I don't want to know that wasn't a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Playfully <laughs> delivered <laughs> Ren's way. <laughs> Very nice. I had the pleasure of uh, hanging out, getting some breakfast today with James Chen, who explained to me a bit about the language of Mandarin and uh, what a complicated language it is. Did he talk to you about tones? I learned a few things about tones. I learned quite a bit about the characters. Hieroglyphs originally of yeah. sorts. <laughs> Direct and do need derivative to be, of? Do need to be drawn in a specific sequence, by right. the way, when you learn them. Right. The average amount of characters apparently that a native speaker knows is 3,500. Staggering. Yeah. I thought, okay, maybe they have a bigger alphabet than us, you know, 50 or 60. No, endless thousands. I signed up for Japanese my freshman year in college. Yeah. They have a, an alphabet which is very structured, makes a lot of sense. It's a vowel and a consonant together. Yeah. Constitutes all words and syllables. It's called hiragana. I was like, okay, great, this is cool. Then all of a sudden, next semester, they said, well, we have this other alphabet for non-native words oh, no. called katakana. I had to learn that one, too. I was like, okay, all right, well, it's getting a little bit hairy. Yeah. And then year two, they came out and said, welcome to kanji. I said, what's that? They said, basically Chinese. At which point I quietly closed my textbook and <laughs> dropped the class. I'm out. Too many secret alphabets. Oh. <laughs> I was like, the third alphabet? You want me to learn two full length? I'm done. <laughs> out of here. Pulled it around to another blind versus blind. Boss. And you know, sometimes we see these hands, right, as the ones that choose to attack, not fearing getting blown off as the prospects of 10-5 can be quite grim in their own right. But so far, more passive post-flop play being chosen as the favorable route for these players in the blind versus blind encounters. Favorable flop here for Paul. 8-8 eight, eight, deuce. Most definitely. Not obligated to barrel, but doesn't mind it, of course. Yeah. Certainly rates to have the best hand. We'll see if Ding decides. No, no backdoor straight draw, a weak club. <laughs> Paul laughing and showing him the deuce. Sometimes those spots can be quite tempting in their own right. Sure. You decide, does my man really have an eight? I certainly could. He's got somewhat of a hand. Opposite just bow out. Thank Live to fight another Thank day. You. Certainly respect it. So, as the dealer push takes place, blinds, 125, 250. Renlin up at the top. 
see the pairing of Hua and Chow. 32 bigs apiece. Lurking. Yaroshevsky. Midfield. 22 bigs. All the way down to the short stack of Ben He. Some in the chat have been asking you to talk a little bit about your new venture. Chewy, you're wearing the patch, have been throughout the course of the week. Octopi yeah. Poker, what is it? How did it come about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are a poker tech company. Um, myself, Victoria Lipschitz, Nick Schulman, a few of the co-founders. And essentially, we want to reimagine not just poker study, but poker tech in general. And we want to create a highly collaborative social experience for people to review their hands, um, find other people of comparable skill level, work together in groups. Uh, we are also quite interested in creating statistics for streams just like this. So we can see how, you know, for example, much tangible dollars Ren Stack is worth, how much this strong card distribution that he's had in the early yeah. going has contributed to the increase in equity of his stack size. Um, it doesn't take a poker tech company, though, to know that Ren's VPIP is 116% <laughs> so far at this final table. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so software, though. Yes. I'm not talking about hardware, obviously. Yeah. I hear tech. I wonder. Jack 8 suited. No wonder, though, from the cutoff for Ren. Half a million. Webster, Ace, Deuce, and well aware of the frequency that Ren has been Entering pots doesn't have to be a bigger ace, so he no, will absolutely not. dig in. <laughs> it's a hard spot for Webster because one might even consider a shove, even a hand as weak as ace-deuce. Against the chip leader, you know, they have that sort of advantage in the large stack. They can certainly call you off uh, more liberally than perhaps some other stacks, but they also have a wider opening range, so somewhat of competing factors ongoing there. We see Ren reaching from his mountain. Quite a nice flop for him, really. A dry king high board. Backdoor straight and flush potential overs to the two lower cards out there. And this is tough for Webster. I'm not sure there's much of a path to victory. And he agrees. Another thing we're doing at Octopi Ali is creating a marketplace where people can create content as they see fit, um, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or expert player, and uh, sell and distribute to the community at large right through our Octopi forum. Interesting. Have you found that it is taking away being a businessman from the time that you're able to spend both playing poker, let alone you know, working on, on your game, or has it kind of uh, helped it, it in certain ways? It's a great question. It's it's complemented it in the sense that, you know, as I alluded to earlier, I like the component of poker, which sort of forces you to be very honest with yourself um, and improve as a person overall, not just strategically. Mm -hmm. And that part has been nice, but undeniably, I'm spending more time doing things that are not poker-related than probably I have in my adult life. And that's a fun journey in its own right. Sure. Just as this journey with two kings under the gun is likely to be. Just embarking upon it is Hing Yang Chow under the gun. And again, we find an ace in the big blind. Webster check folded his to the seabed of Ren. A pot of go. Yeah, and I wonder if against this slightly larger raise, Igor even will defend. He looks somewhat quizzical at the moment. And he does just bow out. Very nicely done, sir. <laughs> causing himself no additional damage. One of those spots where even if you feel as if your man with a larger stack could have a slightly wider range, how likely are we really to win the pot? Yeah. We yeah. hit the ace, maybe we win a single bet. You know, the eight over cards can come. Are the prospects of check raise bluffing very exciting? Mm -hmm. Probably not with a hand like ace eight unless a very choice board comes out. Right. I think that's largely why we see such tight pre-flop play uh, in these final table scenarios. Just so hard to pick up the pot uncontested, whereas earlier in the tournament, we can dance out there a little bit more with significantly less downside for 
when we're uh, caught with our hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> it's a natural product of hitting the I dance floor. Like yes, <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> or for that matter, the cookie cupboard. <laughs> yeah. Do you like to dance, Ollie? I do like to dance, my friend. Yeah. I can cut a rug. I, I kind there. of imagine so. You have style. I could see you moving out there. Are you inviting me to a dance? <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm inviting you, <laughs> but... <laughs> I could see that you've got some moves. Perhaps over the years you've uh, displayed them at times, some if of these poker gatherings. If only my moves could be translated into poker... To millions of dollars. To millions of dollars, yes. Yeah. Instead of just if only. holes in my socks. Right. Yaroshevsky making a move from the small blind, and it is in the form of a limp here at this 150-300k level. A deuce happy to check back for Chow, that we do see bottom of range sometimes activate in the interest of not having to play post. Indeed we do. And so far we've seen, I think, three, oh my. Three deuces? Is that what you were going to say? Yes, <laughs> but of course. Gutter and two overs, though, for Yaroshevsky. Yeah, we're definitely going to see a turn here in some capacity. I think even if Chow opts for a raise, as long as it's not too largely sized, Igor will stick around. And this is a really dangerous spot for Igor to be betting into this type of board. He obviously has quite an excellent hand. But the big blind, you know... They, they do uh, possess a two a bit more often. We can imagine Igor's stack preflop. A deuce not going to be the hand, or the card rather, that exists in most of the hands he's deciding he wants to play. Note that Yaroshevsky has picked up the diamond draw here on the turn, and we'll soon know whether or not that emboldens him to barrel once more against Chow. Although on that board texture on the flop, when we do get called, there are concerns about being up against Diamond draws and the deuce, Most let definitely. alone a, a three, all of which have us cooked for yeah. the time being. I think probabilistically, he should feel as if it's most likely that his opponent holds a three. Mm. Um, there's certainly plenty of hands that could have a single diamond larger than his. We imagine a hand like, call it, you know, high card four or five with a single diamond would call the flop. Okay, he rivers the pair. This very well could be the best hand. Is it one of those spots where he's got the equity now, showdown value rather, forgive me, yeah. and feels like another barrel is not in order? I, I would say so. I think if we are to see Igor bet, it'll be quite a small size. He opts for the check. And Chow has a decision here in terms of bet sizing. Igor playing... What is this, 1.4 times the pot remaining in his stack? Chow's certainly capable of possessing a variety of hands unpaired to arrive at this decision point. As I mentioned, a, t uh, a hand that comes to mind would be Jack of Diamonds 4, King of Diamonds 4. Igor somewhat likely to have either a 3 or a 5, potentially a turned queen. I wouldn't rate it exceptionally likely that he is trapping at this stage because, as I mentioned on the turn, if Chow were to have a three, we'd have to imagine he is decently likely to just check back himself. In fact, I can't really imagine another path he would take with a three, so... Yeah, we see this bet come in. This is a nice nice size by him, 40% of the pot, and yeah. Igor has a tough decision to make here. Because he is going to safely remove the three X combos, given he his is. behavior on the river, and then it's left to the deuce X, the diamonds, incidental queens, one would imagine, yeah. from time to An time. An incidental queen could show up here. Something like, let's say, queen six of hearts, backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw on the flop, turn top pair. We can't expect our opponent to really have a hand better than a queen when they check the river all that often. It is certainly plausible, particularly for the more tricky amongst us. But this is a kind of classic squarely bluff catching situation that we see so often in two card Texas No Limit Hold'em and how will Igor proceed is the question so 
those 10 black chips are very much at risk. Yeah, and I think what's going through his head is, you know, does my opponent have a hand with a single diamond? And if I call, can I expect them to turn that hand up often enough? Would, you know, starting to piece together the rest of the hand, was their timing on the flop and turn consistent with a hand like, let's say, 10 of diamonds 6, for example? You know, jack of diamonds 10. Any, any sort of hand with a single diamond that feels it has the need to bet on this river card. And we see the time banks getting burnt. Really not a trivial spot for Mr. Yaroshevsky. And wisely taking his time to think it through. Is casting some glances to his left over here at Chow, taking advantage of this extra time maybe to get a vibe? Sure, yeah. Get a vibe. Mm. Unfortunately, not going to go his way. Yeah. Nice bet on the end by Chow. Seemingly sizing up his man correctly and... Perhaps choosing, you know, the best amount, really. Yeah, a million feels like the upper boundary of what the five is comfortable. And obviously it wasn't comfortable, as we could see for Yaroshevsky, but potentially paying off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Igor's hand objectively was quite strong. He had, you know, not only the five in his hand, you know, leading to the pair, but the diamond interfering with a hand like 6-4, you know, diminishing the possibility of a rivered straight. Diminishing the possibility of his man having a flush that just called the turn. Um, unfortunately, not too much going on with the diminishment of a two. But uh, yeah, that's you know the nature of the game. Some of these spots are quite tough. Uh, when you're facing that river bat and you are squarely bluff catching, not always so easy. Actually, I do feel compelled in the interests of not being a hypocrite or applying any double standards to the booth. Yeah. To step in and take umbrage with the usage of the word two in poker, I got all over Randy Lou. Did I even say that? I, I feel like that wasn't two me. Deuces is what we refer to them as. Yes, of course. Is it not? I mean, they're absolutely deuces. I apologize for any former transgressions. <laughs> That was a quick rollover, by the way, Chewy. You weren't dug in on the two. No, absolutely lexicon not. Whatsoever. I mean, I, I, I should know, but I do know better. <laughs> <laughs> it was a misdemeanor, not a, not a felony. Yeah, everyone's all right. Ace eight suited for Ben Heath. Two point eight million. A scratch of the head here in the face of this rip I out mean, of the hijacking. Yeah, rates to have either the ace of clubs or another four nestled. Absolutely, and we saw actually one of the other players folding ace eight of diamonds, so if Ben does call and he is against the two fours, it will be a bit more of an uphill battle than it otherwise might be. Something tells me he's going to get away from this. Really, again, not a trivial spot though. He is against the hijack. 11 and a half big blind shove. Certainly many such hands as Jack 10 suited, Queen 10 suited, King 10 suited, etc. That upper Broadway suited region. And as we see the potential of here, a lower suited ace. Ben chewed on it for a minute, but spits it out. Indeed he does, and nicely done by Mr. Biao Ding. We will never know whether two fours or the ace four suited. The pot is his. I asked this question of Jonathan Jaffe when he was in a booth and furthering kind of the discussion about trends in poker. Uh, it's incumbent upon us when we sit at the table with incomplete information, which is basically all that poker is, yeah. to... Maybe try to put an opponent into a box, profile them somewhat before we are given, you know, actual data to help size them up. Yeah, that can be useful at times, for sure. I mean, when you have no reads on someone, anything that might lead you, might be a leading indicator in one direction or another to identify aggression or lack thereof in a certain decision point can be quite useful. Or even aptitude, obviously. And sure. then in yeah. terms of the trends, do you notice anything geographically? When, you know, you get opponents from a certain part of the world, you know, stylistically, you see themes emerging because there are trends in poker. There are absolutely trends um, and sort of, yeah, I will say one thing I've realized um, 
a lot of the more online native crowd has implemented uh, quite a bit more flop leading out of the big blind. I would say that's something that we see now a bit more than in years past. Mm -hmm. uh, Used to be just the auto check after you defend. Yeah, with that that incredibly was incredibly high frequency. Not from everyone, but you definitely. Yeah, there were there were certainly times mm -hmm. and uh, and cycles, perhaps even it would be a right way to say it. Oh my, here we have an all in. Uh, and Biao Ding looks like he's not going to be able to call this. Note that it was Ding who opened with that rip from the hijack that Ben conceded to. Now it is Ding who is being ripped upon out of the small blind. He's ace 10. Chiming in for the full amount Ding did. And funny enough, ask for the count. Ding is in a, a similar situation to sort of where Ben was last hand, asking himself, does my man have enough of the unpaired but strong suited hands in the king or queen high Broadway variety? Mm -hmm. He deems not it, it to not be the case and wisely lets it go. Yeah, I think I, I can recall on this trip, actually, that I saw quite a lot of flop leading on low connected boards from the big blind. Um, Small blind leading, also an idea. We don't see that quite as often. Uh, but yeah, I would say that that's somewhat of a trend. Yeah. Uh, and as far as geographically goes, not sure. Yeah, you brought it up as like an online ilk versus yeah. maybe non-online ilk, but parts of the world maybe. I mean, obviously we have a tremendous amount of attendance and enthusiasm for the Triton Super High Roller Series coming from the Far East. Yeah, absolutely. Markets that maybe are a little younger in terms of poker relative to their Western counterparts. Absolutely, and, and poker really does seem to be booming in the Far East. It's awesome to see. Uh, I played with quite a few of them this summer in Vegas, uh, even more of them now. Showing up and making names for themselves, by yeah, the way, at the World really Series. Are. A number of our Triton regulars did get out there and partake, Kiat Lee, Danny Tang among them. Yeah. Coming yeah. to mind. I don't know if I have any particularly useful sort of population geographical demographic reads. Mm. Uh, Soiza, by the way, also another one of those guys Soiza. that likes to get yeah. after it worldwide. Putting a bow on that last one, by the way, Ding Biao did end up folding that ace deuce suited to Heath. That was a meaningful pickup for Ben. Now fourth in chips, just courtesy of that pot alone as everybody stacks leaning out rather quickly. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of bunching here amongst the four players in that you know, high two to low four million region. Paul kind of squarely in the middle. And you know, if I'm being honest, as Ren chip leading here, seeing this distribution of those four bunched stacks, I might have attacked Boss here with this Jack-8 offsuit. Uh, he chose the more passive route, and now we have quite an interesting flop where both players have connected reasonably well. Gut shot and the backdoor flush draw for Ren. Open ender and the backdoor spades for Boss, and wow, what a turn we have. Yeah, the eight of clubs, which fills in the straight for Boss, but sopping wet for Ren Lin, as he's got the gut shot, straight flush draw, and a pair. Yeah, far from over for Paul. Let's see how big Ren is going to bet here. He appears to be reaching. And whether Paul will proceed in the form of a call or a raise. Going to be contingent upon the sizing. Just one third into 900 comes 300. And I feel like we might see a raise here. We, we do tend to see a lot of cautious play at these final tables, understanding the risk of putting chips in when they may not come back to us on such board textures where 6.5 is far from the nuts, but... Is it an equity denial sort of raise or is it a value raise? I think it's both. It, it can serve both, both purposes here. And, you know, I, I guess for this size, we're not gonna see Ren fold, but, you know, Boss has 73%, he's in position. Let's make our man pay, right? And then if the river comes a sort of more coordinating card, certainly a club will see him check back, I'm sure. Uh, I imagine on a tenor or jack, you know, let's say the jack comes, he'll sort of get his money's worth now. I don't think he'll put any additional money in. 
where the 10 would be a, you know, sort of a one-liner or a four-liner. Oh, no. The six of clubs on the river. Now, any 10, any club will dash the hopes of Paul Pua. Yeah, and it looks like Ren has a bit of a decision here. You know, if he correctly susses out that Paul was value raising the turn, it's not really very likely that he bets the river unless he has a straight flush or, I mean, that's, I guess, a higher club. Yeah. 10 queen, king, ace of clubs are kind of the only hands that are going to bet the river here that aren't a bluff. And... There is an open-ended straight flush on the board. Remember, this one was limped pre by Ren Lin, checked back by Boss. Both players knuckled on the flop. And then we saw the altercation on the turn. Yeah, wow. either player could yeah. very well have a straight flush here, as odd as it is to say that. Um, boss seemingly a bit upset. Naturally, no one loves getting outdrawn. Perhaps wondering if bluffing was a potential option on the river, but I think he did well. He got his money's worth on the turn, and, you know, not a trivial spot to be attacking your opponent when you have a straight yourself, but shriveling not, up quite a bit in the presence not, of those four clubs. I imagine just not a good candidate to turn into a bluff in that spot. You, you just yeah, I cuffed think, a bit. I think the hope would be that your opponent has a 10, a hand like 10-9 or 10-8, but then one has to ask, would he have comfortably called that raise on the turn Absolutely. with a 10 that is not the club? Yeah. Right. And... Yeah, I agree with you. Probably not uh, a particularly likely bluff to succeed. And with that, Ren pulls further ahead. Just an incredible straight-up graph. The endless green candle. <laughs> yeah. It's always good to run good, and it's especially good in a situation like this. Ren opting for a slight size up here. And you know, if I was Ren, I very well may have considered just open shoving, putting maximum pressure on boss, preventing the opportunity to reshove with various hands, and denying Ding the opportunity to take a flop. We see here the queen four suited, certainly one that Ren would be pleased to know his man is holding if it were uh, revealed to him. But plenty of other hands you know, can realize their equity well. And uh, wow, there it is. Lady Queen Gaga back in action, my friend. Seven three, and both players with Gaga. It's just the king kicker for Ren Lin. On his feet, by the way, up periscope. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is gonna be a tough one for, for Mr. Ding. I I don't really see any path to escape. Uh, I think we're about to see him needing some backdoor clubs or a four to remain in this tournament. <coughs> the follow through sizing, steady at 700 out of Ren Lin. Think we'll see a check raise all in. Feels like the right way to approach this spot, doesn't it? It sure does. It's worth so much just winning the hand, even yeah. if our opponent has a single overcard. And the subtle declaration of all in and the not so comfortable quick call from Ren Lin. <laughs> Ding Biao. Mr. Ren Lin is so far just bulldozing this final table. Absolute wrecking ball. If he can hold up here, this is really, you know, him being in the driver's seat. Turn card doesn't bring the club draw. The Ding Diao so desperately needed. Only a four will save him now from a seventh place finish. Is it there? No. And well thought. Almost predictably, chips again 
<laughs> being magnetized and moved toward Ren Lin. Yeah, amazing run here in, what have we played, two or three orbits? If that. Yeah. So the latest casualty here at the final table of this 25 kgg millions will be China's Ding Biao. Quite a tough player in his own right. I tussled with him a bit, and uh, my man has some moves. Well, unfortunately, his move is exit stage left for the time being, as that Queen 4 is just smothered by Ren Lin. 166,600 going to be headed to Biao Ding. Finally able to break the seal as he was 0 for 7 coming into this final table here in Monte Carlo, his ninth cash at Triton as he works his way toward 3 million in career caches. So I'll be very curious here to see if Ren decides to sort of maintain his same game plan or if we start to see him open it up a bit more with some of the larger preflop shoves, particularly against the bunched shorter stacks. And Paul really would be the main target there. But this hand looks like Igor's time to shine. Yaroshevsky under the gun, King Jack suited. 2.8 million in front of him. He has inherited short stack duties upon the departure of Ding Biao. It goes almost uh, all of it. Ace-3 suited for boss on the button. Could prove tempting, especially with the absence of Ren Lin. But quite a bit of ICM pressure, I would imagine, given that there are three total shorter stacks with six remaining here and healthy pay jumps. Yeah, I think as we expected, we'll see him let it go. But he's had quite a few spots where he's you know, had reasonably playable hands and just hasn't really felt that the time was right for him to enter the pot. You know, even the best amongst us can start to get a little bit frustrated when we just can't quite get the right cards in the right situations. Do we know what Poker Dream is? Winfred Yu, who hosted us out in Vietnam at the Hoi Anna Resort. Beautiful. It's his uh, outfit. I love Chewy now that he's a businessman in the poker space. Wants to keep an eye on the competition, making sure maybe no one's out there developing any competing tech. Oh. Rest assured. I mean, I, I'm actually more interested in the cooperative elements of the industry. Shame I've on me. My I head's in the wrong place. <laughs> Tells I've you everything about my character. I've spent enough time competing in, in poker. I'm, I'm excited to see. You're ready to collab. I'm ready to collab. Mm. Yeah. Love it's it. actually one of the reasons I love rock climbing so much. A complete pivot to a different topic, but... Yeah. No, understand you and Stephen Chidwick often, under the cover of darkness at times, will even yes. get out there and do a little bit of bouldering. It's so much fun. In Red Rocks. Yeah. And one of your good friends, MJ, is quite a climber himself. <laughs> MJ Gonzalez? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Out there, Unless he is lied he? to me. I don't, I don't <laughs> see him being a climber. Fair enough. Maybe it was a, a passion of times past. Could have been. Could have been. Meanwhile, you want to climb your way into a Triton event, the only place to officially do it is GG Poker. Sign up using the code Triton underscore 2023 and just sink your teeth into all that they have on offer. Flipping goats, bounties, an incredible amount of money given away at the world's biggest poker site and the only place to play <laughs> online qualifiers and find your way here at a Triton Super High Roller Series. It's GG Poker. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, it's the Ren Lin Show, A6 Suited, the latest episode as he opens the minimum from the hijack.
And this is just such a great spot for Ren to be in position against the second in chips and to have top pair. Certainly not going to hurt matters. Out flopping Chow, who flatted with a couple of fours from the big. Just this min bet. It's like autopilot right now for Ren. Yeah, and he's got that kind of sly grin on his face. Yeah, mischievous, isn't it? Yeah, a bit, a bit of mischief coming out of that seat. That fours taking a swing at the turn at that price. Second check out of Chow. I feel we may see him check here. Don't be crazy. We, <laughs> we also may not. I could see some pot control with that A6 and maybe yeah. to induce. Could also just apply so much pressure to Chow, though, as the second biggest stack in the room. All those shorties out there. Certainly. And he absolutely rates to have the best hand. I'm just wondering how likely it is he feels he can get called by a worse one. And he might increase the possibility of getting called in this line. <laughs> just look at this. In case there was any concerns, the six rolls right on off. Indeed it does. Aces <laughs> up for Ren Lin. Good on Chow for not biting. Yeah, and now Ren has to make a decision of how <laughs> large does he want to bet here. At this point in the hand, we can be relatively certain that our opponent has something fairly weak, like a pair of eights. The bet on the flop was very small. A jack is plausible. You know, Ren did employ some theatrics on the turn, so perhaps we could see some of the stronger hands that Chow could hold check. But yeah, he's, he's really going for the jugular here, relatively speaking. And... Yeah, sizing pretty far up you. there. And, <laughs> you know, when we see these sorts of things with Ooh, the fours, yeah. we wonder, is it air? Yeah, oh. we're in again this classic six, your bluff six, catching six. in Texas Hold'em situation. And the question really becomes, you, you know, what types of hands do I think my opponent could take this line with that I beat? You know, often some of the more equitable holdings, queen tens, nine tens, turned clubs, you know, maybe not on the ace high board at all times, but those are the ones that we might expect to be betting. Um, not always the case that we see players take these slightly more unintuitive wow. hands to glory. Nicely done, though. Sometimes your hand is just quite weak and the bet is quite big. And in this case, very much the right decision to let go of it. And not just in terms of having had the loser, but rather just zooming out and surveying the spot. Yeah. I mean, it's an unnecessary risk to take yeah, right now. I would be inclined to stack. agree. Sometimes, I'm sure you've been guilty of this in the past, we ask, why is our opponent betting so big? My hand looks weak. Surely he thinks I'm going to fold. Call. Oh, no, he just has two pair. Well, sometimes you, you do even worse than call Chewy. You, you check race. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I guess you do. <laughs> Been there. English, English. He broke the English. Well, the English may be broken, but the run good certainly is not for Ren Lin. Again, he opens a pot. King Jack offsuit, and at some point, one would imagine somebody's going to step up and say, you can't possibly have it every single time and Certainly. play back at Ren. Certainly, but they're going to need the right hand, and it's going to have to be the right stack, and that's not it. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I'm not enough of an altruist to sit at a table and watch someone just pummel while I languish and think, oh, I'm so happy for that guy. <laughs> you know, I know you tend to be positive, and it's not that I'm a, a venomous individual, but the envy can run so deep within me I, in I these see. moments. I'm hearing you. Right? So what, what are you Star hoping Wars, happens to him instead? I would have been on the dark side. Uh, you know, yeah. if you got to go with the force and the dark, I'm on the dark side. I just, I own it. I know it. Okay. I mean, right? respect for being authentic about it. 
I myself probably wouldn't be. No, you're a Jedi. We know this. Yeah, all right. You don't get jealous out there when you see this? Do I get jealous? No, I mean, because, like, I know that at some point it's been me, you know? And at some point again in the future, it, it will be me. I don't think I play good enough for it to be me. Yeah, but you have your own skills. I mean, you stand alone kind of in this role that you've carved out in, in commentary, right? I'm sure there's Do many I? aspiring commentators that look up to you and think just the same thing that you might think about these players. You ever think about that? Or perhaps even players themselves. This is incredible. I, I didn't anticipate psychoanalysis would be a part of the procedures here yeah, today. But, but here we are. Free of charge. Yeah. Chewy. Sort of okay. You have a lot to be grateful for, my friend. Offering some perspective, yeah. if you will. <laughs> Still, though, with all of that said, Chewy, I do feel yeah. compelled to say if you run that good while you're at my table, F you. Yeah, and, and that's <laughs> fair enough. People do have that coming. Everyone's signing up to win, so if you do run that good, you know, beware. Yeah. I, I Ali's will. not going to have, you know, overly warm feelings for you oh. in that exact moment. It's just... I want to experience what you're experiencing. Right. Naturally. 6-7 suited. And Chow choosing his spot here in such a way where, you know, Ren, his, his most feared opponent, given the stacks, is in the small blind. Kind of the hardest spot to play back from. Oh, and Boss with a very pretty one here. Yeah. Ace-Jack suited. But is he going to want to play back? Third in chips behind Chow. He may and he may not. So the, the benefit, of course, of playing back here is you realize all your equity. You know, if your opponent has a hand like they have, you prevent them from connecting, you prevent them from bluffing you out. The downside, you know, we can't really justify, I think, 3-betting and folding to a shove. You know, 3-betting to call a shove. We kind of want a specific opponent. And they're just wagering all our chips. Wouldn't Ace-10 call us? It's unclear. Ace-10 suited, probably. He does go for it. Yeah, he does. It's good timing. I thought perhaps the flat and under rep would be a thing. Oh. Also suspected that maybe he would <laughs> presume no, that busy. Chow's <laughs> opening range would be quite narrow with Lin in position behind him. Yeah, and I think that that likely was going through his mind. But keep in mind, these players have probably played each other a good bit, not just over the course of today or even yesterday, but the week previous. So. The you know, boss may have his own reads on, yeah. on his man. Now, I did say Ren in position. On that occasion, it was in the small blind, but just in general. Sort of here after Here as acting. a theme, yeah, you know. Absolutely. Having that big, white-hot stack of Ren yeah, sizzling I mean, Even his king-8 offsuit, like, if he really wanted to, he could have taken it to it's glory. It's funny. I thought maybe he was just going to take it to the streets on Chow and point yeah. out, there's some ICM that you're disregarding here. Let me remind you totally. what's really going on here with a million up top. Perhaps waiting, you know, just favoring an ace. Sometimes there's something to be said about, you know, you're running so hot, you have everything going for you. Do you really want to push in that? You don't want to overextend, right, when you have a good thing going on. And you know, this is another situation where this Jack-10 suited, very, very strong hand on the button. I myself would feel quite compelled to just be all in and, and end it right there. A6 suited though, yeah, being given an see. opportunity. Webster probably gonna shove against the button raise, Ren playing so many hands. Uh, not out of the realm of possibility that he just gets a fold and picks up the pot right here. As we see Ren's hand quite strong, I imagine if we see Webster shove, he will get called and we're off to the races. At least the Ren I'm familiar with, not super interested in folding this type of hand, nor would I be for that matter. 3.2 though, would be a blemish on an otherwise immaculate sheet. And right, it, would, but it would double Webster into that six and a half million, which is a playable stack. Nevertheless, the opportunity to take matters into his own hands with a hand that plays quite well against a multitude of holdings that Webster yeah. would make this move with. You see 46% equity here. And as previously alluded to, 
you know, him being very much uh, able to afford this kind of this kind of call. You want to uh, rock paper scissors for who goes over and walks Webster to the payout desk? Jack high flop, top pair for Ren. Didn't mean to cut you off. Though. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I I think that even if he you know were to double him up, let's say he does catch an ace or a four here. Uh, it's almost not even that bad, right? He just kind of keeps doing his thing. There's still a lot of pressure. Of course, he would prefer to win. Drop one player out. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, there there's it is. the four. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> <laughs> to the delight of perhaps all but Ren Lin, his bulldozing is briefly paused. Yeah, very nice hand from Webster there. Really... Very critical river card, as critical as it gets. And the reason that it's not so bad to double Webster up is because of the landscape kind of staying favorable to Ren in spite of that in terms of chip distribution? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's again, of course, preferable for him to win the pot, right, and just take out a player and have an even more overwhelming chip lead. But if we look at the stacks, he still has more than two times the chip stack of the second place player. We now see a little bit more bunching around the second, third, and fourth place stacks. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have at the bottom, you know, very similar chip counts. But I don't foresee that this really is going to sort of force him to change much of what is happening in a lot of open raising, continuation betting, and just sort of leaning on the other players who just really have to be careful about clashing in a way that prevents their ability from laddering up without having the right hands in the right situations. It's interesting because oftentimes we would characterize what we've observed as the big stack leaning. The trouble is that Ren's had a hand that was worthy of right. a lot of the action that he's put in so far, so it doesn't feel like a lean. But totally. TBD, if he cools off and all of a sudden the holdings tend to look a little less attractive pre-flop if he continues to pressure. Absolutely. Not, not gonna get involved in this one from the cutoff as an ace on the button. And that's Pipes the up. risk, right? Like with the big stack, sometimes they are just running hot. Right. And oh my, Webster with a very pretty one here. Fresh off the double, Queen Jack suited. Takes a peek. The updated chip counts in the app. I'm overtly thrilled to be all in with this hand. Love me some suited Broadway's Ollie. So does Webster. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> no side. <laughs> He's all trying desperately to morph that deuce into an ace, but <laughs> unfortunately, he will bid adieu to 600,000 of his chips. Passed over to Webster, who's surging. Yeah, and just like that, he is just behind second place. Waiting updated chips, and indeed, he trails Heng Yang Chow by just half a million. They run third and second, respectively. All hail Ren Lin, though. 17 and a half million still in Lin stack. 7.8 million average, Pua. 1.7. Here's Ben with the king queen off. Six and a half. Under the gun. Huh? This looks. It's kind of a nice idea, putting in just a bit more than half his chips. Kind of similar play that we saw Igor employ earlier. Ben's such a great player in his own right. Take it down. 1.7 million. Raise and take it for Ben, who's just quietly been basking in the shadow of that which has been developing to his left. Yeah, he's just cruising along. Minding his business. Doing his thing. Letting the game come to him. Well, I thought we were going to have us say something about Ben War there, where you said something, I said something, we kept until someone ran out. But 
<laughs> there goes that inherently adversarial <laughs> underpinning of mine. Amazing. We're on the same team. Yeah. We are who we are. <laughs> And this is going to be the first opportunity, maybe, to see whether or not Ren is going to get out of line. And I say out of line, but obviously it's exactly what we would expect him to be doing. But it's the 10-9 off yeah. suit that I'm referring to under the gun. It's on the weaker -raise. end of, of a hand, for sure. This King-10, is it's hard to proceed with. Cool. It's a hand that nobody else under the gun is going to be opening right now. It's just Ren who has this luxury. That is true. And fortunately for Hing Yang Chow, as he decides to defend, he has got Ren dominated. Indeed he does. Let's see what the flop brings. Got shot straight draw, more than we can say for this 10 high of Ren Lin. The developments on this ace-queen-5 board, Chow checks it. And Ren should probably be aware of the fact that, you know, Chow hasn't been playing particularly loose. Uh, his calling range out of the small blind here is very likely to contain high cards. He could have a pair. Um, but I don't anticipate cool. that Ren thinks he'll get a fold right away very often. And perhaps that may mean that we see some multiple, uh, multiple barrels incoming. Oh my. Jack rolling right on off as the check. Call post flop promptly rewarded. Chow checking once more. Note that Lin does have a two way straight draw of his own now. Indeed, he does. And I think that this, okay, he wisely avoids disaster. Yeah, check back. Now a board pairing ace. I can't imagine Chow's worried about being up against a full house as played. No, especially with the speed at which Ren checked the turn. Mm. He could have an ace, surely. But at least two pair, I imagine, would give further consideration to putting more money in. And with the hopes that Ren does have an ace and an ace alone, Chow leads for one and a half, 50% pot. Yeah, no way for him to know that Ren was sort of so weak in his range. But had he checked, he may have faced a bet. So. Nicely done by Mr. Chow. Yeah. Fallibility at long last for Ren Lin's chips, which seemed invincible yeah still way out in front but he's got a he's got a, a new situation to deal with having dropped a few of those chips off in his neighbor's uh stacks over this last orbit not quite as deep as he once was though courtesy of the new blind level which will be just around the corner 200 400 000, as we bring you back to the desk here, Ben Heath, Igor Yaroshevsky, the two short stacks, Alina Shot, Andrew Lucky, Chewy Lichtenberger. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Absolutely. It's quite yeah. sad that it, it does is. have to come to a close, but maybe you'll come and see us again. Do you have plans on, on playing more Tritons moving forward, despite, obviously, the poor result on this oh, particular yeah, festival? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I played seven tournaments. I didn't cash. Like, this is nothing outside the ordinary. Yeah, um, yeah I do. Uh, Those Chewy Bucks are on loan to the field. Oh, yes. You're coming back for them. Yeah. And right. I want interest. <laughs> Love that. Okay, let's end on that note then. As both Chewy and myself will be stepping aside when we come back from the break, continuing coverage of this final table in the 25K GG Millions, and you'll be in the competent hands of Henry Kilbane and Randy Liu. Stay close. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. Poker the biggest event. poker site. Now larger than all of the GT Poker. Chuck, 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 Chuck. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. 
We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all new betacr.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets betacr.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Good game to Ferdinand, well fought. Half of the ninth place finish. But we'll leave behind eight players to do battle for $122,000. Butcher bringing his career Triton earnings up to $566,000 and change. His third consecutive cash here in Monte Carlo. Pocket fives now for Wren. 450K. Can tell Paul's not thrilled throwing away the Jack Eight suited, but he likes to get in there. Of course, we all do. Jack Ten suited a different proposition on the button for Ding Biao. Indeed, it is. It's not a trivial spot for him. It is sort of the type of hand that likes to shove at times. Calling, of course, always an attractive option. His main concern, I suppose, with calling hands like this is that at this stage of the event, uh, Ren is likely to be somewhat confident that he has two high cards. Uh, this is actually a, quite a good flop for him with the flush draw, the presence of the ace, certainly something he can represent if he so chooses. Let's see how Ren proceeds. Out of position, wondering perhaps how much ace x is ending Biao's range as a flat on the button. Apparently not enough to dissuade him from following through for 325,000. And does Ding have options in terms of how he wants to approach from this point forward? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he could go for the raise, but typically I think, you know, most of the time we want to just proceed through a call. The challenge with raising is that, let's say he has a hand like Ace Jack or Ace 10 suited that he chose not to shove preflop with. Um, it tends to not really accomplish all that much with a raise. As we can see, you know, when he is against a hand like Ren has, he's only up against the two outs. Ren picks up a gut shot now. I imagine we'll see him check. It doesn't seem like Ding has too many hands which would fold to this bet. Uh, even the flush draw seemingly enough of a hand to call once more and unless Ren wants to go for three streets here and try to push Ding off of an ace uh, which he may you know and possibly especially because the, the bigger aces for Ding we expect to have spoken up on the button as a three better pre agreed yeah I think we can eliminate ace king and ace queen from Ding's potential holdings here and if Ren does decide to bet the turn and the heart comes, 
Uh, that that would be a card that I would imagine he decides to continue bluffing on. And as we can see here, if Ding does call the turn bet and the heart comes, that will be sort of the dream scenario and likely result in him facing uh, just the amount of aggression he's looking for. Second barrel, 675,000. Perhaps tethered to the fact that the wheel draw yeah. has presented itself? I think so. In a sense, he's sort of naming his own price here. Um, we don't know what size Ding would bet if he, say, has a hand like Ace-10 suited and Ren checks. We do see him continue here. We're going to have a very interesting river coming up. And I maintain that if the heart comes, we see Ren continue to go for the bluff. Instead, it's a board pairing deuce. Yeah, and at this point, it's quite challenging for Ren to know that he has the best hand. Some of these suited broadways certainly candidates for Ding to have shoved on him preflop with. Um, we'll see, though. Sub 1 SPR for Ding Biao. 2.9 with 3-4 in the middle. And Ren does check, opening the door. Perhaps. Yeah, and I think, I think he will walk through this door. I certainly would if I were him. I mean, jack high, no hope to win if we check. And does he safely remove the ace X from Ren Lin's range? No, I don't think he can. I think Ren could absolutely have a hand like a weak ace. Ooh, he does check it. Very unfortunate for him when he sees these fives. It's not as though he thinks the jack high is ever a winner. It's more so. You just decide, this is my time to shine. 1.5 million, what's up, man? You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. Because we've all been there. There is a weird spidey six sense sort of aspect to poker. Indeed, there is. But those six senses can walk us right into some very <laughs> murky spots that suddenly see us looking up at a far bigger pot than we intended to play with a hand that shouldn't really have found its way there <laughs> and going, how did this all happen? Right. Yep. No, I've been there. It's... uh. It's sort of what you ask for when you take a walk on the wild side yeah. and decide, you know what, I'm tired of this guy, you know, betting in position every time. And in that case, likely it would have worked, but how can you know? A lot of times a function of high V-pip, you know, high, high C-bet frequencies. Yeah. You start to just oh tell my. yourself, no, oh it's not possible. And Lady Gaga, <laughs> he's, he's back. back. Ren Lin... Wow. Just like that, blind versus blind, Bogdanov, nothing wrong with taking the queen 10 suited, no, I would course. imagine, with 4.2. I think and it's just a great play. Getting it in front and just runs into, of all things, pocket queens. <laughs> Did disaster. we contribute to this? For Yulian, I'm not going to hold myself accountable for this wow. development. <laughs> top set up against top pair as the K's card rolls off. 10 becomes somewhat relevant. The 10 is very relevant. As see. We see all the queens on the board. I thought you were going to refer to the two on the rail there. Oh, very nice. Now an official draw dead, though, for Bogdanov, who did end up making two pair, by the way. My goodness. Another FT under that nation's belt here, as the best to ever do it from that nation made their way, way here, took on Triton's best, but falling short on this occasion is Yulian. $122,000, courtesy of an eighth-place finish as the field enjoys a pay jump of 44,000. I do like to dance, my friend. Yeah. I can cut a rug. I, I, I kind there. of imagine so. If you have style, I could see you moving out there. Are you inviting me to a dance? <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm inviting you, <laughs> but... <laughs> I could see that you've got some moves. Perhaps over the years you've uh, displayed them at times, some if, of these poker gatherings. If only my moves could be translated into poker. To millions of dollars. To millions of dollars, yes. Yeah. Instead of just if only. holes in my socks. Right. Yaroshevsky making a move from the small blind, and it is in the form of a limp here at this 150-300k level. A deuce happy to check back for Chow, though we do see bottom of range sometimes activate in the interest of not having to play post. Indeed we do. And so far we've seen, I think, three, oh my. Three deuces? Is that what you were going to say? Yes, <laughs> but of course. Gutter and two overs, though, for Yaroshevsky. Yeah, we're definitely going to see it.
A million dollars. That is what these final six players here at the Triton Super High Roller Series, 25K GG Millions are playing for, Randy. For some people, a trip saver. For others, a shot at glory and their first Triton trophy. And when I turn my attention to the Triton Poker Plus app, Randy, it is an all-Asian, a Malaysian contingent affair. Three of the remaining six battling it out for the final Hold'em trophy of the series. Yeah, and they, this is a very big distribution. You see the chip leader of so many chips, Ren Lin, his first time at a Triton stop, um, holding 16 million in chips, going to try to lean on everyone. But, of course, the very experienced Malaysians right in the middle, Chin Wei Lim and Paul Pua, we know they know how to take down a title and really just try to navigate the situation to make the most of it. Yeah, touching on boss Paul Poir there for a moment, in a bit of a sandwich has the chip leader to his direct right and then Webster Lim, fellow countryman, to his left who has him covered. And we've touched on Webster, two-time Triton champion, seems to just be consistent throughout, not just this series, but this year as well. And we've touched on Danny Tang, Soiza, Lee, Lim. They just all seem to show up to these Triton series, and they've built a bit of a reputation uh, as one of the uh, toughest crews. Yeah, right, I agree. You know, Webster, to me, has always been one of the most solid and consistent players of all time, even before he started playing the Triton series. So it's no surprise to see him also make another deep run here. I think that he's going to have the good patience to find the right spots to attack. Uh, I think he's got a good chance, even though he's not currently at the top. Well, let's not sleep on Igor Yaroshevsky, who final tabled this very event at the last series as well. Got Ben Heath currently sat in fifth. Eight big blinds, the Brit also looking for his first Triton trophy. But perhaps the biggest storyline, Boss Paul Pua looking for his second trophy to ch tie Richard it Young. It could happen. It could happen. Let's <laughs> throw it down to the main stage as the final six. Battle it out for the seven-figure payout up top. Chip counts brought to you by betacr.eu, 200k, 400k, the 400,000 big blind ante, 187 runners here in this record-breaking field, all guaranteed 228,000 for their efforts with the departure of Ding Biao in seventh. Here we go. It's go time. Of your seat kind of stuff. Not to take anything away from the PLO. For the PLO fans out there, we are equally as excited for the four-card Hold'em streets. But for now... Course. That's tomorrow, don't worry. Yeah, exactly. Pure PLO. Ba You'll bounties, get your time. Bounties galore. Yaroshevsky in the cutoff. Currently shortest stack. Does still have some fold equity, but... He yeah. does, but he needs to try and navigate in a way where hopefully Ben Heath gets it in first and he can kind of get that ladder late. Ladders are really big right now. And yeah. this is a little interesting because King Jack is normally a good hand to reshove with. He might still do it, but he needs to keep in mind that he's only got eight big blinds to start this hand, and once Hing Ying Chao opens, he'll be priced in the call a lot of his range. Still going to take the shot. Fearless is Ben Heath, as we've seen throughout action. Back on Chow. Let's ask him for a count. Price-wise, it, it, it's good for the night suited. But then again, do you really want to double up a fearsome opponent? He does not. That is a huge pickup for Heath, increasing his stack. By close to 50%, Randy, without even being all in at risk. Very, very good. And now Yaroshevsky knows he's got to make a play soon. He would have called blind v blind. Is he trolling? I, I didn't actually see what Lin had there. So, with that pick up, Heath up to 12 bigs, Webster Lim. Rockets. 
double check. <coughs> look, they third look good. in chips, first to act. Loves this because he knows their stack's behind. They're going to try and lean into him as well. Mm -hmm. This might be one of those stacks. Although he is super short, he knows that he almost always is going to get called when he jams. Oh, I mean, if he jams. Discipline from Yaroshevsky. Yeah, it's just better for him to take a spot where he can open, rip it. And Paul's got Ace Jack in the big. He's currently sitting in fourth. How much you have? Uh, eight, eight point one. Eight million. Yeah. This is close for Boss. Knows he has fold equity. Knows that Webster's is going to have some raise folds from under the gun. But can he play passively and just call to perhaps save himself in this spot? I wouldn't blame him if he jams, though. Usually Ace Jack will just fold out a lot of hands. You're doing okay against some calls like 10s and 9s. <laughs> really pondering this decision. All options on the table. Can yeah, we know avoid that. disaster here? Paul is the type of player who wants to shoot for the win, too. Shoot for the win, he does, wow. Randy. Snap. Oh, Snap call yeah. from Webster Lim as number one on Malaysia's all-time money list. Gets it in with just 7% equity. That is music to the ears of Yaroshevsky and Heath as Boss went for the rejam, pushing some fold equity but picking up <laughs> equity <laughs> on the queen nine eight board it's never easy randy he's got a chance four oh, rounds twice 12.6 million chip pop if lim can hold here he's gonna eliminate his fellow countrymen Triton co-founder, number one on Malaysia's all-time money list. Title two is going to have to come another day, Randy. A couple of PLO events for Boss to get in the mix with. As he looks to tie his co-founder, Richard Young, on two titles apiece. Big smiles as always, Randy. Have you ever seen that man? No, smile on his win face. or lose, he's got a lot of smiles yeah. on his face and humbling victory, gracious oh, defeat. <laughs> Webster, like a true champion as well, just given a nod of approval to Boss. He knows it's all part of the game. That's what they sign up for. As poor. Out in six, 34 caches, one title, and now eclipsing the 17 million in Triton earnings. He'll be back, you know it. <laughs> you think? <laughs> 228,000 for his run here in this record breaking field. Would have been a fairy tale ending to the Holden part of the series to see one of the founders take down a record-breaking event but sixth place will have to do and as Randy said he'll be back especially with them Terminator sunglasses that he's sure got going on be. yes and that is great for Chin Wei Lim Webster pretty much neck to neck uh, with the chip leader just separated by one big blind and now we continue Igor got that pay jump he's got King 9 Clear short stack. He's got to look for an opportunity. The big blind is the very next hand for him, as well as the big blind ante. King nine, it's not a bad hand in the spot. Yeah, he's just locked up You know, an additional 73,000 with that ladder. A ladder that is perhaps fortunate to get. And Lim just gets to click call he's here. He's got to pay this one off. He knows that Igor's going to jam like worse aces, broadways. Yeah, sub seven bigs. And it doesn't hurt his stack that much, 2.6 million, given he's got 14. 
I'd be very surprised if he doesn't do anything but call. And there's the orange chip going in. Yeah, really. Wow. Mulling it over. It's not in bad shape, 40%. Igor Yaroshevsky. That decision. All in brought to you by BetACR.eu as the Malaysian click come over. Boss, Soiza. So Danny Tang there, Lun Lun as well. All on Webster's rail. King in the window with an ace behind. A little bit of a sweat there. Oh, Paul's back to rail. He's like, what happened? Yaroshevsky. Yeah, it's a five out once now. Look at the rail. Supporting Webster. Webster with back-to-back -back eliminations. Dispatching of Igor Yaroshevsky, who has made back-to-back -back finals tables in this very event, Randy. Came fourth. The last time he ventured out to play the GG Millions Live Edition. He loves it. Fifth here. Well, yeah. That's an insane Igor. run. Also got a ninth place finish earlier in the 30K for $100,000. So two final tables under his belt. Clearly a feared player on the online felt in the live one as well. We'll see if he can kind of pick up a title at a future stop. Certainly someone to keep an eye on. Some impressive runs under his belt already. 301,000 for his efforts. And with the back-to-back -back eliminations of Chin Wei Lim, a.k.a. Webster, he's now in pole position, dispatched of two opponents, now guaranteed 380,000, and looking to become a three-time Triton champion. Yeah, just two hands ago, he was sitting on 20 big blinds. Now at 44 with the chip lead. Very healthy. And let's see how he's going to attack this situation. Does have a dusty 8-3 offsuit, more of a blackjack hand. It's worth saying, by the way, Randy, that Webster's second title came into the GG Super Millions back in Vietnam, which was the first time that we held that event. So he loves the GG format. <laughs> he knows how to close this out. Yeah. And we have that little bit of a different wrinkle here where we play number of hands per level. Yes. And also, they got the seat draw thing going on. So something he had experience uh, from the, the win he had at the GG Millions. Looks like he chose a pretty good seat, if you ask me. <laughs> this guy's so f always having a good time, isn't he, Renlin? Oh, I love Renlin. First time character. I've ever seen him play, but uh, I'm pretty pretty big fan. Am I right in saying he sits the top of the GPI rankings in Asia? If I I'm don't know. I've never looked at that myself, but why don't you let yeah, me know? Yeah, we'll have a little look. I think it was Danny Tang that I overheard saying that. No. I just know him as the Lady Gaga fan. And Webster, chip leading, opening the jacket off, picking it up, and really just cruising. It is, by the way. Tony Ren Lin, 24th overall, ranked number one in Asia. Second is Punap Punsri. Third is Danny Tang. That perhaps needs to get updated. Right, Danny Tang should move Correct. up a bit, right? But there's a 430 point difference between Ren Lin and Danny Tang. So I don't think with that win, it. it's going to eclipse. But also, Ren Lin's going to gather some points here. Yeah. Wow, really coming down to the wire there. I'm just happy that we have the best players more and more just coming out every single time. Oh. <laughs> 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 Four-handed. 
A fireworks start to this frame for us, Randy. We just get to come in on the back end of Ali Najad, one of the most talented players in the world, Lucky Chewy, mm -hmm. in the booth, providing us with his banter and his insights into a game that you know we get to sit Ooh. here. Interesting one coming up. We do. Sorry to interrupt. No, no worries. Yeah, we got like a 40 big line situation between number one versus number two limping. They still have a heart, and King Jack is one of those hands that is strong enough to raise, which is what he's going to do. And now Ren Lin, never folding. But I would think it would be a bit excessive maybe to kind of go aggressive here, even though this is the hand you could do it with. I like the limp call. We do see Ben Heath at the bottom with 10 bigs. Feels like it would be Ooh, not flush draw. a bit of a punt. We are on a 88k ladder. First against second in chips. Ben Heath just gets to watch on. He's like, hang on, I've already had two ladders in the last 15 minutes. How about a third one, perhaps? Raps is going to maintain control. Does have two overs, a lot of back doors, and it's nice that he's kind of got that diamond in hand too to block some of the backdoor diamond continues. But of course, we know not flush draw going nowhere. And because Renlin's covered, he's just going to check call here because he does want to create a situation where maybe he's just flipping for his tournament life when they're doing so well. Lucky seven. On the turn, does present backdoor diamonds. And once again, it's type of card where usually the check caller does kind of lead here, but he doesn't want to invite the door for his opponent to pump it up and really put his risk at stack, at risk. Does check through, ace high v king high. All the obvious flop draws, bricking, hearts, straights, backdoor diamonds. Feels like a spot where perhaps both try and take their showdown. Unless Lin wants to maybe try and shake Lim off a bigger ace X. I'd be pretty happy to check down ace high normally just because I know the big stack likes to raise very polar. So like those 10X offsuits, uh, just hands that have no connection. And you can just win at showdown a lot. Plus he blocks the bigger aces anyways. This is interesting. The stand up mid hand with an action with action to still go. <laughs> Maybe just the way he plays though. That's a great point actually. Wasn't really paying that much attention. It was more like Yeah, have we ever seen anyone do this and then check? I can't say I have. Not at a final table with four left. Usually it's like closing the action, but it's probably it, just how he plays. It's it's peculiar, Randy. I mean, it's, it's thrown me off a bit. And I'm sat here in the booth. I can see the cards. Imagine if you're out there oh, in the moment. He's reaching for chips. Oh, he's reaching for a lot of chips. He's going to try to represent the nine or the seven, it seems. Turning it into a bluff. Looks like he was leaning over to try and see the size of the pot as he's gone north. Over bet. Wow. All of a sudden, this king high call becomes a bit of a thing. It's not the greatest hand to yeah, call the jack off of with. Yeah, it feels pretty bad, right? Yes. And oh. also, Ren Lin can easily have a 7x as played. This is a tough customer. Makes sense why you say he's number one on the Asia GPI. <laughs> How about that for a highlight hand? Bluffing with the best of it, but still entertaining nonetheless. As he deals with the tricky customer. On his left, Webster was chip leader. Prior to that hand playing out, Ren Lin now back out in pole position with 18 million. All guaranteed 380,000 for the reference, which is insane to say because there are 25Ks out there, Andy, where first prize is 380,000. 
We're dishing that out to fourth place. Correct. A million dollars up top. Let's One. see how Renlin's going to take the chip leading. He's really created a gap between him and Webster, which could shake things up a bit. Webster with a blackjack hand. Yeah. Again. See in the background is Raul Lundlund, Boss Paul, Mike Soizer. Oh, you see this? I do, because he knows that Chow is kind of handcuffed out of the small with Heath in the big on the shorter stack. I do, hang on a minute, do apologize, Randy. I've completely butchered that. I thought it was Webster on the button for a second there. No, it was But it yeah, does make sense small. to lean blind v blind because once Heath is out of the way, Chow's in a bit of an ICM cage. This board is getting quite rough for both players. Webster still has top pair. But on this board texture, I don't think he'd want to bet. I also don't think he's looking to check fold. I will say that it's a decent spot for Chow to fire something, which he does. It's a very small bet, though, 500 to 2.6. Makes sense, right, on a monotone four-liner? Yeah, I mean, sh I'd assume he'd want to bet a lot of rivers as well. Because Webster can easily have a random pair or like a one spade <laughs> high card hand, and rivers the jack. What a ridiculous hand. Glorious. Jack ball, corner pocket. To give Chow the check mark. Jack. Eight, no good. 3.6 million chip pop. Going Chow's way, courtesy of the Red Jack on the river. And now Heath kind of stranded at the bottom of the chip counts. All eyes going to be on him. He's going to need to make a move sooner rather than later. Still in the hunt for his maiden Triton trophy. One of the nicest guys on tour. Respected by... Everyone. Average stack right now is 29 bigs. Oh, do I hate that? <laughs> okay, before he was saying fold to final table, now he's saying like fold to heads left, up. Right? Fold to heads up. That's a new one. That's hilarious. He probably also says fold to the money, right? Like, there's no questions asked. He's on the bubble with, like, second place chips, fold to the money. That sounds like a Renlin line. Fold to level two, fold yeah. to late reg. Fold to day two. Fold to the money, fold yeah. to day two. Fold my laundry. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't think he says that one. Nah, he definitely doesn't say fold <laughs> my laundry. Have you seen the jacket yet? Was my read right? The Renlin jacket? The Renlin jacket, very similar. Since I, I know what you're saying in terms of style, uh, but I, I, I do like that one. Chow rocking the poker dream hoodie. Shout out to good friends of the Triton Tour, Winfred Yu, two-time champion. Is Winfred. Oh. Two times the blind here. Barking shark for Lin out the big. You never know what he's thinking. Does he know what he's thinking? It was just he wanted to say something. He was like, oh, it's too soon. I already used that line. Fold to heads up. I got to wait like an orbit. <laughs> that's, that's a great point. There's probably something along those lines. <laughs> Just can't help himself. Was like, mm, what can I say? Oh, That'll be mm. crafty. Casey and Punnett back there as well. Oh, what a rail here for Webster. One of the biggest we've seen so far this series. 
back-to-back -back nights. Danny Tang, part of that click, taking out title number five late last night. Once again, Ramlin getting the 7 3 off suit back to back hands. Is that the same suits? I feel they were black. You might be right. If it wasn't 7 of clubs, 3 of spades, it was 7 of spades, 3 of clubs, because they were black. He's grabbing orange chips, and the intention is to lean on the second place stack, who has to play snug. Especially the shorter Ben Heath gets, the tighter the second and third place stacks have to play. This 8 6 going to mock. Very so big. There it is. Oh, do you, do you win that trophy as well? You do, do you know? indeed. The GG Millions one? Yes, sir. That's a special one. Just can't get that. Triton Monte Carlo, GG Millions 2023. Comes with a million dollars cash money, as well as a Triton trophy. Does it look like like a gold bar that it would be in like Fort Knox? Like it's That base, I mean, if you took off the GG Millions, just a rock solid. It does. Piece of gold. Keen eye for gold, Randy Lou. Heath is min raising here. Keen eight also, and Ren Lin, our chip leader, s takes a swig of water as he's got pocket aces. He took a look already, didn't he? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, has he even swallowed the water? I'm not even sure. Oh, there, there he goes. You know, the good news for Ren, poker's going pretty well for him, but if poker doesn't work out, there's a few positions on Broadway. So he's min re raise, and this is nasty. Because Ben Heath was obviously going to fold to, like, any bigger sizing. But against a Minri raise, what does he do here? Especially with King 8, which is, like, not doing good against these monster hands as well as Ace King. There's 3 million out there already. Have you ever seen a play like this? 8 big blind open, you get 3 bet mid. And you don't know really what to do. I mean, he's got five and a half bigs back. He's getting laid eight to one on a call. Third in chips is Chow with 26. Oh, man, I think he's going to pitch it. Oh, no. It looked like he was going to pitch it for a second, didn't he? He's going to take the flop. Well, we know if he... Any pair, he's out. That's it. Fortunately for Heath, does not connect. And Ren Lin. Lin, yeah, he wins the maximum with that min re raise. He raises oh, even to one. one more blind. Heath's out. GG sponsored pro. Ren Lin looking for his GG millions title and Triton title. and. For those of you perhaps looking to make these live streams all that little bit more sweaty, head over to pokestake.com, scan the QR code on your screens right now to buy action from some of the best players around the world. The official staking partner for Triton. You can support the journey of your favorite players in all poker tournaments worldwide. Reap the, re the rewards of big victories. All purchases are free. No rake or transaction fees. Perhaps, most importantly, all winnings are guaranteed by Poker Stake. We've already had some big stories this series. Soiza coming third just a few days ago in that mystery bounty. He had action up on Poker Stake. So many players that come to these series. Fatal Holtz, Eibinger, all 
seven paces. Well, Charles got ace queen. Monster, given how short Ben Heath is. Full bigs in the big. And he's put in two already, right? The big blind, big blind ante. He's got nine six offsuit. I mean, I feel like he's just priced in. He's clearly the short stack. No one to outlast. He's put in half his stack. And Chow would probably jam much worse than ace queen, I would assume. Just I mean, he wouldn't be doing too bad against like a big little, although in this spot he has got two overcards against his nine six. Such a brutal spot. It's go time. Can't fold. One point seven five man is the shortest stack by a considerable margin. Okay, fifth. In the 100k, 8 max for 858,000 just a few nights ago. Looking to double here. To stay alive. In the hunt for his first title. Is that 6? No, it's a 5. Needs some glasses, Randy. Oh, he's looking for a 6. Or a 9. Jack 5-3. Both players remain unpaired. GG. Heath okay. dead it. on the turn. Fist bumps and handshakes all round. 16th cash on his Triton track record for Ben Heath, crossing the five and a half million in Triton <laughs> earnings mark. But that maiden title <laughs> will have to wait. Yeah, not quite time for him. But he also had another deep run, fifth in the 100K for 858,000. It's a pretty good trip. It will be the end of Ben Heath. Yeah, so many close calls. Couple of third place finishes, a second place in Cyprus last year. A couple of final tables in Madrid as well, adding a fourth place finish to his resume here in this record breaking field. But ultimately, the blind levels catching up with him, Randy, handcuffed by the proverbial ICM noose, just unable to get anything going. And it's an all Asian affair, three handed. Webster Lim and Hing Yang Chow from Malaysia, Ren Lin, number one on GPI rankings in Asia. Venturing out for the first time to yeah. try and stop here in Monte Carlo. Right, and we've got a lot of poker to be had with these three-handed lineup, right? Quick with eliminations, Randy. 39 big blind average. The shortest deck just has 30 blinds, so definitely a lot of poker. This could be some time as we play this one out. Renlin betting out 10-8 offsuit, our chip leader, wins. <coughs> really is anyone's game. Not to state the obvious, even with Ren Lin with a slight lead, but at this stack depth, okay. anything can happen. Let us know in the chat who you're rooting for, who do you want to see reach heads up. So do I need a, um, Both Ren and Chow looking for their first, I do apologize, sorry, Chow looking for his first No Limit Hold'em title as he has one in PLO. Lines up. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Webster Lim looking for his third, would be his second in this very event. Took down the first edition of this in Vietnam earlier this year, 965,000, I believe, beating good friend Kat Lee heads up in that one. You know, winning a million is cool, but winning two trophies in one tournament, that's even better. They're going to have to rename it to the Webster Lim Invitational. Uh, you always joke about having to pay for ef extra baggage feed. You might legitimately <laughs> have to for this you one. You do. You genuinely do. Like that GG Millions trophy is massive. Renlin going to attack with pocket nines. And he's doing this because he's balancing when he usually doesn't have it as a chip leader. Did say fault to heads up. We've now got a bit of play on our hands, Randy. I'm really looking forward to what I expect is going to be 
A bit of a dogfight, three-handed. 31 big blind average. We haven't had this up until this stage in the series. That is very true. Usually we've got some guys with like 15 blinds or like 10 blinds. Right. A lot of room to fight. It's going to really favor the player who are experienced at very short-handed play. Photo has that. <laughs> he can't help himself. It's been, it's been like an it, was, orbit. it was like just enough time has passed. He can say that. It's been an orbit. Just about six minutes from now, I think he can he can yeah. relaunch it again. It, it's refresh. The ref he's refreshed it. You know, the ability is still like refresh. <laughs> it's got cool down. <laughs> oh my word! He's so entertaining. <laughs> he keeps saying it, right? He never gets a chuckle from anyone. He does from us. I think he's doing it for <laughs> from us, us. Yes. And the thousands of people around the world that roll their eyes every time <laughs> <laughs> we hear it. But it is fun. 468000 guaranteed for these final three. We're on a $192,000 ladder. Then we're going to be playing a $340,000 heads-up match. As Chow has flopped best. On the ace 10 7. With a very deceptive top pair. Lim kind of wrapped around that seven of clubs, yeah, Randy. He sees it and he's like, hmm, really? Are you going to bet on the ace high board and not raise me pre? Uh, he's just, he's confused, but he's like, you know what? Next time, I'll wait for a better spot. Randy, I think. That was a perfect little five-second frame of the devil on one shoulder because it was talking to him and you yeah. saw the micro-expressions like, on his face. He's like, mm, all right, next time. You're right about that. He's, He's like, thinking about oh, it. You, pl you, you float this one, all right? You float it. He was like, no. <laughs> we'll extend a thank you to all the viewers around the world from the entire Triton team. It's been oh. such a pleasure to call the action on the No Limit Hold'em part of the series and to wrap things up here with a record-breaking field. Just goes to show how much support we get from the players as well. But Oh, two pair for Webster Lim. Inside straight draw for Ren Lin. Drawing to a clean nuts if he can find a queen. Webster looking to get value from Jack X or some kind of straight draw. It's a small bet, 600K, just because he smashed it so hard. And for Ren, really can't go anywhere. Got to try to hit his hand, and sometimes King High is good. Oh, the straight. Disaster. Three-handed, top and bottom for Webster Lim on his pursuit for title number three with his entire, entire entourage watching on. Ren Lin has turned Jin. Four million in the middle. But the ace eight is usually good in this spot. I don't blame him for continuing to fire because you're going to hear from ace jack and ace queen on the turn. I'm mean, pre flop, right? You only lose to king 10 and 10 9. You got to love this spot for Ren Lin. Do you slow play or do you check raise? This is the question I wanted to throw you away, Randy. I mean, there's 6.7 in the middle. Should we call the 2.8? There is a very natural river SPR of less than one, but what do we do when a scare card rolls off? Perhaps we don't get it all. Should a diamond, a nine, a 10, or a king find its way to the river? That's why I think he's gonna lean towards raise, especially when his opponent is still betting on this turn card. They usually got something, and it could be a big hand like a two pair, but it could also right. be like a hand that has ace 10, something that has draws that can really like pay off minute? some more. I don't think he would want to jam though and lose his customer. It would be quite a bit. But it's also suspicious to raise really small too. Five million. So he said five million, but he actually needs to check raise min 
5.6. Well, that's 10 million in front of him. Dealer's got his work cut out. <laughs> uh, well, at least he said the words 5 million, so we do know the amount he needs to raise to. Now, what does Webster do? He's got top and bottom. He knows that 10 9 and King 10 would raise in this manner, but Renlin's kind of got. He's got that spice. He's got that he's spice. Got that fire, right? yeah, 100%. Where maybe he's picked up diamonds and is trying to make a play. You could see it. Yeah, some like Jack Nine of Diamonds. Right, something that wants to find a way to win the pot without having to hit outright. It's also interesting because Webster might be trying to figure out, is there any meaning to him trying to make it five million instead of bigger? Since it wasn't a legal raise, he's going to click call. And if no scare card comes or he doesn't pair up, Webster's going to be in trouble. Chow just watching on. He's currently third in chips. Praying for a ladder here. Which he's going to get on Brick Rivers. 15 million in the middle. As ace. the ace of spades finds its way to the river and Webster Lim goes from 9% to 100. This is the worst card to come for Renlin. Oh, he's still going to jam and he's going to get snapped off. What a disgusting yes. hand of poker. Absolutely unavoidable for Ren Lin. As cold as the deck can get. They don't mind though, Randy. They'll take it. Webster's entourage erupts. One of the biggest rails we've seen here in Monte Carlo. Soiza, Lee, Punat, Casey, Lun Lun. All rooting for title number three. As Lim scoops a monster. I already feel the pain of the viewers around the world that are going to see that one on socials once it gets uploaded. Yeah, but this rail is excited. We've all been there. Oh, the coldest Everyone of decks <laughs> with a million dollars on the line. Poon out there smiling. You got a feel for Ren Lin, you know, he got his opponent to put in so much of his stack with just 9% equity. Oh, when you put it like that, Randy. <laughs> Okay. Sounds brutal. Yeah, it is brutal. You know, you're thinking, man, I'm going to get the heads up. I've got a big chip advantage. Play for a million bucks and two trophies. Now you're just thinking, how can I get back into this fight? Down to 7.5 million in chips. In the small, you get the worst hand in the game. Seven deuce. Got to walk. How much? Yeah, it needs to just... Shake that one off if he can. Glad to see that he's still smiling, Randy. It's maybe a forced smile. Never easy to take a beat like that on the chin, but hey, it's part of the ride that we all sign up for. That's right. It's not an easy game. You gotta keep your emotions in check. He still has a playable snack, right? So yeah, just play the, the game, hearted. review the situation later. A lot on the line. <laughs> Well, the Malaysian's not sure who to root for. Yeah. <laughs> Hing Yang Chow. 
a buddy of theirs, but doesn't play too much poker. But whenever he does, seems to do quite good. We heard Danny Tang in that post fifth title victory interview with Ali Najad about the turning point forehanded where he just he said he felt it and he held with the ace jack perhaps similar emotions going through Webster's mind now one million, right? it's feeling one hand on title number three it's an opportunity here for Renlin to maybe try and pick up some chips as the pre-flop favorite it takes a flop but that board, no connection and so much advantage for Hing Yang Chao as he would expect Ren Lin to be jamming aces pre and just has to bet 500,000. This should get it done. Can Ren Lin just float queen high? I don't know about that. Oh, he is going to make the call. We've got a real poker game going on. Listen, man, Ren Lin. There's no push about. Well, his opponent's picked up the flush draw. And if you think your opponent would jam ace highs, maybe you fire again, but he does check. Yeah, this is a spot, right, where Chow should get to see a river a decent amount of the time. Len shouldn't. Lin, rather. Apologies. Right, he shouldn't bet a king X on the turn because right. he might get ship check jammed on in. Pair of fives. It beats something. Like this queen high. Pair of five. That's oh, got to hurt. Man. That hurts. <laughs> That hurts. That one's Man, actually painful to commentate on. He made the right call and then you see that. <laughs> He's laughing though. He's having a good time out there. Oh, dude, he loves it. He just loves the game. Yeah. Loves taking part. Travels everywhere to play poker. I mean, right? He's ranked number one uh, in and Asia. That, that's like, why I'm surprised he hasn't come out to the Triton yet until now. It's good to have him. It seems like right at home. This man's just, he's no pushover. Ren Lin, he's built a reputation for himself internationally. Tough competitor. This is getting awkward. He's on to 11 blinds in the small. You do see players tend to limp this a bit more which is what he's going to do. And to balance this, you also will be limping your really nutted hands pre. Otherwise, it's too easy to play against you. As Jack-7 is like a bit too weak to just outright open ship. You can see Webster is even cautious with a king high because he knows that renlin has got traps and he doesn't want to let him back in the game in case he jams and then, you know, his opponent has like an ace-king. Talking of ace-king, making it an appearance on the Ace King three board. Webster Lin, middle pair, and it's Ren Lin, who believes he has a range advantage on this board. Certainly going to have more traps, right, Randy? He definitely has a range advantage. All Ace Xs, I'm pretty sure I would have heard from Webster once he sold a limp. So now it's more playing the king three on the board. And once he gets called, Ren's got to be a bit worried that usually it is a king. Yeah, Lin unblocking all the flush draws. Zero equity. The thing is, even if he puts his opponent on like second para at best, it's really hard to bet because your opponent will think their range is capped and will feel like they've got to call down a pair of kings no matter what kind of run out and bet sizings come in. He is going to try, isn't he? I don't think this will shake Webster, 1.4. Who said you need equity in order to bluff? Is this just a mandatory call down? Blind v blind. I feel like you must call down at least a turn, probably even river. 
Otherwise, you're kind of set your <laughs> open yourself up to be bluffed off your hand every single time. Right. Well, we're perhaps about to find out. Five point three in the middle. If none of the flush draws get there, which they don't, does Lin follow through and just empty the clip? All of those will draws, queen tens, jack tens, diamonds, hearts. 5.3 million out there. It, f it feels like he knows where his opponent's at, but the thing is he knows that his opponent likely has to call down a king. He's going to just preserve his tournament life. Three is good. Well, since Randy and I joined this final table coverage, it has been pretty much a one-way affair, and it's been all Webster Lim who dispatched of Boss Poulpoir, second hand of the frame, then followed by Yaroshevsky. That monster pot against Ren Lin, rivered full house against turn a nut straight. Now up to over 30 million with 48 million in play. It's two thirds of the chips. Has the biggest entourage we've seen on anyone's rail. Yeah, momentum is not on Ren Lin's side and definitely not the graph as well. Wow, does Webster just rifle this in here? It does feel a bit risky. I, I think it's a bit risky because Hing Yang oh, Chao's yeah. sitting. Well, oh, he is still going to jam, but like, man, what if Hing Yang Chao wakes up with something? He's just like nines are cool. Yeah. <laughs> it it depends. Like, you know what? You really need to know your opponent's tendencies or how you expect them to play to, to make an attack right there. Webster just chipping away. <laughs> Slowly but surely. 63 of the 93 bigs in play. 192k ladder. Between third and second, we're going to have a $340,000 heads up match. That's the heads up match, Randy. The difference between first and second, 340k, that is quite literally top prize in many 25Ks. That's the difference between first and second here as Chow. Ripping in the king, queen, and 10 nine of clubs. Oh, you know what? Time. It's, this go time, it's too Randy. much of a hand. We've got 40% against two overs. There's actually some times where yeah, we're ahead and we're dominating. 9-8, uh, 9-7, 10-7, 10-8. We have to go with this here. I think right. he knows it. And you're doing OK even against like ace rag. So here we go. No gamble, no future. No gamble, no future. King, queen, go up. 61% equity for Chow. Ren Lin, who's been, well, in these dog fights, but getting a bit bruised and battered. Three handed, just things not going his way as the Malaysian contingent watch on. How about that for a flop, Randy? Are you not entertained? We can get all those outs on the board, as you can see. Top pair for Chow, open ender, and a flush draw for Lin. Surely not, Randy. Surely not. It's a lot of outs. Time to hit it, Ren Lin, if you want to stay in. Brick. Randy, that is what I call the curse of too many outs, my man. <laughs> and honestly, ah, break. Okay. you can do nothing but empathize for Ren in that spot. Three-handed, turning the nut straight where 91% of the time he eliminates Webster Lim and goes on to be an overwhelming chip leader in heads up. Instead, bowing out in third for $468,000. Valiant effort, and I got a funny feeling
We're going to be seeing plenty more of Ren at Future Triton Stops. You were surprised, Randy, that he hadn't ventured out, but venturing out here for the first time in Monte Carlo and, well, very quickly establishing himself as someone that belongs. And from us here in the booth, and I know the viewers around the world, very quickly becoming a fan favorite out in third, as I mentioned, and with that 660K guaranteed for these final two and a title guaranteed to return to Malaysia as we welcome you back to the break desk. Randy Lou alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, which was a very short affair, Randy, to get us from six-handed to heads up. Really was just a downward spiral for, for Ren Lin and... You know, you, you, if you look at the Triton Poker Plus app, you can see his graph where he peaked and it just goes downwards, right? Like, look at that. And, and Brutal, what, it's like one, six hands. Two, what, six hands and he's out, just like that. Overwhelming chip leader to out in third. It's Chin Wei Lim, Webster Lim, in pole position with a two to one chip lead over his fellow countryman, Hing Yang Chow, who has a title in a PLO Triton event. Webster Lim looking for his second Hold'em title in this very event. Took it down in Vietnam for 965,000. We're going on a very short 20 minute break. The, to the tournament director, Luca Valdi, bringing out the trophies, getting the stage set for what is set to be an epic heads up battle. 47 big blinds average with $340,000 difference between first and second. Don't go too far when we return. We'll be playing down to a winner. <laughs> Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
high seabed frequencies. Yeah. You start to just oh tell my. yourself, no, it's not possible. And Lady Gaga, he's back. Ren Lin, just like that, blind versus blind. Bogdanov, nothing wrong with taking the queen ten suited. No, I would imagine with four point two, and just a great play. getting it in front and just runs into of all things pocket queens. <laughs> Did disaster. we contribute to this? For Yulian, I'm not going to hold myself accountable for this Aww. development. <laughs> top set up against top pairs. The K's card rolls off. Ten becomes somewhat relevant. The ten is very relevant. As see? We see all the queens on the board. I thought you were going to refer to the two on the rail there. Okay. Oh, very nice. Now an official draw dead, though, for Bogdanov, who did end up making two pair, by the way. My goodness. Another FT under that nation's belt here as... The best to ever do it from that nation made their way, way here, took on Triton's best, but falling short on this occasion is Yulian. $122,000 courtesy of an eighth place finish as the field enjoys a pay jump of 44000 Green candle. <laughs> yeah. It's always good to run good, and it's especially good in a situation like this. Ren opting for a slight size up here. And you know, if I was Ren, I very well may have considered just open shoving, putting maximum pressure on boss, preventing the opportunity to reshove with various hands, and denying Ding the opportunity to take a flop. We see here the queen four suited, certainly one that Ren would be pleased to know his man is holding if it were uh, revealed to him. But plenty of other hands you know, can realize their equity well. And uh, wow, there it is. Lady Queen Gaga back in action, my friend. Seven three, and both players with Gaga. It's just the king kicker for Ren Lin. On his feet, by the way, up periscope. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is gonna be a tough one for, for Mr. Ding. I I don't really see any path to escape. Uh, I think we're about to see him needing some backdoor clubs or a four to remain in this tournament. The follow through sizing, steady at 700 out of Ren Lin. I think we'll see a check raise all in. Feels like the right way to approach this spot, doesn't it? It sure does. It's worth so much just winning the hand, even yeah. if our opponent has a single overcard. And the subtle declaration of all in and the not so comfortable quick call from Ren Lin. <laughs> Ding Biao. Mr. Ren Lin is so far just bulldozing this final table. Absolute wrecking ball. If he can hold up here, this is really, you know, him being in the driver's seat. Turn card doesn't bring the club draw. The Ding Biao so desperately needed. Only a four will save him now from a seventh place finish. Is it there? No. And well thought. <laughs> almost predictably, his exit stage left for the time being as that queen four was just smothered by Ren Lin. 166,600 going to be headed to Biao Ding. Finally able to break the seal as he was 0 for 7 coming into this final table here in Rockets. Double check. <laughs> they look, they look good. And chips. First to act. Loves this because he knows their stacks behind. They're going to try and lean into him as well. Mm -hmm. This might be one of those stacks. Although he is super short, he knows that he almost always is going to get called when he jams. Oh, I mean, if he jams. Discipline from Yaroshevsky. Yeah, it's just better for him to take a spot where he can open, rip it. And Paul's got Ace Jack in the big. He's currently sitting in fourth. 
8.1. 8 million. Ah. Yeah. This is close for Boss. Knows he has fold equity. Knows that Webs is going to have some raised folds from under the gun. But can he play passively and just call to perhaps save himself in this spot? I wouldn't blame him if he jams, though. Usually Ace-Jack will just fold out a lot of hands. You're doing okay against some calls like 10s and 9s. <clears throat> Really pondering this decision. All options on the table. Can yeah, we avoid know that. disaster here. Paul is the type of player who wants to shoot for the win, too. Oli. Shoot for the win, he does, wow. Randy. Snap. Oh, Snap call <laughs> from Webster Lim as number one on Malaysia's all time money list. Gets it in with just 7% equity. That is music to the ears of Yaroshevsky and Heath. As Boss went for the rejam, pushing some fold equity. But picking up equity on the Queen 9 8 board is never easy, Randy. He's got a chance. Four rounds twice. 12.6 million chip pot. If Lim can hold here, he's going to eliminate his fellow countryman, Triton co founder. Number one on Malaysia's all time money list. Title two is going to have to come another day, Randy. A couple of PLO events. For Boss to, for his run here in this record breaking field. Would have been a fairy tale ending to the holding part of the series to see one of the founders take down a record breaking event. But sixth place will have to do. And as Randy said, he'll be back, especially with them Terminator sunglasses. By one big blind. And now we continue. Igor got that pay jump, he's got King Nine. Clear short stack. He's got to look for an opportunity. The big blind is the very next hand for him, as well as the big blind ante. King nine, it's not a bad hand in the spot. Yeah, he's just locked up you know, an additional 73,000 with that ladder. A ladder that is perhaps fortunate to get. And Lim just gets to click call here. He's got to pay this one off. He knows that Igor's going to jam like worse aces, broadways. Yeah, sub seven bigs. And it doesn't hurt his stack that much, 2.6 million, given he's got 14. Okay. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't do anything but call. And there's the orange chip going in. Yeah, really. Wow. Mulling it over. It's not in bad shape, 40%, Igor Yaroshevsky. That decision. All in brought to you by betacr.eu as the Malaysian click come over. Boss, Soiza, so Danny Tang there, Lun Lun as well. All on Webster's rail. King in the window with an ace behind. A little bit of a sweat there. Oh, Paul's back to rail. He's like, what happened? Yaroshevsky. Oh, it's a five outs once now. Look at the rail. Supporting Webster. Okay. Webster with back-to-back -back eliminations. <laughs> Dispatching. BK for $100,000, so two final tables under his belt. Clearly a feared player on the online felt in the live one as well. We'll see if he can kind of pick up a title at a future stop. Certainly someone to keep an eye on. Some impressive runs under his belt already to go. In that mystery bounty, he had action up on poker stake. So many players that come to these series. Fatal Holtz, Eibinger, all selling pieces. Well, Charles got his queen. Monster, given how short Ben Heath is. Four bigs in the big. And he's put in 
two already, right? The big blind, big blind ante. He's got 9-6 offsuit. I mean, I feel like he's just priced in. He's clearly the short stack. No one to outlast. He's put in half his stack. And Chow would probably jam much worse than ace-queen, I would assume. Heath just... I mean, he wouldn't be doing too bad against, like, a big little. Although in this spot, he has got two overcards against his 9-6. Such a brutal spot. It's go time. Can't fold. 1.75 man is the shortest stack by a considerable margin. Okay, fifth. In the 100k, 8 max for 858,000 just a few nights ago. Looking to double here. To stay alive. In the hunt for his first title. Is that 6? No, it's a 5. Needs some glasses, Randy. Oh, he's looking for a 6. Or a 9. Jack 5-3. Both players remain unpaired. GG. Heath okay. dead it. on the turn. Fist bumps and handshakes all round. A couple of final tables in Madrid as well, adding a fourth place finish to his resume here in this record breaking field. But ultimately, the blind levels catching up with him, Randy, handcuffed by the proverbial ICM noose, just unable. He was around the world from the entire Triton team. It's been Bold. such a pleasure to call the action on the No Limit Hold on part of the series and to wrap things up here with a record breaking field. Just goes to show how much support we get from the players as well. But Oh, two pair for Webster Lim. Inside straight draw for Ren Lin. Drawing to a clean nuts if he can find a queen. Webster looking to get value from Jack X or some kind of straight draw. It's a small bet, 600K, just because he smashed it so hard. And for Ren, really can't go anywhere. Got to try to hit his hand, and sometimes King High is good. Oh, the straight. Disaster, three-handed, top and bottom for Webster Lim on his pursuit for title number three with his entire, entire entourage watching on. Ren Lin has turned Jin, four million in the middle. But ace eight is usually good in this spot. I don't blame him for continuing to fire because you're going to hear from ace jack and ace queen on the turn. I'm pre flop, right? You only lose to king 10 and 10 9. You gotta love this spot for Ren Lin. Do you slow play or do you check raise? This is the question I wanted to throw you away, Randy. I mean, there's 6.7 in the middle. Should we call the 2.8? There is a very natural river SPR of less than one, but what do we do when a scare card rolls off? Perhaps we don't get it all. Should a diamond, a nine, a 10, or a king find its way to the river? That's why I think he's going to lean towards raise, especially when his opponent is still betting on this turn card. They usually got something. It could be a big hand like a two pair, but it could also right. be like a hand that has ace, 10, something that has draws that can really like pay off convenient? some more. I don't think he would want to jam though and lose his customer. It would be quite a bit. But it's also suspicious to raise really small too. Five million. So he said five million, but he actually needs to check raise min to 5.6. Well, that's 10 million in front of him. Dealer's got his work cut out. <laughs> Uh, oh, at least he said the words 5 million, so we do know the amount 
He needs to raise to Now what does Webster do? He's got top and bottom. He knows that 10-9 and King-10 would raise in this manner. But Renlin's kind of got... He's got that spice. He's got that he's spice, got that fire, right? Yeah, 100%. Where maybe he's picked up diamonds and is trying to make a play. You could see it. Yeah, some like Jack-9 of diamonds. Right, something that wants to find a way to win the pot without having to hit outright. It's also interesting because Webster might be trying to figure out, is there any meaning to him trying to make it 5 million instead of bigger? Since it wasn't a legal raise, he's going to click call. And if no scare card comes or he doesn't pair up, Webster's going to be in trouble. Chow just watching on. He's currently third in chips. Praying for a ladder here, which he's going to get on Brick Rivers. 15 million in the middle. As Ace. the Ace of Spades finds its way to the river and Webster Lim goes from 9% to 100. This is the worst card to come for Renlin. Oh, oh it's still good. Well, we just got to re-watch what was only describable as a car crash of a hand for Ren Lin, who went from one of three to out in third in the space of five hands ran in. I don't like throwing the word unavoidable around in poker because it always feels like there is perhaps a different way, but that one felt unavoidable. And the main hand that did all the damage was when he turned that straight. Got in most of the chips in when he was good, but unfortunately his opponent did bo uh, boat up. And that was the end of Ren Lin. We're down to heads up. We are down to heads up, and it is a deep stacked heads up here. A bit of a treat for the viewers as we head into the final, or the back end of this Triton Super High Roller Series. 62 bigs plays 31. Chin Wei Lim squaring off against Hing Yang Chow. The title guaranteed to go back to Malaysia. Now, the reason for the prolonged heads-up break there, Randy, was discussions of a deal coming into this heads-up match. And I can give the viewers at home official numbers. Webster Lim guaranteed 860,000. Hing Yang Chow guaranteed 760,000. They're playing for 40K, so enough money left for this to be taken seriously and of course the title that's up for grabs as well the title is definitely important you know Hing Yang Chao has one title under his belt and Webster has what two titles so they're looking for another one his third would be nice and two trophies to be won today two trophies to be won title number three for Webster Lim if he can close this out here looking to join a very exclusive three-time champion club and has perhaps one of the biggest entourages slash rails we've seen at this series. A lot of support out there for him. A lot of support, but, you know, they also are aware that uh, Hing Yang Chao is one of those beloved Malaysians, and it should be a fun one. Titles going home to Malaysia. Who's it going to be, Webster Lim or Yang Chao, as we throw it down for what is set to be an epic heads-up battle here. Up until now, we've had the case of, you know, runaway chip leaders, shallower stacks. Not this time. 47 big blind average with five hands left at this blind level. 250k, 500k. It all kind of kicked off when we jumped into the booth six-handed. The Webster Lim runaway train, that is, who dispatched of boss Paul Poir in sixth. His ace is holding against Paul's ace jack. Then he dispatched of Yaroshevsky. Look at the trophies right in the middle. And on to the first hand. It is a limp pot. I'm excited for this. I think this is the first heads up of the series that I'm getting to cover. I mean, Danny Tang's heads up yesterday was over in two hands. I didn't really get to even, you know. <laughs> Most of the heads up matches have been very fun to watch. Of course, that one really quick. I do think we will have a lengthy one, although Webster does I have the so. two-to-one chip lead. I hope so. It feels like a deserving ending to a record-breaking field. 187 runners in a 25K. 
something that you just don't see outside of the World Series. In Yang Chao has a title at the Triton stop. Came in PLO. Love nothing more than to get it done against one of the toughest emerging players. That's the flopping best. Unfortunately, swing and a miss for his counterpart. Chow of just jack high. Yeah, Webster just hit this one so hard where he's probably going to downsize his bet and try to get something to continue. Just wins the pot right there, but it was a raised pot to 1.3 pre, so still worth something. Oh, hmm? okay, okay. So once again, just to reiterate the deal numbers, 860,000 guaranteed for Webster, 760 guaranteed. For Chow, they're playing for the glory, the two titles, and an additional 40,000. How much in excess baggage fees do you think that GG Millions trophy is? The GG Millions one is <laughs> massive. I mean, that plaque under the lettering is <laughs> unheard of. Webster opening yeah. things up with the King A. Yeah. Hold your horses. Chow fighting back here with the same hand. Webster Lim in position, going to see three. Heads up to a flop with 6.5 in the middle. Well, advantage Chow on the ace, ace 10. Does have the chance to steal this one away from Webster. Comes out with an incredibly small bet, bet, Randy. Just min. With In the back door. It's got to get the king of hearts back door to come along, which it does. Now we've got the f ammo to fire once again. Yeah, here we go. He's smiling while <laughs> betting. What does this mean? He's trying That's to make scary, it look right? milky, right? It look, it is milky. It's a million into 7.5, but Webster just has King High, the same hand. But if his opponent has an ace, he's just drawing dead. He's out. Sneaky, sneaky. Picking up the spades on the turn. The double <laughs> barrel for small. That's really shifted things. I mean, Webster... <laughs> Two to one chip lead. Now that gap has been narrowed. You can see that both players are pretty comfortable raising 
regularly and get into eight deuce offsuit in. And the reason he's calling for a hand this week is because against the min race, he just has such good odds given there's a big blind ante in there. And does flop best? God, I don't know, Randy. I'm sat out here. He's at the main stage, but I'd probably be pitching it. That's things stand. An opportunity for Webster to extract some value now on this five of clubs turn. Yeah, it's actually like the perfect card for him to get some chips from Chow. He actually goes full pot. Sizable probe. And is this just because he's meant to have so many gut shots, so many straight draws that would want to go polar here and apply pressure to ace highs? Right. And also, he wants to get value, of course, when he has those draws to balance that out. And I can't really fault Chow for coming along, but actually makes the correct laydown. Felt the price was too much and a great read. That's not an easy fold, Randy. No, a we lot can of see it here in the booth. We can see the cards, but letting go of a pair heads up against someone like Webster, who's competent enough to have those semi bluffs that we alluded to. Bravo. <laughs> Blinds going up. <laughs> Honestly, it feels like whenever the Malaysians are at the table, man, there's always some banter they exchanged, regardless of the situation. It reminds me of Boss Paul. He's the same. Three. Top and bottom for Chow. Webster Lim with the Ace of Spades in hand. Yeah, the Ace of Spades definitely relevant. Overcard to the board. Nice check. clean turn card for Chow and actually continuing to check. He's hoping his opponent takes a shot at it so he can bring in a check raise. And Webster might think his hand is good a lot on the turn, right? You would expect a queen or nine to come out to protect their hand, get value on this very drawy board, oh two point. flush draws present. There's the bet. Charles played this one to perfection. Correctly realizing that it's a turn card, he'd expect Webster to go for a lot of delayed stabs. Makes it three million to go. Clicks it just north of a min raise in. Now what does Webster do? It, it depends on if he ever thinks that Hing Yang Chao would Occasionally just have some kind of draw in this spot. Looks like he's going to pay this one off for now. If he rivers an ace, it would be a disaster for him. That's 9.6 in the middle. Chow has done an incredible job. Like the perfect oh. sizing for him to get paid off. Now he's got a full house. And his opponent, Webster, with the nut flush blocker, which could come into play here. All the straight draws, backdoor oh. hearts. Oh. Chow wow. just hoping his opponent has a piece. Usually Webster will have something to bet call to turn. He's just gone for all of it. And it's such a peculiar river card to ask for the entire 12 million on. Single race port, we would have heard from queens. We would have heard from nines pre. So it really does leave these kind of two pair pocket fives. Queen three, five three. I mean, he's repping a flush too, right? And But Webster's kind of the nut flush blocker, which is Precisely. confusing to him. He's 
not really holding the right cards though. Right, the Jack of Hearts blocking some flush draws and straight draws that might make a big move. Webster really trying to get a read here. And in heads up, like your opponent can still jam baby flushes in this spot. I believe he's also thinking that if his opponent had a Queen X, they probably wouldn't Whoa. jam Whoa. when the flush comes in. He, he tells them. Ah, uh, yeah. Webster. <laughs> correctly put him on a full. And it go. Well, Chow off to an incredible start here, Randy. He has gone from a two to one dog to practically tying with Webster Lim as you could call him a GTO wizard, a heads up wizard perhaps, the number one app for poker players where you can join our membership giveaway by scanning the QR code, gtowizard.com forward slash Triton. Merchandise up for grabs as well as subscriptions. And we even had, I want to say it was Jonathan Jaffe in the booth with Ali Najad earlier on yep. talking about yeah, GTO right. Wizard and how their very own Espen Jostad here at the Triton series. One of their one of their ambassadors putting out content. Got some real heat here. Ace three suited. Loaded pots, three million in the middle as they're playing this race strategy pre. Oh my. Look at that firepower. It's top what pair open ended straight on? draw versus the nut flush draw. And we know chips can fly. And look at the snap check back, which is going to contain this pot a bit. I'm really loving Chow. I'm telling you. Plays lightning fast. This Unpredictable. Guy in the mix really does just throw a spanner in most people's games. Webster might fight for this one, does check. Super unpredictable. Now he's going for some value. Got so much of this board. Goes for the delayed C, but it's a small one as well. Yeah, I don't mind that Webster isn't trying to check raise a hand like this just because his opponent often gets a little sticky with like a pair of straight draw that would never fold him. He has to play a guessing game. Yeah, and Chow can still be nutted on this board just because he checked flop. See Soizer and Poker Llama in the background. Yeah, and Chow at this point is trying to get value out of 10x. Also has his kicker playing in case he's up against a weak queen. Webster seems a bit curious. Peculiar line taken. He's out now. But makes a disciplined fold. Not easy to fold ace high on a paired board. Heads up. How about that for an entourage? Casey, Kiatli, Lunlun, Punat, and Co. Back to the main stage. Tens now for Webster, who's lost the chip lead. Chow has grinded his way up. Just a couple of big blinds in it, but does have Webster covered. Perhaps just for one hand, Randy. You can see he's really just trying to figure out what's the best strategy going to this heads up after they've played a few hands so far. 
Some heads up matches have a lot of limping. This one a little bit more raising. Computer hand for the min race, gotta get in there. Computer hand with the best of it. No, the Man, snap check back from plays Chow, so anyway. fast we can't even get the camera on him. Hinging Chow actually seems very balanced with his checkbacks because you know, also we saw him quickly check back when he had Queen Jack top pair open in a straight draw. Right. So it's kind of tricky to play against if you don't adjust properly. Webster's got Queen High, which is hopefully can show down against some Jack or Ten Highs. We shouldn't really be betting this one. Well, what do we do here with Ten High? The Chow see Webster just. You know, as play 10 high, I think it wins Check. enough, Check. right? Like, he, his opponent's not going to bet, like, a 9 high and lower just given how the board's played out with the preflop action. So I don't fault him for checking. I think he probably would have got looked up by queen high uh, once they got to the river, unless he bet an extremely large amount. Explain that one to me, Randy. Which part? Could we have, by we, I mean Chow, set something up across turn and river there? Check it down 10 high. Feels a bit ambitious. He doesn't want to just bet at an extremely high frequency. and I probably would have preferred checking down jack high, if possible, right? That 10 high, it's probably right on the cusp. You need thinking on that. <laughs> so Webster does limp the Doyle. Six, Hing Yang Chow flopping top pair, bets out immediately, and Webster just one over, gut shot. <laughs> wow, the death card. Okay. Got it. On the turn, Chow turning a nine high straight. Webster turning a 10 high straight. One card to come, three million in the middle. It's been an all Chow affair so far, this heads up match, but now an opportunity for Lim to build this pot on the turn. Chow obliges. Now there's a straight on board, Randy. That's actually bad for Chow. It really feels like it is. Because now he can't get the whole pot in case he was up against some random hand. This could be a sizable one. There's six million out there. The way this hand has played out, likely to be a chop, at least a decent amount of the time. I would like to see Webster go polar here, Randy. Yeah, I'm thinking that the way Chow's played his hand also doesn't look like he's got 10x too much to bet flop and then all of a sudden check the turn. And let's see, has he set the right price to get a call? No? What a lay down. <laughs> Bravo. He knows. He knows his opponent. He really does. Webb's the going to be somewhat disappointed to not get paid there. That's not an easy fold. Credit where credit is due. Oh. Ying Yang Chow making a tough fold look easy. Rocking the poker dream hoodie. You know, I think a dr his dream is to win two titles, right? Yeah, he wants to join Webster in that two-time champion club. And Webster's saying no. 
I'm going to the three title club. If I can just win this heads up match. And you said he won the GG millions before. Okay. Flops the straight. Oh, and trip <sighs> tens is awful for Hing Yang Chow. What is going on? This is an opportunity for Webster to win a lot of chips. Especially with the snap check back. There's a lot of 10x in his opponent's range that can really pay this one off. I mean, this heads up match just really showcasing how quickly things can change. We saw Ren Lin go from first in chips to out in third, and now we're seeing Chow, who had taken the chip lead after coming in a two to one dog, just getting bashed up by the deck. And, well, Randy, I. Flip, flop, flip, that's what it is. The flip, flop, flip indeed. Full house for Chow. I'm retiring my headset after this one. That's really the worst card for Webster. And so often his opponent has a 10 or Jack X. Double paired board. What was looking likely to be the demise of Chow. To me, this is one of those spots where you just check and hope your opponent doesn't bet. And just you just win if he bets the size. Well, now you just check fold. Oh. Well, he checks back Whoa. the full house. Feared the jack. Wow. Gonna see the bad news when he sees the king nine. Well, wow. well, Chow knows that he was one card away from being crippled. There's was already nine million in the middle on the turn with 14 million back. Saved by the deck. We've all been there. About that shot. <laughs> Overview of the main stage. <laughs> Wipes are one of the worst hands. But if he can get a free flop, why not? He's going to try. Remember, there's a big blind ante out there, so you're getting good odds as long as your opponent isn't bluffing you pre. This is kind of one of those sports where you want to fire, but then again, when you bet, you kind of look like you just have air, and maybe your opponent could, like, out of position float you. He's going to go for a delayed bet, I believe, with that check. Queen High isn't looking pretty good. Deny equity. I've been super impressed with Chow's heads up game so far. Playing with such speed as well. Chow's retaken the chip lead. 40 bigs place 38. 860,000 guaranteed for Webster Limp. 760,000 guaranteed for Chow. Playing for 40k. Spades covered here pre. So he goes to this 3 million chip pot. Both players with the backdoor spades, of course, though. Hing Yang Chow with the bottom pair quickly checks back. And a flush draw comes on the turn. This is trouble for Webster because he's got a hand that wants to apply some pressure. But he needs to avoid a river spade or he's out of here. He's so grim after such an epic final table performance and battle. Comes with the two thirds pot probe. Oh, Randy, I thought 
I that thought, was a tournament ender. Yeah, I thought it was heads up, GG's all over. Saw the Black King. If Webster can fire, though, he can really steal this pot. His opponent just holding bottom pair. You know, if he bets, Chow might show his hand as he folds. I can see that. <laughs> and Webster's going to realize just how close. Nice. He was to being showered as he does find. The bet on the river. Credit where credit's due for Chow, by the way. This pair of fours hasn't hit the muck yet. He's really thinking this one through. Does ultimately let it go, Randy, as Webster retakes the chip lead here. Been a bit of a swingy battle. Not what, what Webster would have signed up for. Would have much rather disposed of Chow early on. Came in with a two-to-one chip lead over his fellow countryman, who's closed the gap and held the chip lead on a couple of occasions. Now I must tease Randy, that 30k pot limit Omaha bounty has to be some sort of record by the way. I, I know I normally go to you as the Check. record guy. But 74 entries with 387,000 up top. We're going to be bringing the viewers final table coverage of that one tomorrow. Some PLO with a 45 big blind average. And bounties galore. Should be a fun one. It's definitely going to be a fun one as we double the cards, but we're not there yet. Do have this epic heads up match going down and Webster with that sweet bluff. Jack three suited. So advantage Webster. Both pre and in chips. Both. Just a couple more hands left oh. at this big blind 600k level. Been a long old day of poker for both these gentlemen. <coughs> 1 a.m. local time. They've been battling for the better part of 12 hours. Not just poker skills required. Stamina, both physically and mentally. Hing Yang Chow. Mixing it up, raising 7-4 offsuit. Webster's well, got the King A, he's in there. Seems to be very different play styles here. Yes, very contrasting. That's what's really fun to see, to see how they clash and who kind of gets the best of it. It's going to follow through with a C bet. Really not that big of a C bet. Also not that big of a hand for Webster, just King High, no backdoor draws. But he's going to come along just on the high card value. And look at that turn. <laughs> There's the four. And now it's value bet time. <laughs> Webster was thinking, man, did I just waste a million chips? Did, did he just have it all along? <laughs> no, he just turned them. He's now value betting it. Throw someone like Chow into the equation and really does get you into the weeds a little bit. Yeah, it's just hard to piece together what to do. He's making the call of King High incorrectly. I'm confused at this, right? Is this just 
hoping that Chow slows down and he can steal it away or I don't think he's intending to bluff the King A at this point. Maybe it's hard to say because maybe he thinks Hing A Chow sees a wheel and he's got an ace and would start betting. Maybe he should fire. It's 8.8 .8 million out there. If Chow <laughs> did have, like, an A6. Yeah. Wow. But can Chow find a call? That would be an incredible hero call, given the way this hand's played out. Webster with the flop and turn float and turning it into a bluff on the river. He's grabbing those time chips immediately, and he knows this is a key pot. Five seconds. Take Lays a bow, Webster down. Lim. Webster is absolutely crushing in these key pots. Got the bluff through with the Jack-3 suited, and now King-8, double float bluff. The double float bluff. Not I mean, how many achievements has he achieved <laughs> He's in this unlocked all heads of them, up Randy. match, you know? Final tables. Finally got a piece of the deck. Legit hand. Chow now down to 14 million. Looking to bump it up, Two maybe around. Yeah. Got four blinds. Yeah, he's gone bigger this time, Randy. I think four I, and a half X. He's trying to get his opponent to just limp jam like some kind of like ace X traps. That would get it in bad. The blinds Blind's up. going up. They're getting big, buddy. It really is. Record breaking 187 runner field here in this GG Millions Live Edition. 25K, the final Hold'em event of the series in Monte Carlo. Don't threat. More action to come just in the PLO format. Gonna be kicking things off tomorrow at 2 p.m. local time with the final table of the Pot Limit Omaha Bounty event. Holy event number 11. Gonna see more shoves with the new blind level. Chow down to 15 blinds and he's actually taking his time here. Do you just want to gamble and get it over with? No, surely not. I, I, I'm not sure why he's tanking. Just thinks he has the best hand, or? Maybe he's trying to figure out the stack sizes. Yeah, 100%. Just wants to see how things stand. No gamble, no future? <laughs> not to be this time. He realizes where. He's out after figuring out what the stacks were. Get to that stage now, Randy, where it feels like they've been trading blows long enough to have settled into their seats, have a rough idea of how one another's playing. With the way things are going, Webster's got to be pretty confident in this heads-up match. Happy to keep pot small. That's precisely what he's been doing, right? A lot of limping, a lot of pot control. 
Multiple hands. Oh, he felt like he could have played bigger pots, and he's just he's ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving. Oh, he's going to come along with this king high with the straight draw. Backdoor diamonds possible with that jack of diamonds opportunity, but it is two pair for Hing Yang Chow on this very wet board. He needs to protect. This pot's very important to his stack. Just 1.5 in there. 1.5 thrown out by Chow. Webster with an open ender and a flush draw. It's tempting to raise these small bets, feeling like your opponent's just trying to protect his hand a little bit, but not too confident in there. We know Jack Six will definitely be willing to splash all of the chips in if necessary. It's good discipline and restraint to just call in the spot. Yeah, you say that, but Chow's been so balanced with these small bets. Like, he's had value and he's had bluff, so Webster correctly just flatting gets to realize for a cheap price. Good shot that Chow asked for a lot of chips in this spot. He can represent a lot of bluffs. It's a scary run out. His opponent might be forced to call and does actually open rip it, but of course the King Five can't call. Thank you. King Yan Chow finally wins a pot as of late. That's how things stand since the blind levels have gone up. We were around this chip stack when we started heads up, I believe. It was about two to one. You're right. Yeah, it was pretty much bang on the money. Had Ferdinand Putra now out first for 100k. Then it was the Bulgarian Julian Bogdanov out in eighth. Ding Piao, another final table on his resume. Boss Paul Poir, who's probably going to have a bit of taste in his mouth. Ace Jack running into the aces of Webster was really vying for that second title. Yashevsky came fifth for 301,000. Ben Heath in fourth for 380k. That elusive first title for Heath will have to wait. And then it was Ren Lin, who was the runaway chip leader, three handed. And I do. Get the viewers out there with the Triton Poker Plus app to turn their attention to the Triton Poker Plus app. Click on Ren's name to just see how quickly you can go from one hand on the trophy to out in third. Absolute avalanche. And there's Chip Graf. He exited in third, 468,000. A deal was struck before Heads Up even started to play out. Webster guaranteed 860,000 for his efforts here. Chow guaranteed 760,000. They are playing for not one, but two trophies and an additional 40,000. It's a lot more limping at this stack death. And Webster hits two pair. Gonna try to trap Hing Yang Chao, who quickly checks. But Chao makes top pair, Aww. and this is big trouble. Because Webster can go for a lot of value with the presence of two flush draws and straight draws. He might just go around pot. Oh, slightly over. Perfect timing for the over bet. The Ace of Clubs does roll off on the river. 8.4 out there. Is there more value to be pursued now, Randy? Or is this getting a little bit There's too dicey? There's definitely value to be had. It's actually more 
troublesome in a sense that it kind of scares his opponent from hero calling him a bit when they're holding like a queen or a jack or maybe even a nine. He wouldn't want to bet too big just because he wants to get a call to kind of close, like just really lean. And I like this half pot sizing. I don't know if Hing Yang Chao can get away. It's tough, man. I mean, that turn card, bringing straight draws, bringing hearts that don't complete. We turn top pair heads up. And you got to keep in mind, the ace, while scary because of an overcard, is not a big part of Webster's range. They start to handle 15 blinds, and Webster probably will jam most of his ace X's pre. So now you're kind of more looking at two pair plus. Queen X may or may not cool. bet the river has played and makes the call. He's down to 7.2. Well, that is the biggest lead Webster has held throughout the entirety of this heads-up match. Now a 5-1 to one chip lead over his fellow countryman, Hing Yang Chao, down to just nine bigs. One hand on the title. Took down this very event in Vietnam. Earlier this year, being his close friend, Kiat Lee, heads up 965,000, which still to this day remains a record cash for Webster at the Triton Series. Ah, I do apologize. Ming cashed the million pound Try to million for charity for 1.1 million. Webster's got oh. Queen Nine of Hearts, and he's oh. just going to jam this one in because Hing Yang Chao is short, and he's got King High, and he's made the call. <laughs> <laughs> Seems King High, yeah. entertained. King C. Look how close the equities are. Yeah, the suitedness and tradiness of the Queen Nine helps a lot. <laughs> So Webster can get there. This is over. 46% of the time. <laughs> He's a three-time Triton champion at the end of this hand. Five cards to come. That's the Malaysian rail call for a chop. <laughs> well, I mean, we started off good. We could get the seven on the turn, ace on the river. It's a little hard, though. Chop no longer a, an opportunity. Webster looking for a queen or a nine to eliminate Chow. Doesn't find it, and King High is going to get the job done. <laughs> And the dogfight goes on. It's almost like the rail wants this match to last for eternity. They can't decide who they want to win. I think it's more of a wanting to remain impartial, friends with everyone, you know. <laughs> I see it. Part of the same crew, same clique. Hing Yang Chao's got a fighting chance with this double up now. 13.5 million, 17 big blinds, plenty to work with. Can mix up raising in pre flop if he wants again. Just what the doctor ordered, Randy. It's a back and forth, heads up battle. Didn't want any of this over in two hands shenanigans. You know, we wanted a dog fight. How about the battle of the 10x offsuits? I'll let you call the action on this one. Yeah, well, we're going to take that free <laughs> flop. 
A worthy dogfight in a record-breaking field. Both pick up a gut shot. Chow comes out firing 40%. Yeah, Chow's usually been happy to check back flops, not this time. Both looking for that jack. That's an interesting card. It should shut down Chow quite a bit, but actually firing once again. He's found a way to win his pup, because usually this goes check, check on the turn. It breaks out, Webster fires out, and he wins the pot. You know what they say. Nice. To assume is to make an ass of you and me, Randy. Chow. Getting it done with a double barrel. 16 mil. We are back to where we were once again. That's crazy. That is absurd. Playing for both those titles. Or trophies, I should say. Two trophies, one title. A lot 40, of money. $40,000 extra on top of what they locked up. What are your thoughts, by the way, Randy, on the deal being struck before the heads up match even started. We were expecting to come in and battle it out for 340k. And typically, you see players kind of fill oh. each other out a little bit, you know, yeah, battle for an hour or so, it, and then make a deal. It makes sense just because you want to reduce the variance, and I'm sure these guys play a lot too. We got talk at sevens raising, and Webster's just got King Seven offsuit. King highs do tend to play limp call pre. Which he does. And we have 6.8 in the middle. Well, Check. Webster finding the three out to on the King 9 8. 6.8 out there, Chow with 12.3 back. And you've touched on how quickly Chow plays. Snap checking on that board. And this is really nice for Webster because when he sees the snap check, he's thinking it's something worse than top pair. So he bets two million and entices to Hing Yang Chow to come along. Drawing to that seven. There's only one left. That's a bad card for Chow as well. Right, he might convince himself he's still got the best hand. Yeah. Draws are present. Wouldn't be surprised. Webster goes for more value. There's ace highs he need to protect against. There's also the nine X's and even the pocket pairs in between. Five seconds. 3.3. He's setting this up to get it in on the river, Randy. Very right. natural river SPR of around 0.5 should Chow make the call. And Webster's not really worried about the eight. He doesn't expect Hing Yang Chow to raise pre with an eight X in his hand. Does Chow want to be a hero? Oh, he's going to throw in that time card to try to figure this one out. There's busted hearts, there's 10 jacks, queen jacks. Yep. There, there's so many so hands. So many draws. It feels like you got to keep your opponent honest one more at least. Play the river. You also might not expect a 9x to bet the turn on this turn card. Especially the way Webster's been playing as well. Setting a lot of pot control with those middling hands like a 9x would. or nothing so many draws out there do we make the call and reevaluate rivers I like the reevaluate plan just because there's so many rivers that really changes the hand some are heart some are straight kind of cards but he's really taking a lot of time on this turn and he does appear to be concerned 
And I wonder if Webster's kind of picking up on that. Does Webster know that he always has the best hand here? I think so, especially with how long it took him to call. And the ace overcards the board. This is interesting. Let's see if Webster empties the clip, goes for the jugular. I don't think Webster thinks the ace is in Hingying Chao's range. Right. A lot of the time, ace would just fold the turn. Unless it's like an ace high flush draw or an ace queen. But now he chops with some king highs. A pair of kings, right? Right. I think he would have expected maybe an aggressive play from like ace high flush draw. Or maybe they wouldn't take so long to check hold the turn. That's a great point. Yeah, great read. So it it looks thin, but maybe he can even move his opponent off a chop or gets hopefully get a crying call out of some kind of pair, I, s I suppose. So It'll be a world-class bet here. I Just mean, he's played kings. a blinder of a heads-up match so far. Throwing out another time extension, really... Mulling over all of his options here. Chow of just 7 million back. I wonder if there's some leveling going on here with Webster using the time banks as well. He's trying to figure out what oh, the turn action was. Such a sick guy. <laughs> wow, what a jam. Has sized this to perfection across flop turn and river and the use of the two time extensions on the river as well randy really just throwing a bit of a curveball out there if you look at it from chow's point of view you shouldn't expect your opponent to be jamming the king right like there's an ace on the board now shouldn't you be worried that i might have it and that's going, what's going through his mind is, is this a busted draw or an eight? But Webster has just really merged his ranges to include a king here. All of those hands, queen jack, queen 10, jack 10, 10, seven. Hearts. Six, five hearts, yeah. Webster has played this perfectly, in my opinion. The sizing on flop and turn. The deliberate delay before jamming on the river. He's played a blind over heads up match. If Chow calls, by the way, it's all over, just to state the obvious. Hadn't really thought about that. As he's kept Webster honest. Across turn and river. Now use multiple time extensions. You might use them all in this one hand. Can't get away from it, Randy. Hing Yang Chow putting on the cape with the pocket sevens and Webster Lim managing to extract maximum value across flop, turn, and river to get it all in and take down his third Triton Super High Roller Series trophy. His second in this very tournament, Randy. Took down the GG Millions Live Edition in Vietnam earlier this year, being his close friend, Kat Lee, heads up. Now being a fellow Malaysian once more and again, excess baggage fees galore because he's got <laughs> two trophies to yeah. lug back to Malaysia. But yeah, first off, congratulations to Hing Yang Chao for getting that second place finish. A man who doesn't play that many tournaments has phenomenal results at the Tri Super High Roller Series. Good to see him in Monte Carlo playing his only event so far here. But Webster winning the GG Super Millions twice. 900,000. I mean, we have to rename it. Third title.
The He's Webster a master. Invitational. Beating his fellow countryman Chow for his third title as we welcome you back to the break desk. Granny Lou alongside myself. We jumped in with six and it was fireworks straight out of the gates. Boss Paul re-jamming the ace jack into Webster's aces and then from there we got down to three-handed at a lightning pace and it looked like we were going to be three-handed for quite some time. It looked like Ren Lin was going to run away with it and we saw what happened there going from chip leader to out in third. And for me personally, as just a poker fan, the perfect ending to this tournament, record-breaking field with an epic heads-up battle. And an epic champion, right? I think he played the heads-up match to perfection, you know, especially that getting multiple bluffs through in spots where some players might just give up. But that river play with the king seven to value bet, despite one of the cards that's supposed to be bad for you, just knowing where his opponent was at, saw the hesitation on turn, it just shows world-class play. He's just so good. It really was. And to see the entourage he had here for his third title, Webster Lim picking up trophy number three, another Triton Super High Roller Series title. Going back to Malaysia, that Malaysian contingent that we keep talking about just showing up from series to series. Yeah. Getting it done. Webster Lim is going to have a word with Arlene Ajar, but before we throw it down to our interviewer, just a friendly reminder that tomorrow the action doesn't stop. <laughs> Four card fun. We're going to be picking up coverage of the final table of the 30K PLO Bounty event number 11 at 2 p.m. local time. But for now, a word with the GG Millions champion Webster Lim speaking with our very own Arlene Ajar. Well, if you talk to any fisherman, they've always got a spot, somewhere they know they can go and bring home a catch, a trophy, if you will. And for Chin Wei Lim, that would appear to be the GG Millions. Webster, this is your second GG Millions win, your third career Triton title, 18th career cash, $900,000, bringing you over $6 million for your career. And this was a bit of an OG affair here at this final table, which makes me think about your beginnings back in 2018, Montenegro, where it all began for you. Talk to me a bit about both the growth of the Triton Tour and yourself as a player since five years ago. I mean, it's always good to see Triton growing and then to be able to win the biggest field of the event feels pretty good, especially to win the second one. Maybe I should just play this event every time, every, every Triton. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but maybe you should. Uh, what about yourself as a player? When you compare Webster 2018 to Webster today, how far have you come? How much work have you put in? I mean, to play against all these top guys, you know, you learn a lot every day. And then to have like, you know, Danny, Puna, Soizade, or to share hands, Kiet, you know, you always learn every day. I'm glad that you brought them up because the Malaysian crew always rolls deep. And anytime it seems like Danny, Kiat, Punat, one of you guys is at an FT, the rest of you are all here. Tell me how important it is to feel that support and have that sense of family as you're out here playing against these killers. Well, it's 1 a.m. and they're here. I can't ask for more, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Well, you might not be able to ask for more, but we're going to give you more. First among the more... Let's bring out Bertrand Gropelier, Elkie, to present you with the GG Millions Trophy. There it is. It's pretty heavy, and you better figure out how to hold it with one hand, because now I need to bring out Luca Vivaldi, who's got more hardware for you. All right, hang on. It's precarious. There it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, none other than Chin Wei Lim, your 25K GG Millions champion.